call. Weibull waved his huge naginata to block. However, the red light turned a corner, and hit his chest at an incredible angle. Ah, mom! It hurts so much! In B.A. Jin's shocked eyes, a huge gap appeared in Weibull's chest, and blood continued to flow out as if it was free. His precious son actually broke through his defenses like that? She couldn't help gritting her teeth. Damn Marine! Good son, kill him! Ah 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 ah! The injured Weibull was like a mad beast, waving his naginata with his fat body, and then slammed it forward. Boom! A huge slash wave flew towards El Yushiu quickly. Boom! Huge cracks tens of meters long formed on the ground in an instant, and everything passing by was destroyed. Weibull's fierce eyes swept away. The figure that originally stood there has long since disappeared. Where did it go? He looked around. In heaven. Weibull. B.A. Jin, who had been observing the battlefield with a sense of knowledge, suddenly raised her head, pointed at the figure in the sky and shouted. What a noisy old woman! El Yushiu said calmly, and then noticed more and more marines looking this way. He snapped his fingers. Whoosh! With him as the center, a huge black screen formed downwards, covering a radius of 100 meters. Weibull! Where are you? The agent's somewhat panicked voice sounded, her perception of seeing, hearing and color was suppressed. I could clearly sense the aura of the entire island, but now I can barely see within 10 meters. Mom! I'm here! Weibull's voice came, but unfortunately, under the darkness, neither of them could see each other. If someone could see through the darkness, they would find that the two people were only a few dozen meters apart, but they were like meeting a ghost beating a wall, and could only move within a specific area. El Yushiu's figure lurked in the darkness, his blood-red pupils looked at the short and ugly figure from a distance, he raised his right hand slightly, surrounded by flowing blood. Damn Marine! I will definitely kill you! At this time, B.A. Jin didn't know that the danger had come, and she was still shouting. How dare you ruin my good deeds! When I get out, I will kill your family! Your friends! Everyone around you! Bring their heads to your grave for you to take a good look at! Poof! Before she could finish her words, a sharp blade made of blood penetrated her body. How can it be? B.A. Jin lowered his head slightly and looked at his chest, his wrinkled face showing a look of great pain. Why don't I perceive the colors I see? Way! She opened her mouth and wanted to shout to summon her son to come. Whoosh! Another bloody blade penetrated her throat. Boom! B.A. Jin fell straight to the ground. Well! She opened her mouth to make a sound but the blood on her neck flowed more violently. Her eyes were full of disbelief. The arrogance just now had completely disappeared, and what emerged was the fear of death. Maybe B.A. Jin didn't expect that he could survive that epic battle in the Valley of the Gods, but now he would die on a paradise island, right? Who is that Marine? The light in her pupils gradually dissipated, and the once great pirate came to an end. Mother! As if he sensed something, Weibull roared in pain. He turned around suddenly and tried to rush here, but he still couldn't break through the strange circle. El Yushiu looked at this scene with a smile on her face. Summoning darkness is one of his fruit abilities. In this darkness, everyone's perception will be greatly reduced, including seeing, hearing and color. Originally, this fruit was not that powerful, but since his talent reached S level, he created a new way to play, which is to create illusions by disturbing the dark mist with mental power that far exceeds that of ordinary people. A road will appear in front of everyone shrouded in darkness. The enemy can only keep walking around that road, but they can never rush out, just like a ghost hitting a wall. As long as your mental power does not exceed his, you will be controlled by him. And with his current mental strength of thousands, there are only some top strong men in this sea who can ignore this. There is another ability that is. Control blood. 
What the furious Wei Abul didn't notice was that the blood from the wound on his chest was continuously flowing to the sky and gathering into the palm of Al Yushiu's hand. Hey, his blood strength is quite high. Al Yushiu felt the blood and said in surprise. Compared with the pirates he had killed in East Blue before, Wei Abul's blood strength was at least a thousand times stronger than theirs. Yes. El Yushiu took a breath, and then turned the blood in his hand into blood-colored crystals. These are blood crystals. Each one can restore most of his combat power, which is equivalent to a blood pack. Let me see how much you can gather. He has a temper. Although now he can completely kill the opponent with moves such as divine evasion, but, come on. This feeling of watching the enemy being consumed by life and death is even cooler, right? If you fish in the battle, the damage value will be plus 100. Ah! Come out! Get out! The figure became more and more violent, and more and more blood was lost from its body. Beyond the shady curtain. More and more marine soldiers are gathering here. Teacher Zephyr, are you okay? After returning, Anne looked at Zephyr's broken arm, his face full of guilt. She thought that if she hadn't been attacked, Teacher Zephyr might not have had his arm chopped off by that guy, right? As long as you're okay. Seeing the girl's tearful expression, Zephyr smiled gently, and touched the girl's head with his remaining left arm. In his opinion, as long as his students, the future of these marines will be fine. In comparison, the battle on El Yushiu's side is more important. There was a trace of nervousness in his eyes, but he was so proud of his knowledge that he couldn't sense the situation inside at all. El Yushiu, can you handle it? This question flashed through his mind, so he said to Anne next to him. You guys evacuate here first. I'll stay here. Three dollars. Anne also looked in the direction of the black screen with a worried expression. She didn't expect that the man who slept every day could be so powerful. Not only did he save her sister City Chan, he also single-handedly held back the terrifying monster. The assembled marine recruits retreated, and they evacuated towards the warship. Zephyr stood alone next to the black screen, waiting with a solemn face, and made a decision silently in his heart. If it doesn't work, I'll cover Huixiu and evacuate later. Young people are the future of Marine. He believes so. So, even if you accompany me as an old bone. I won't hesitate. Zephyr stared intently. At the same time, behind the scenes. El Yushi was cracking melon seeds that she didn't know where they came from. Fortunately, the guy in Pora Salino got some seeds that day, otherwise it would have been too boring. Why does this guy last so long? He counted the floating blood crystals and sighed slightly. He had drained the blood of tens of thousands of pirates in East Blue in the past year to synthesize a hundred crystals. This big guy had synthesized almost two hundred crystals in such a short period of time. As expected of him, he has a physique that can match Whitebeard's power. He sighed again, and then yawned again. To be honest, he was a little sleepy. Simply close your eyes slightly. Since his talent level reached S level, the original limit of fighting for more than one hour per day has been removed, so he can afford it. If you sleep while fighting, your damage value will be plus 500. Time passed like this minute by minute, Wei Abul's movements became smaller and smaller, and he kept breathing heavily. The ugly face is covered with snot and tears. He also noticed the constant loss of blood on his chest. But he doesn't care. He just wants to find B.A. Jin, he just wants to find his mother. Several hours passed, and when dusk rose outside, Wei Abul finally ran out of energy. Boom! His fat body hit the ground heavily, and he fell into a coma. He lost most of his blood, which meant that the countdown to death had begun. A huge sound came. El Yushiu also woke up and looked at the nearly 300 blood crystals in the air with some emotion. Well, he had gained 300 more by moving. He snapped his fingers lightly. Snapped. The darkness dissipated, and the dusk sun set, illuminating the unrecognizable battlefield. 
whoosh. The moment the darkness cleared, Zephyr's figure suddenly appeared in it. He looked over there warily, but what he saw was the dying Wei Buer, the long dead Bia Jin, and the yawning El Yushu sitting cross-legged on an intact stone. He was fully clothed and looked completely unlucky. Traces of battle. How can this be? Zephyr said in disbelief. He has seen the power of that big guy before, it can be said to be extremely powerful. Just like Whitebeard in his youth. When he was at his peak, he would have a headache when he encountered such an opponent, and he would have to struggle with him all day and night. But this guy El Yushu. In just a few hours, the battle ended before the sun even set. Hey good afternoon, Mr. Zephyr. He even said hello to Zephyr, and looking at his sleepy eyes, he seemed to have just woken up. Hey, boy El Yushu, what is your fruit power? Zephyr asked, he thought that the opponent's fruit ability was weird enough to consume the opponent to death. The vampire fruit of Phantom Beast. I see. Zephyr nodded. There is a record of this fruit in naval headquarters, but it has not appeared for a long time. Did you not expect that it would be eaten by this young marine junior? The endurance of the Zoan phantom beast species is extremely powerful, so Zephyr subconsciously thinks that the opponent will consume Weibull's life and death. It's incredible. Zephyr sighed slightly. What would he think if he knew that El Yushu didn't do anything at all and even slept? Teacher Zephyr, what's wrong with your arm? El Yushu seemed to have just noticed the other person's broken arm and said accidentally. Asking for flowers. Ah, this, a small injury ha ha ha. Zephyr smiled, his face full of openness, and he seemed not to care about the broken arm. At the same time, I also felt a little embarrassed. There was no way, he just told this guy two days ago how he used to conquer the world with his powerful body. Unexpectedly, when we met again in the blink of an eye, my arms were gone. It must have been the pirate who attacked you, right? El Yushu asked kindly. Ah, yes, yes, he was the one who attacked me. Zephyr touched his head, feeling a little embarrassed. Really, I have to ask my students to step down. Well, does teacher Zephyr still have that arm? Hey? What do you want to do? The purple-haired man asked. I can help you connect the hand. So the two of them went to the ruins and found the thick arm thrown on the ground. Fortunately, the arm is still intact. Then I'm sorry to trouble you. Zephyr said, as a man who has advocated physical fitness all his life and refused to eat devil fruit, not only was his arm cut off this time, but he also needed the ability to recover from the fruit. When he thought of this, he couldn't help but feel a little ashamed. At the same time, I thought to myself, should I also look for a fruit? El Yushu looked at the other party's broken arm. Although the bleeding had stopped, judging from the smooth gap. Well, the knife is very fast, and the gap is almost smooth. He held the broken arm with one hand, took out five blood crystals with the other hand, and crushed them into pieces. Gilyalu. After the blood-colored crystal was broken, in Zephyr's slightly surprised eyes, Blood appeared out of thin air, covering his broken arms and gaps. Then El Yushu took out another needle and silk thread and quickly sewed it up. On his system panel, the medical skill has reached IV-8, which is more than enough to sew up such a broken arm. After a while. Okay, don't do strenuous exercise these two days, and you'll be fine if you come to me to remove the stitches in two days. El Yushu clapped her hands and said. Sorry to bother you. Zephyr nodded and sighed. I didn't expect you to have such superb medical skills. It's so boring to work at East Blue, I've learned a little bit about everything. El Yushu waved his hand and then said. Let's go, Anne and the others are probably going to die of panic. Okay. Zephyr and him walked towards the warship. At the same time. Naval Headquarters, Marine Ford. Sengoku and others also received news that Zephyr and the others were attacked by pirates. Hundreds of people were killed or injured. I understand. 
Sengoku hangs up the phone. He said to Garp who was listening with his ears perked up next to him. You heard it, Zephyr and the others were attacked by pirates, and Zephyr's arm was cut off. Is there such a powerful pirate in the park? Garp squinted his eyes, feeling that something was a little unusual. Well, the former crew member of Rock's pirate, Miss Bajin attacked the recruit. Sengoku briefly talked about what happened. Garp frowned upon hearing this. Hey, this kind of combat power, if Shishibukai wasn't already full now, the five elders would probably. The world government's definition of a great pirate is based on its record and strength. A pirate like Weibul who attacks marines when they go to sea and then cuts off the arm of the former marine admiral is very good. A year or two ago, when Shishibukai still had vacancies, they would probably have discussed it. As for marines' opinion? What are you doing? Why does the master need to pay attention to the dog's opinion when doing things? This is world government. Then who subdued him? He, who had been silent just now, raised his head and asked. With Zephyr's broken arm, there were many recruits around. Based on her understanding of that guy, the opponent would definitely choose to cover the recruits and retreat, leaving them with no ability to fight any more. It's that guy El Yushu. Speaking of this name, Sengoku sighed. First, he easily suppressed Jun, and then he defeated a pirate of that strength. Now he really wants to tie that guy El Yushu to the headquarters and issue tasks to him every day, all year round. Ha 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 ha. Really? El Yushu is so awesome. Garp laughed loudly after hearing this. Paradise. The warship is still docked near the island, it is already night. El Yushu was alone on the deck blowing the sea breeze. The unseen feeling in his heart became stronger and stronger, that he was about to get lucky. It's not on this island. Speaking of which, he thought he was on this pirate island at first. After all, there were so many pirate groups gathered here, and there must be a lot of treasures, among which the possibility of getting lucky was very high. What he didn't expect was that not only would he not have his great luck, but he would also have a fight with Weibul. But the premonition is getting stronger and stronger. He couldn't help but sigh. That, that. At this moment, a voice came from behind. El Yushu looked back, the baby-faced Anne and the blonde marine who he had rescued before looked at him timidly, Sir. I'm so sorry. Those two days I... Anne blushed slightly and said to El Yushu. The other party saved everyone and healed teacher Zephyr's arm, which made her very grateful. Because of this, the thought of her aggressive behavior against him in the past two days made her feel ashamed, so she took this action. Well, it's okay. El Yushu yawned and said that he didn't care about what happened in those two days at first. On the contrary, he found it quite interesting. Looking at the blush on the other person's fair baby face, it's inexplicably cute. Anyway, thank you very much for saving Mr. Zephyr. A and D. You also helped him heal the injury on his arm. She smiled as she spoke, as if this matter was very important to her. You are welcome. Infected by the girl's smile, El Yushu couldn't help but smile. Also, A and D. Hey, City Chan. You didn't come here. After the girl finished speaking, she pushed the blonde girl behind her out. Well, her name is Sadie. She said you saved her and she came here to thank you. Anne's little mouth whispered. El Yushu raised his eyes and didn't look carefully when he was fighting with Weibul before. Now I find that it's surprisingly pretty. She has slightly curved blonde hair, bangs covering her eyes and a little bit of Madara on her face. She looks particularly introverted. But she has an extremely good figure. Even wearing a large marine uniform on her body can't stop her plump breasts and long, smooth legs from looking particularly sexy. This is a beauty who looks full of contradictions but is unexpectedly beautiful. El Yushu thought to herself. Hello, my name is Sadie. She introduced herself again her voice soft and waxy, with a hint of charm, 
but unfortunately she sounded a little shy. Thank you so much for saving me. She bowed slightly, and a ravine like 480 loomed somewhere, and El Yushiu couldn't take his eyes away. Hello Sadie, I'm El Yushiu. He casually said kide, and at the same time a figure appeared in his memory. A certain warden chief of Impel Down, the commander of the four warden beasts of Impel Down level 4 Blazing Hell, has the same rights as the warden. He also has curly blonde hair, bangs covering his eyes, wearing candle-shaped white earrings, a pink tight leather jacket and spiked high-heeled shoes, and his catchphrase is yet. He has a serious sadistic habit and will become very excited when he hears the screams of his opponents being beaten. I just don't know if it's her. El Yushiu thought about it, and suddenly felt sleepy again, then waved her hand and said. I'm a little tired and want to sleep. You can leave first. Hee <laughs> hee, okay. Anne, who has gradually become familiar with his temperament these days, chuckled, and pulled Sadie, who was still opening his mouth to say something, to leave quickly. This is a great benefactor, you can't mess with him, you have to provide for him. Call. Seeing the two people leaving, El Yushiu leisurely came to the beach chair, lay down and put her legs up, eh comfortable. If you catch fish while on a business trip, your damage value will be plus 100. Brew 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 brew. However, as soon as he lay down, the phone in his arms rang. El Yushiu answered the call and said lazily. Moses Moses. El Yushiu, when will you come back? Nami's voice came from inside, with a hint of questioning and longing. She didn't know that he had a fight with someone at naval headquarters two days ago, or that he had just fought with pirates again. She just misses him a little. What's wrong? The baileys in the base aren't enough to pay your salary. Hearing the girl's voice, El Yushiu felt inexplicably happy, and he joked. El Yushiu. I'm telling you something serious. There was a hint of irritation in his voice, and Nami on the other side of the phone gritted his teeth. This guy didn't answer my question, just changed the topic. A and D. Aren't I keeping all your money now? I can give myself as much as I want. There's still a while, Nami. El Yushiu said, he hasn't found the source of luck yet, so his return date is uncertain. I'm sorry to trouble you during this time. Please help Bartolomeo and the others with the pirates they can't deal with. Of course, this is all to say, the Hakka family has developed rapidly in the past year. With specialized ships and Logue Town's strength, Nami basically doesn't need to take action. I know, and you are not allowed to hook up with the beautiful Marine. Nami warned. All right. El Yushiu blinked, Hina, Jun, Anne, Sadie and others came here on their own initiative, and he didn't go to hook up with them, right? Maybe? Humph. That's fine, I'm telling you. Nami's satisfied voice sounded, and then he started chattering about what happened in the base during his absence. El Yushiu listened patiently, and he felt that time flew by quickly. The warship headed towards the headquarters of Marine Ford. This time the recruits suffered heavy casualties. Sengoku ordered them to return immediately. An island in the Grand Line. This is Robbie Island. Somewhere in an underground laboratory. Some people in white coats are doing their own experimental steps. Some people are responsible for dissection, some are responsible for dismemberment, and some are responsible for suturing. On the experimental table, a figure with a human face and the body of a sea animal was staring at them fiercely. His name is Alan. He was originally a homeless man in a small town. Unexpectedly, he was beaten by someone and woke up again on this cold experimental table. They first gave him anesthesia, then cut his body into two sections, and finally sewed the sea beast's body together. When he woke up, he had turned into this ghost. If possible, he must kill them. In another corner, a civet cat wearing a hat was locked in a cage by them. Hey, where did you catch this civet cat? I don't know, it looks like I ate devil fruit, it has research value. Yet. 
That's fine. I'll dissect it in two days and have a look. I haven't seen what happens to the body of an animal that eats devil fruit. Well, don't get yourself killed. Don't worry, I'm very skilled. Also, tell that guy Barlow in the next two days to find some strong ones. This experimental subject almost died just now. People on the island are very vigilant now, it's hard to catch. Then add more money. Oh, I see. The figures in white coats talk to each other, their tone full of indifference to life. Oh, Anne, why did you drag me away? I still want to express my gratitude to Mr. L. Yushu. Um... The image of El Yushu's tall and handsome figure standing in front of her flashed through her mind, and Sadie let out a seductive hum. He just went through a big battle, let him take a rest. Really? Anne looked at his little sister with hatred, why did he feel like she was so stupid sometimes? Oh, okay. Sadie responded with a smile, but her bangs covered her eyes, making it difficult to see what she was thinking. Robbie Island Hey! Hog back! Don't sew up the corpse of the sea beast again. Well, don't worry about these details, this is all to complete the experiment better. The fat man named Hogbark smiled and said that he was originally a genius surgeon and his reputation was well known in the medical community. But the death of singer Sindori a few years ago left him depressed, and he wanted to resurrect her. So he did not hesitate to cooperate with these mysterious people. He was responsible for dissecting and sewing up the corpses, and these people were responsible for collecting experimental data. Sindulai, wait for me, I want to resurrect you. He murmured in a low voice, his eyes full of madness. Marine warship is sailing on the sea. Due to the weird weather, it was raining violently at this time. You have experienced the storm of the Grand Line, and the experience value of seeing and hearing is plus 1333. Mr. L. Yushu, are you really not going to take shelter from the rain? A soft voice sounded. L. Yushu, who was lying on the beach chair on the deck, raised his eyes and looked at the blonde beauty. The other party seems to be extraordinarily attentive these days, asking for help and bringing him food every day. Well what on earth does Sidi Chan want to do with me? He didn't use his knowledge to pry into other people's hearts, he just asked directly. Hmm. She blushed slightly, tilted her head and thought for a moment before deciding to speak out her request. Can you, scold me? El Yushu. Seeing the tall and handsome man staring at me like he's an idiot. Sadie's face was flushed, but she still insisted. Please. And bow. Duan. The little white rabbit jumped up and down, which made El Yushu blush. He couldn't help but say. Are you stupid? This sentence was like a switch, making her whole body tremble, and she carried a hint of charm. The corners of El Yushu's eyes twitched as she watched. Damn it, isn't she S? Why did she become M here? He had no doubt that if he had a whip in his hand, the other party would even kneel down and beg him, ahem. El Yushu. At this moment, a voice came from the cabin, and she immediately saw Sadie, whose face was flushed and trembling slightly, and El Yushu, who was lying leisurely on the beach chair, seemingly doing nothing. Didn't do anything? Damn it! What did you two do behind my back? Anne was a little angry for no reason, but she didn't know why she was angry. She stepped forward and grabbed Sadie and said, Hey, Sadie Chan, Teacher Zephyr is looking for you. Please go in quickly. Ah. Mr. L. Yushu, I will come see you later. Sadie, who was being pushed, said loudly, which made Anne's face darken. Bang. She closed the cabin door smoothly. Walking towards L. Yushu with long legs, he asked nonchalantly. Hey what did you just do? L. Yushu looked at her like she was a fool. What could I have done just now? Can't I just lie here all the time? You, I mean Sidi Chan. Seeing that he didn't tell the truth, Anne stamped his feet, and his fleshy legs exposed to the air trembled. Seeing her anxious look, 
El Yushu felt a little funny, and he half seriously said. Hey, it's nothing. Sadie just told me that she was impressed by my handsome hero saving the beauty and wanted to come back with me. Before he could finish speaking, he was interrupted. She. How, how can it be possible? Anne's voice was filled with anxiety and anger. Then I noticed El Yushu's smiling eyes, and her fair and soft baby face couldn't help but be filled with blush. Oh? Why not? Could it be? He deliberately prolonged his tone, his handsome face full of ridicule. You. You. I won't tell you any more. Teacher Zephyr asked me to tell you that I will dock for supplies later. Hum. She stretched out her green-white fingers and groaned angrily, then ran away as if running away. Boom. Ouch. Before leaving, she was so angry that she kicked the iron wall, but she forgot that she was wearing slippers, and her white toes hurt and she screamed. El Yushu smiled while lying on the beach chair. I don't know why, but bullying a baby-faced girl like Anne always gives him an inexplicable sense of pleasure. Could it be that he has unlocked some attribute? El Yushu suddenly raised his eyes and looked into the distance. He looked past the violent storm and looked at the looming island. He had a premonition of what he was about to encounter. Call. When the warship docked at Rogue Island, the violent storm in the sky suddenly disappeared, and the weather became clear again. This is the magic of Grand Line. El Yushu silently watched thousands of hacky experiences being refreshed in the background of the system, and nodded with satisfaction. Not bad, it looks like I can come to Grand Line for vacation more often in the future. He thought to himself. Ta-ta, footsteps came from behind. Bandaged Zephyr came to El Yushu's side. We are going downstairs to resupply, do you want to go for a walk? His voice was full of gentleness and it was obvious that he loved El Yushu very much. Okay. El Yushu nodded, and at the same time the premonition in his heart became stronger and stronger. But it's fine if I go alone. No need. He hasn't finished speaking yet. A soft voice sounded. El Yu, Mr. El Yushu, I can accompany you. Sadie said weakly, not at all like she did just now. And I... Not to be outdone, Anne jumped out and looked at her sisters angrily. You are no longer my turtle honey. You are my enemy honey. Okay. El Yushu swallowed her rejection. Well, I definitely didn't agree just because they are two beauties. Ha 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 ha. You go down for a walk, we will wait for you to come back. When Zephyr saw this, he didn't say much about 4.6. After all, with El Yushu's strength, there were very few who could threaten them in the first half of the Grand Line, and he was very relieved about this. J. El Yushu waved to Zephyr. Then when the warship just docked, he stepped directly on the fence. Whoosh! The amazing jumping ability made him fly up instantly and jump downwards. Strong strength is used for high jumps. Anne and Sadie looked at each other and followed on the moonwalk. At the same time, in the mysterious laboratory. What's wrong? A marine warship has docked. A man in a white coat hurriedly walked into the house and started to pack up information, he's going to run away. How many ships? Another man in a white coat shrank his pupils, thinking that the experiment he and others were exposed caused a buster call. Equals. Peace. The white coat breathed a sigh of relief as long as it wasn't Buster Call. But we have to start evacuating, although they seem to be just passing by for supplies, in case. He didn't finish what he said, but everyone understood it. Hey. Hog back. You come with us. Go away. Wait until Lao Zi finishes dissecting this. He said manically, staring at the corpse on the experimental table. This is the first time he has seen this kind of strange corpse. It is actually covered with crystals, and they will grow when exposed to light. Maybe there might be a clue to resurrect Sindori. This guy. The man in the white coat who had just spoken to remind him clenched his fist, 
and the other man stretched out his hand to stop him. Forget it, he probably won't be able to wake up in this state. Let's go. Um. The people in white coats left one after another, leaving only the fat figure dissecting the corpse intoxicatedly. At the same time, El Yushu and the other three were already walking on the streets of Robbie Island Town. Hmm. Why does it feel weird here? Anne muttered. Begging figures can be seen everywhere on the street. All pedestrians walk in a hurry and have alert eyes, as if some human trafficker will appear at the next moment. The tall and handsome El Yushu and her two beauties caught the attention of many people, especially after seeing the marine coats they were wearing. The eyes of some figures in the dark flashed with greed and cruelty. Hey! Do you want to do it? That blue-haired woman looks hee hee. In a corner of the street, El Yushu and others were spied on. He smiled obscenely, and at the same time, his lower body felt hot. He really wanted to play with that female marine. Hey! Put away your stupid ideas. There are three headquarters warships docked over there. The companion scolded, this guy really knows how to fall in love with women in one day, and sooner or later he will die in the woman's belly. Hey! The scolded figure shook his head, not paying attention to his companion's words. The figure he looked at Anne became more and more lustful, and he couldn't hold it in any longer. He made an excuse and said to his companion. I'm going to the toilet. Okay, hurry up. El Yushu and others have already gone far, and he wants to set up an ambush where they must pass. Um. He looked up at a certain corner. What's wrong? Anne asked. No. There are rats. El Yushu shook his head, and the flash of red light in his pupils dissipated. Puff. The figure who was running and preparing to ambush suddenly glared. He felt a heat flow on his face and touched it subconsciously. This is... Thump. After he finished speaking, he fell directly to the ground, with his ears, nose, eyes and blood flowing all over the ground. Arrive. El Yushu said, not paying attention to the rat hiding in the gutter just now. For him now, it is not difficult to control the blood of ordinary people from a distance to make the seven emperors bleed to death. Here? There's nothing here. Anne said with white eyes, even Sadie shook her head. Under. El Yushu stepped on it. Spider web like cracks suddenly appeared on the ground ahead. Boom. A hidden tunnel appears. Wow. Mr. El Yushu is so awesome. Sadie held her hands, her eyes were shining, and she said in an adoring tone. Anne clenched his fists. Let's go down and have a look. El Yushu yawned and said, the two women followed. Boom. The shaking sound of the ground woke up Hogback, who was addicted to autopsy. Hey? What happened? He looked up and looked around and found that all his former colleagues had left. Those nasty guys. At the same time, he raised his head and glanced at the surveillance camera. Above, El Yushu appears with two women walking into the tunnel. Is it Marine? How did they get here? How to do how to do? Hogback was so anxious that he was sweating profusely. Although he was an evil surgeon, he had almost no force value. Any number of soldiers could defeat him. Suddenly, he thought of something and looked into a drawer somewhere. Boom! Since there was no password, El Yushu kicked down the iron door of the laboratory. The several meter thick iron door twisted and festered under Anne's surprised gaze. The three of them walked straight in. What comes into view is dozens of huge glass chambers filled with organs of various creatures, with green liquid bubbling. Disgusting. Anne frowned, his expression somewhat disgusted. Sadie also looked up and saw that there were human corpses, eyes of sea beasts, heads of beasts, and big ugly faces. She didn't know why, but instead of feeling scared when she saw this scene, she was actually a little excited. So excited, my body trembled slightly. El Yushu glanced at her. This guy, has his S attribute awakened? This way. 
he shook his head, and then walked to a certain room based on what he saw and heard. Bang! El Yuxiu opened the door. Anne looked up and frowned slightly. The stitched corpses of dead humans and animals on the experimental bench, human limbs discarded everywhere, and unknown bones piled together. A and D. A fat man with purple hair and an ugly face was kneeling on the ground. It looked like he had been prepared for a long time. Yes. I'm sorry, Marine Sama. I was captured. Hogback's trembling figure said, with runny nose and tears, looking like a victim. El Yuxiu just squinted her eyes, do you think I believe you? Hi, Mr. Marine. You have to believe me. He staggered and moved his knees towards El Yuxiu, then suddenly raised his hand. Slash. Anne's pupils next to him shrank, and he was about to say a reminder. Boom. A bullet burst out of the barrel. Hi ha 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 ha. Go to hell Marine. He laughed wildly, but... Hmm. It's pretty powerful. El Yuxiu held a bullet and commented. Her fingertips had white marks. Snap! The gun was thrown to the ground. He knelt down again. That, that. Master Marine. I actually have schizophrenia. That's not what I wanted to do just now, Master Marine. Looks very sincere. Whoosh! El Yushu didn't say anything, and stepped forward and waved the short blade to cut off the opponent's limbs directly. Poof. Blood flowed all over the ground. Okay, this way he can't move his hands and feet. Anne put away the knife and said calmly, she would never hold back against such a bad guy. Ah 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 ah. The severe pain made the fat man scream miserably. El Yushu just said. Tell me, what is the purpose of your laboratory? I, I don't know. I'm just a surgeon. I'm just responsible for dissecting them. He shouted in pain, and if an uninformed person saw it, they would probably think that El Yushu and the others were bad guys, and he was the victim. Um. El Yushu just squinted his eyes. I'm still not telling the truth. Sadie actually stood up and stepped on the broken opening. Ah. <laughs> Fatty Hogback shouted again, but unfortunately the louder he shouted. Sadie's body trembled more and more, and she even took out the short blade from her waist and started chopping. Puff. Puff. Minced meat, blood, constantly flowing. The two people next to me looked at each other in confusion. Anne's eyes widened even more, he didn't expect his little sister to have such a hobby. Hmm. Say or not. Sadie licked her lips, her voice was still soft and soft. Her originally fair face became a little flushed, and her eyes under her bangs were full of excitement. Say. I say ah ah ah. Let this woman stay away from me, woo woo. The fat man screamed in fear, this woman is too scary. Hmm. Sadie wanted to step forward to teach her a lesson, but El Yushu stepped forward and pinched her white and tender wrist and said. Okay, Sadie Chan, listen to what he has to say. I'm okay Mr. El Yushu. Sadie looked back at the tall and handsome man next to her. She approached slightly and said. Mr. El Yushu, can you scold me? El Yushu's mouth twitched, her tone was slightly serious. Get behind you, you idiot. Ah. Okay Mr. El Yushu. She was so excited that she quickly slipped behind Anne like a little rabbit. Anne looked at this scene expressionlessly clenching his fists slightly. Demi. So sweet. My, my name is Hogbark, I am a surgeon, a few years ago. The fat man told his story intermittently. When he heard that the other party was trying to resurrect his favorite female singer, and showed a disgusted expression. That's not why you help those evil guys. She also pointed at the things everywhere in the room, as well as the body covered with crystals next to it. Even though she was used to seeing battlefields, she couldn't help but feel a little sick at this moment. That, that person was about to die. I just ended her suffering in advance. 
Hawkback struggled and said. And this kind of case is extremely rare. It can make the cells of the corpse rejuvenate, just need to see the light. Maybe there are some clues. At the same time, he stared fervently at the body lying on the experimental table. Oh, this. El Yushiu stepped forward and took a look, with a flash of surprise in his eyes. He didn't expect to see this disease here. One of the future supernovas, Bonnie, was once a patient of this disease, the girl who lost consciousness and was willing to be transformed by the Shishibukai bear. So he opened his mouth and explained. This disease is called Kingshalin. Although it is rare, it is not uncommon. It is considered a terminal disease. The reason why it makes cells active. El Yushiu opened his mouth to explain. The more he talked about Huo Gubuk, the paler his face became. How is it possible, how could this happen, I don't believe it. Okay, it's none of your business. El Yushiu yawned and manipulated the opponent's blood to directly crush his heart. Why are you? Hogback's eyes gradually dimmed. Sindori, I can't resurrect you. Thump. He fell to the ground. What Hogbark didn't know was that, if nothing unexpected happened, he would meet Shishibukai Moria not long after, and in a sense, he would indeed resurrect her. After Hwagubuk died, El Yushiu came to an iron fence covered with black cloth. That underworld feeling is getting stronger and stronger. He lifted the black cloth. The black cloth was torn open, and everyone saw a strange civet cat wearing a hat squatting weakly in the corner of the cage. When it saw El Yushiu and others, it shrank in fear. Wow! So cute! May I have your name? Anne stepped forward and squatted in front of the cage and whispered. I, I don't have a name. You, are you here to save me? As it spoke, it stared at the tall man with hopeful eyes and said. Well, I'm here to save you. El Yushiu also squatted down, bent the iron cage with a little force, and then stretched his hand in. My name is El Yushiu. He has determined that it is his secret treasure. Zoan civet cat fruit phantom beast species transformed into a raccoon form, this fruit is very powerful, even more powerful than the vampire fruit in his opinion. When you use the ability, deformed leaves will appear, and then you can summon people in your memory to fight for you, you can turn the patterns written on the leaves into real items, and even create a parallel world that looks just like the real thing. In other words, anything on the leaves can be transformed into reality, which is a bit like Ma Yang, the magic brush. Whatever you draw with the brush becomes real. Many figures suddenly appeared in El Yushiu's mind. I, I don't have a name. It repeated that it had just eaten that strange fruit a few days ago and was caught here by these people. It didn't even know what happened. Then you can call Bailey from now on. He did not name the other party Pat. After all, that was the name Gu Gaohong had given him when he was a child. In order to avoid some trouble. Just call him Bailey, after all. Bailey can indeed bring good luck to people. Okay. My name is Bailey. Hearing this title, he seemed a little happy and put his paw on El Yushiu's hand. Bailey, we will be companions from now on. Looking at this cute creature, El Yushiu couldn't help but smile. The civet cat nodded. Um. Let's go, I'll take you out. Good. The civet cat climbed from El Yushiu's hand to sit on his shoulder. El Yushiu, what should I do here? Anne pointed to the glass covers in the laboratory. Well, let's destroy it. El Yushiu's eyes flashed red, and he said calmly after not detecting the presence of any living person. Seven dollars. So everyone left, and when they came to the ground. Boom. The ground trembled slightly, and the originally empty tunnel seemed to be squeezed by invisible forces, and the huge space inside was completely buried. And, who has a sharp eye, noticed a hint of scarlet in the soil. El Yushiu's ability? It's so amazing. She admired in her heart. El Yushiu, where else are we going? 
She was smart enough to know that he came here specifically, but she didn't ask. Go back, Bailey is hungry. Yeah, Bailey is hungry. The three of them walked towards the warship. There are only three of them, do you want? Shut up. Don't disturb the master's plan. 227 Hey. Fortunately, the slaves were sold to the world government yesterday, otherwise it would be troublesome if these marines found out. What are you afraid of, these marines dare to control the world government? We will restock after they leave. Incoming goods? You don't have to think about it to know what kind of goods you are getting. El Yushu's face turned cold when he heard the voice, but he didn't have an attack on the spot. When they returned, everyone had already replenished supplies. Zephyr is looking out from the deck, like an old father waiting for his daughter to come home. El Yushu looked at that figure and thought silently, wouldn't Anne and I have to change our tune in the future? Father-in-law? But he looked at Anne who was bouncing and walking, and shook his head again. Hiss, this baby face makes people feel guilty. You are back. When El Yushu and the others boarded the warship, Zephyr, who was originally serious, smiled. Well, I went for a walk. El Yushu said. The two women looked at each other silently and did not say anything about the situation just now. After all, it had been dealt with. Teacher Zephyr, I'm leaving first, you guys can chat. Seeing that the two grown men were chatting, Anne excused himself first, and also grabbed Sadie who was staying where he was. After the two left, Zephyr clapped his hands and said something incomprehensible. El Yushu, don't let them down. El Yushu, hey. No. What did I do? That girl Anne likes you very much, and that kid Sadie. Zephyr lit a cigarette, and the smoke covered his face, making it difficult to see what he was thinking. She has never been so enthusiastic and caring about a man, and she is also angry because of your words. You don't know that she has been chanting your name in front of me every day these days. He was talking word by word, but El Yushu sounded a little bit gnashing his teeth. As for the child Sadie, she is quite pitiful. He then started telling the story about how the other party's family members were murdered, and how he fell into autistic and introverted condition, and was afraid to see people for a time. El Yushu listened silently, without interrupting the old man's words. Well, don't worry, teacher Zephyr, I won't let them get hurt. What can he do? He can only reluctantly agree. So does Sister Anne like El Yushu? I know. Bailey on his shoulder shouted. To Zephyr's surprise. A talking to Nuki. Yes. I'm Bailey. Hello. It beckons. Hello Bailey. The strange interaction between the two made El Yushu smile. Okay, I still have to deal with some things. Zephyr waved his hand and said. Uh-huh. El Yushu nodded, and then took Bailey to the deck. Bailey. Um. I want to use your ability. Good. Transform into a raccoon and a pen, using leaves as shapes, spanning fantasy and reality. El Yushu drew a certain figure with a few swipes and threw it. Boom. The smoke dissipated, and a three-meter-tall figure appeared. Go ahead, ruin the place. D. A small desert island somewhere outside Robbie Island. This place occupies a huge area, with various iron cages standing there, filled with blood and coldness. A huge open space is filled with various gangster-like figures. Ha 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 ha. Boss. How much did you sell for yesterday? Do you guys have any bonuses or anything? A gangster asked. Of course. Don't worry, the money will be yours. The boss dressed as a businessman said with a smile, this is his top trafficker, he can catch two to three hundred goods a month. Thank you, boss. The gangster laughed, and now he has enough money for gambling. Clatter. 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 At this moment, people suddenly heard the sound of crutches. Everyone looked up. 
I don't know when a purple robed figure appeared. Hey? Why is he a blind man? You can't sell a blind man at a good price, let alone being so old. That's not to say, some customers just like this kind of old one. Ha 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 ha, yes. Hey. Blind man. It's bad luck for you to come to our place. The gangsters smiled ferociously and picked up their weapons to surround him. They didn't even think about how the other party ended up on this deserted island. Only the trafficker boss had a bad feeling. This place is really full of sin. The purple-robed figure opened his white eyes and said calmly. Then let me, clean this place. The staff knife in his hand was pushed aside, and a purple light shot into the sky. Hmm? Ability user. This strange scene immediately frightened the gangsters, and they looked at him warily. However, after waiting for a long time, there was no movement. Old guy. How dare you scare us? The gangsters showed their ugly faces again, and they moved forward with a ferocious smile. Hoo ho ho! What they didn't notice was that a huge meteorite was slowly falling from the sky. Boom! A huge sound came from the sea, so powerful that warships that had already left for several sea miles could hear it. A. El Yushu just glanced in that direction slightly, and then continued to lower his head and read the newspaper. You have eliminated a place of evil in the world, and you seem to have realized something. Conqueror's experience value plus 999. The sound of the system came. This is a good move. I can blame others later. He yawned and said. It just consumes a lot. After a while, copying Fujitora and using a meteor actually depleted the mental energy on his panel. In other words, he can only summon a hundred meteorites with one thousand points of mental power. The civet fruit is so terrifying. No wonder only the strong can use it. A weak person might just draw something and lose all their energy and faint. The warship began to sail towards naval headquarters. Two days have passed and the warship is about to arrive at Marine Ford. Well Mr. L. Yushu, please scold me. Sadie squatted beside the beach chair and prayed. Please this is my last request in this life. If she can no longer hear Mr. L. Yushu's scolding, she feels that she will be depressed for a long time. A soft voice sounded, but unfortunately the figure lying on the beach chair remained unmoved. Sadie. Um. Anne is here. Whoosh. After the words fell, Sadie, who had just squatted down to pray, immediately stood up straight and her expression returned to normal. It seemed that nothing happened. If you ignore the blush on her face. Bang. The door was opened, and Anne appeared with long legs, looking like a guard. She looked at the two of them suspiciously. You, didn't do anything just now. Ah ha ha ha, how is that possible, Anne, how can you look at me like this, ha 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 ha. Sadie said with a smile, but she stuttered a little as if she had betrayed something. Anne snorted in displeasure, pointed at the cabin with his green-white finger and said, Teacher Zephyr is looking for you. My little sister is angry. What can Sadie say? All she can do is obey. Bang! The door is closed. The two of them were alone together again, and the scene seemed inexplicably familiar. They looked at each other, no one said anything. A strange atmosphere permeates the surroundings. That. Anne broke the calm, she pretended to be calm and said. We are about to arrive at the headquarters, and we may not see each other for a long time, don't you, have anything to say to me? The girl's thoughts were about to come out, she was quietly looking forward to it. El Yushu's mouth was slightly raised, but she didn't say anything, just looked at the other person's baby face quietly. You, look what I do. His face was slightly red after being stared at. Anne was a little embarrassed. This guy. Do you like her to give you an accurate letter? Come here. You, what are you doing? She was obviously the one who started the topic, but when it happened, she felt a little nervous and scared. Don't you want to hear the answer? Wah, what? 
oh. She blinked her big burgundy eyes and moved over cautiously. After the other party came closer, El Yushu stretched out his hand slightly, hugged the other party's waist, and pulled. You, uh uh. She widened her eyes and wanted to say something, but her mouth was blocked and her body couldn't help but soften. Kiss when you're on a business trip, the value of being spoiled is plus three hundred. Hey, hey, ha, hey. The girl was lying in El Yushu's arms with a flushed face, with a trace of confusion in her eyes. Apparently he still hasn't recovered from the kiss just now. Hey this is my answer. But what you need to know is that you can't be the only woman for me. He spoke softly, leaving the decision-making power to the other party. Well, it's a bit shameless, I kissed you first before talking. Anne, who was lying in El Yushu's arms, rolled his eyes and did not refute his words. It's normal for powerful people in this world to have many women. She knew this, so she didn't pay special attention to it. However, it is still very uncomfortable. Did, did you kiss Sidi Chan first? Um. Question marks popped up in El Yushu's head. What and what? Seeing that the other party did not answer directly, Anne rolled his eyes again. Sure enough, this guy attacked Sadie first. Forget it, I'm so angry. Anne subconsciously thought that the other woman he was referring to was Sidi Chan. Well I don't know what she would think if she knew that this guy had an affair with Hina in the headquarters, Jun with whom he was dating, and the girls in East Blue. El Yushu didn't know what she was thinking, nor did he want to know. He lifted her smooth chin with his hand. Come on, give me a kiss. Well. Anne's lips were blocked again, and she hit El Yushu's chest angrily. MMM the little mouth is so sweet. Early the next morning, Marine arrived at Marine Ford. After bidding farewell to Zephyr, Anne, and others, he faced the admiring eyes of many Marine recruits. El Yushu left the port. He yawned as he walked down the street, with a hint of dark circles at the corners of his eyes. Yesterday, I was pestered by Anne and kissed her until midnight. I finally coaxed him away. In the middle of the night, Sadie came again. She prayed that she would scold her and beat her. Seeing the other party's expression of wanting to cry, El Yushu had no choice but to fulfill her request. Poor Bailey was asleep when he was woken up by a strange snapping noise. Of course, don't get it wrong, the snapping sound refers to spanking only. Very sleepy. El Yushu squinted his eyes and said. Hey, you're finally back. Hina waved and said, it seems she has been waiting here for a long time. How did you know I was coming back this morning? Well, it's just a coincidence Hina. She smiled slightly and lied without changing her face. Hina, don't you know that when you lie, you will cross your hands subconsciously? Whoosh! The originally crossed hands were immediately put down. She said slightly seriously. What are you talking about, Hina doesn't know. All right. El Yushu replied perfunctorily, causing the other party to roll his eyes. Afternoon. After finally getting rid of Hina, El Yushu, who was leisurely drinking tea and looking at beauties in the commercial street, suddenly received a call. Brew brew brew. Moses Moses. You guy. Don't you even know how to report back to headquarters? Sengoku's angry voice sounded from inside. Hmm. Okay, got it. El Yushu kied perfunctorily. You guy. The voice on the phone bug roared. El Yushu turned his face away slightly, feeling that the saliva from the other side was about to spray out. Blue. So he chose to hang up the phone. At the same time, the marshal's office. After Sengoku saw his phone was hung up. Boom. Angry. He hammered the table. This guy has absolutely no rules. I am a marshal. Believe it or not, I will demote him. If you really do this, that kid might be very happy. Garp next to him raised his eyes and looked at the old man. Hey. Garp you guy. Sengoku blew his beard angrily and stared. 
Half an hour passed. El Yushiu arrived late. Yo! Marshal Sengoku, good afternoon. As soon as he entered the door, he said hello. Sengoku doesn't want to talk, the old guy is quite arrogant. Well, please tell me in detail what happened that day. Garp spoke for the old man, and took a curious look at the civet cat on his shoulder. Oh, that day. El Yushiu nodded, and then began to tell the detailed story. When they heard that Zephyr's arm had been cut off completely, the two of them looked solemn. When they heard that El Yushiu had exhausted all his strength to fight to the death and finally narrowly won, the two of them showed a hint of appreciation. There was no doubt about it, after all, they were the remnants of the rock's pirate, and the man who could cut off the arm of the former marine admiral. It's already good that El Yushiu can defeat these two. After finally hearing that the other party had cured Zephyr's arm, Sengoku could no longer hold his breath, and asked curiously, Boy El Yushiu, are there any limits to your ability? Sengoku's question surprised El Yushiu, but it was also reasonable. This. He opened his mouth to explain. This has a certain time limit. The limb must not be broken for more than a certain period of time. That's it. Sengoku nodded, that would greatly reduce the value. You must know that there are not a few marines who lost their hands and feet due to fighting, and many veterans retired sadly because of this. As marine marshal, he also hopes that those people will not end up like this. Okay, it's none of your business, just go down. After getting the answer he wanted, Sengoku started to wave people away. Good. 8. El Yushiu yawned, so happy that he turned and left. Bang! The door closed, Sengoku and Garp looked at each other. That fruit hasn't appeared for a long time, right? He was referring to the vampire fruit. I didn't expect to be eaten by a brat like El Yushiu. Sengoku sighed slightly. That's good, at least he is a marine. If he is eaten by some evil guys, it will be really uneasy. With an extremely long lifespan, always maintaining peak condition, and a nearly immortal body, you can imagine how terrifying it is. Ha 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 ha. With that guy's temperament, he should be lucky if he eats this fruit. Garp laughed and said. Yeah, his virtue. Sengoku also smiled. What would he think if he knew, that El Yushiu was just messing around to accumulate strength? El Yushiu left the marshal's office and came to another office. Bang! He knocked on the door and walked in without waiting for the person inside to respond. Hey isn't this Kizaru Admiral? Why are you so late and you haven't gotten off work yet? Whoosh! A laser beam shot through, and El Yushiu turned his head to avoid it. He turned around and glanced at the entrance of the cave. Tisk, tisk, tisk. You damage public facilities every day, I will report you to Marshal Sengoku. Oh I'm so scared. Kizaru pouted Kide. Then what do you want from me? Why can't I come to you if nothing happens? Don't say such chilling words, I am your dear brother. I don't have such a mean brother. Kizaru didn't speak, just stared at the other person quietly. Oh, what a sad look. El Yushiu covered her face with her hands, looking very sad. Well I'm here to say goodbye to you, and I'm going back soon. The headquarters is so boring. It would be better for me to go back to bask in the sun, read the newspaper, and sleep, unlike some people. Buzz! Eight-foot beautiful Megatama! Countless light bullets were fired at El Yushiu, but unfortunately the opponent immediately turned into a black shadow and fled. Rumble. There was a huge explosion in the admiral office, which means this is the top floor, otherwise it would be easy to hurt innocent people. Hey! What happened? Is there an attack? Go and have a look. After observing the movement here, the other marine generals came to investigate. Um. In the messy room, Kizaru narrowed his eyes. He was unusually serious just now. She really knows how to hide her strength El Yushiu. That evening. El Yushiu, 
who flirted with the Admiral Tiger's beard, came to the port, accompanied by Hina. El Yushiu is going back to East Blue, and Hina is accompanying him. Ah! I'm so sleepy! El Yushiu yawned and said. Hina will give you a squeeze later. The pink-haired beauty blinked and said. El Yushiu stopped her, pinched her. I don't know where she pinched, Zhao Hazeo, later. Zeb. Hina got it. So the two of them boarded the warship back to East Blue. However, just as the warship was about to set sail, two people came running from a distance. El Yushiu. Remember me. Ignoring the surprised looks from the marines around him, An raised his hands like a trumpet and shouted loudly. And me, Mr. El Yushiu. Under the watchful eyes of everyone, Sadie plucked up the rare courage and waved goodbye. Don't forget what you spanked me yesterday. As soon as these words came out, Maureen, who was watching the excitement around him, suddenly looked as ugly as if he had eaten shit. What? This guy. What a dog. I'm dating Vice Admiral Jun, making love with Major Hina, and here are two beauties. Damn it. Why isn't my name El Yushiu? Damn it. Facing everyone's envious and jealous eyes, El Yushiu smiled and waved downwards. Um. Goodbye two cuties. Hina next to her just frowned slightly, watching this scene, the two lumps on her chest were rising and falling. He tilted his head and thought for a while, then nodded, seeming to have made a decision. The warship began to sail into the distance. At the same time, Alabasta, this is a superpower located in the first half of the Grand Line. Rainland, the headquarters of the Baroque studio. In the secret base, a figure wearing a fur coat and a slicked back smokes a cigar. He seemed a little happy. Son of the devil, welcome to join. Well, okay boss. Being called the son of the devil, the woman's eyes fluctuated slightly, but she quickly tolerated it, and she nodded in response to Song. Don't be too careful. There is no place for you in this world. Only I can barely protect your existence. The tall figure shrouded in smoke gave a faint warning. Don't worry, boss. The woman smiled, seemingly reluctantly, and didn't say anything to refute. She lowered her head slightly to show her submission. Number. After all these years of running away, she was really tired. The warship was sailing in the waters of the Grand Line, and it was hailing. El Yushiu lay leisurely on the beach chair, quietly listening to the sound of hail falling on the enhanced version of the sun. You have experienced the magical weather of the Grand Line, and you seem to have some enlightenment. Your marksmanship experience points plus 1111. Um. Marksmanship. El Yushiu's mouth twitched. During this period, he had been gaining hacky experience. This sudden shooting experience surprised him. Hmm. What is the system hinting at? El Yushiu why is it hailing? Bailey grabbed his shoulders and said. The other party's furry tail swept back and forth on El Yushiu's face, which made her feel a little itchy. He grabbed his tail and put it around his neck. Okay, I have the scarf. Because this is the Grand Line, Bailey. The weather on Grand Line is weird. Su Jie. The two chatted for a while until a beautiful figure walked out of the cabin. Ah. I'm suddenly a little hungry, El Yushiu, I'm going to eat. Bailey, who was still chatting just now, suddenly became excited and ran away without waiting for his reply. The man on the beach chair squinted his eyes. He felt something was unusual. He looked up. The pink-haired figure was dressed very coolly, with a tight-fitting short top barely covering a certain area, revealing a flat, white, and tender lower abdomen. A pair of straight and well-proportioned white legs dangled his eyes in a daze. Hmm. Looking into someone's eyes, Hina is very satisfied. She walks straight to him and put her big white legs on him. Hey, Hina just fell down while taking a shower and it hurts a little. Please help Hina rub it. The other party's tight and elastic legs made him feel a little hot inside. 
Hmm. After knowing each other for so long, she finally couldn't bear it anymore. The pink-haired beauty came forward slightly and hooked his chin. We have been loving each other for so long, and finally the dog man and woman have reached the last step. In the cabin, Bailey looked up towards the deck and wondered why there were screams from over there. Was anyone injured? The warship continued sailing for two days, and by this time the sun had risen. The figure lying on the deck looks a little comfortable. After two ridiculous days, he had lost track of time. El Yushu, we are going to Alabasta for supplies later. Do you want to go shopping? Hina didn't know when she came to the side, stepped forward slightly and took his arm and said, she is a little soft when walking now. Feeling the softness on her hand, El Yushu's mind moved slightly, but hearing the soft voice of the other party, she couldn't bear it. That's all, let her go. He nodded and agreed. Okay. Humhina is very happy. Why? Because you were eaten clean by Hina. After saying that, he walked away with big white legs, leaving 210 Lushu sitting alone on the beach chair. Bailey was shaking his head, his little head full of doubts. Humph. Hina's expression was obviously happy when she returned to the office. She showed a successful smile. These days are the most comfortable days for her. Meanwhile, Alabasta. Robin, who has become the vice president and supreme commander of Baroque Studio, looked at the information in his hand. She silently memorized the contents for easy summary in the future, and at the same time issued tasks to her subordinates. Bulu Bulu Bulu. Just then, the phone rang, and she answered the call silently. This is Rapeseed Port, and a marine warship is about to dock. Due to the special nature of the Baroque studio, whenever a world government ship or a marine warship docks, it needs to be reported there to prevent those guys from hindering their plans. Well, keep an eye on it, and report any situation. Robin replied calmly, obviously knowing this. Okay. Blue, the phone bug hangs up. Robin looked out the window quietly, not knowing what he was thinking. Marine. Did they find me again? The warship soon arrived at Alabasta and docked at Rapeseed Port. Rapeseed is a port city at the southeastern entrance of Alabasta. It is famous for its perfume. The open-air shops in the city are lined up in rows and are very lively. There was also an endless stream of tourists and businessmen from other islands, and the streets were always crowded. Although the docking of the marine warship attracted some people's attention, no one was there soon. After all, this is a member country of world government. Isn't it normal for marine to land on the beach? There are so many people here. On the warship, El Yushu looked at the people coming and going below and sighed. There are much more people than the previous Rabi Island and Pablo Island. I can only say that it lives up to the reputation of Grand Line as a superpower. Indeed. Hina was also surprised when she came here for the first time. The pink-haired beauty stood next to her and nodded. She often performed tasks on this sea and knew that few countries in the Grand Line were so prosperous and lively. Let's go, I'm just going to buy something. El Yushu decided to buy some perfume and give it back to Nami and the others. Women should all like this kind of thing, right? Well, Hina knows. After the two got off the boat, El Yu yawned and said. Wei Wei stretched out her hand to block the sun. The dry environment here and the sun above his head made him a little uncomfortable, BBED. If only that Bartolomeo guy was here. He thought to himself that at least someone would hold an umbrella for him. Wow! A black umbrella suddenly opened to block the scorching sun. Hina, who was wearing sunglasses, looked at him steadily with the corners of her mouth slightly raised. Let's go, Colonel El Yushu. It actually looks a bit shabby. For the first time, El Yushu's heart stopped beating for a moment when a woman held an umbrella close to her. Damn it, why is this woman so considerate? So the two of them, oh no, there was also a Pele on their shoulders. The three of them started wandering down the street. 
since the marine team that specializes in purchasing supplies has already set off, they don't need to worry about those things. Those two people, should be a colonel and a major. Hell, how come marine landed? I don't know, Miss Sunday asked us to keep an eye on it. We can't let these marines hinder our plan. No. The prying eyes and the voice of conversation fell into El Yushu's ears. He raised his eyebrows and said. Robin joined Baroque Studio at this time? What's wrong El Yushu? Hina was a little confused when she saw the person next to her suddenly stopped moving. Well, it's nothing, let's go. El Yushu yawned and kept an eye on it. It's best not to mess with him, he's very afraid of trouble. When you go shopping with a beautiful woman on a business trip, your bad value will be plus 200. So the two of them started to stroll around leisurely. They went to taste specialties from other islands, bought specialty perfumes, and drank together. However. Hey. Boss. There are so many people here. Ha 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 ha. Taking this place away will keep us cool for a long time, right? Little ones. Get ready to dock. Ha 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 ha. We are a pirate group with a bounty of 40 million. A pirate ship sailed into the nearby waters, and they saw the lively crowd and countless vendors from a distance. Greed fills their hearts, causing them to subconsciously ignore certain threats. For example, Alabasta's 600,000 standing army, or the marine warship that happened to be docked not far away. Woohoo! A sharp-eyed guard saw the pirate ship from a distance and observed that they seemed to be coming with bad intentions, so he blew the horn. There are pirates. Run! After hearing the news, traitors and civilians prepared to run away. Don't be afraid, everyone. We will protect your safety. At this moment, the captain of the guard army at Rapeseed Port said loudly. The tall figure was wearing armor and holding a spear in his hand. He looked majestic. That's right. They are the Kingdom Guards. They can definitely repel these pirates. Oh. Come on, Lord Guards. Kill these pirates. Come on. Protect our home. For a while, everyone was no longer so scared. Some vendors who were about to flee even stopped. Hearing the shouts around him, the captain's lips curled up slightly. He had only been in office for a short period of time, and then became the captain of the guard of Rapeseed Port through family connections. You are just evil pirates, let me defeat you. El Yushu. Hina made a form of inquiry and seemed to be wondering whether to take action or not. Well, let's take a look first. El Yushu yawned and said. After all, this is a franchise country, and many of Marine's actions are subject to restrictions. If you don't pay attention, you will be sued by the world government, saying that you have infringed on their rights. This is also the reason why Marine rarely appears in the world government countries in the original book. Not only can he not uphold justice, but he can also easily cause trouble. Of course, I won't take action if I can't help it. Um. Hina nodded and said nothing. There are quite a lot of guards there, so there should be no problem. Two. Ah. A miserable voice sounded. The pirate ship docked, and the captain of the guard who was so majestic just now was severely hit by a mace. Blood and broken teeth flashed in the air. The whole person was lying on the ground rolling. The corners of El Yushu's mouth twitched slightly. Ha 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 ha. That's it. The pirate captain held up his mace and said arrogantly, his expression slightly proud. You can't even hold on to his blow, what a waste. When he just landed, he suddenly saw so many guards and he felt a little guilty. I didn't expect it to be so weak. Ha 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 ha. You are so weak. If that's the case, then we won't be polite. Young ones. The party has begun. To a pirate captain, plundering is a banquet. Oh. The pirate boys rushed forward one after another. Stop them. The guards came forward one after another and fought with him. Although they are well trained, 
the pirate group that can earn 40 million belly in the Grand Line naturally has two skills, so for a while, they are neck and neck. El Yushu and the two looked at each other like this, but some people didn't have eyes. Yo! Marine! Still a pretty girl Marine ha 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 ha! The beautiful Hina stood out from the crowd, and the pirate captain spotted her at a glance. I haven't played a female Marine yet. Hey! Come here quickly. Rub your shoulders for me. The pirate captain said arrogantly, and the traitors who were originally joining in the fun were immediately fooled. This guy is so hateful. You actually said that Hina. El Yushu, beat him away. Bailey on his shoulder groaned angrily. El Yushu. Hina stepped forward and was ready to take action. A big hand grabbed her shoulder, and a gentle voice sounded. Let me do it. Hmm. Hina's face turned slightly red. This was the first time she was protected by a man, and her heart seemed to be filled with something. Hey! Male Marine, get out of here! The pirate captain was now controlled by some desires in his heart. He grinned and attacked with a mace. It's really annoying, scumbags! El Yushu yawned and rolled his eyelids. The giant man was getting closer and closer, and when he was still 30 meters away from them, El Yushu moved. He just clenched his fist slightly, and swung it out. Boom! There was a burst of explosions. With pieces of meat and blood cloth scattered. The giant man who was running suddenly stopped running. He stared at his chest with wide eyes. Most of it has disappeared, as if it has been evaporated. How come? He was in disbelief, how could this marine be so strong? Thump! The giant man with a mutilated body fell straight to the ground. The great pirate with a bounty of 40 million belly died. The pirate is dead. Great! Thank you Mr. Marine! Thank you Mr. Marine! Awesome! As expected of a marine. Seeing El Yushu defeating his opponent so easily, everyone couldn't help but start cheering. The pirates who were fighting fiercely with the guards couldn't help but panic. Beginning to retreat steadily. Kill these pirates! At this time, the captain of the guard who had just been beaten to the ground stood up and shouted loudly. Kill! After a period of time, all the pirates were wiped out. The guard captain who had just been knocked down by the mace came to El Yushu with his face licked. That, thank you, haha. -ha. He touched the back of his head and said with a silly smile. I will report your achievements to King Cobra. Mr. King will report it when the time comes. As if he felt that he was not sincere enough, he wanted to continue telling them and take credit for them. After all, the credit for helping the Alliance country to protect the city was not big or small. After they reported it, naval headquarters would definitely reward them. Well, if you have military merit, please give it to her, I don't need it. El Yushu pointed at Hina, waved her hand and said. Ah! Okay! I understand! The guard commander had an expression on his face that said, I understand, I understand, it's for the sake of a female companion they are all grown men. It's getting late now. Please allow me to invite you to eat at the best place in Kewa Port. He rubbed his hands and said, it would be nice to make friends with such strong people by the way. In this sea, strong people are respected wherever they go. Hmm. That's okay. El Yushu looked up at the sky. Indeed, the sky had become a little dark at some point. Hey, please come this way. So the group of people began to walk deeper into the city. At the same time, somewhere in a corner of the battlefield just now. Those spying figures said. That man is so strong. I feel he is stronger than the Cotters. Do these Marines have other purposes? I don't know, let me report it to the boss. So Robin, who was far away in the Rainland, received news that Lee's powerful Marine was helping to repel the pirates. She squinted her eyes, but didn't notice anything wrong. But I still think this matter should be reported. So she dialed the phone. Bulu Bulu Bulu. Hello. 
The phone was connected and a gloomy voice sounded. I should have told you that it's not something important that I can't call you, right? Nico Robin. Well, here's the thing. She briefly told what happened at Rapeseed Port. There was silence on the other side of the phone for a while. That's it, I know. Blue. The phone bug hangs up. Crocodile narrowed his eyes slightly. A powerful marine? Interesting. He had just arrived in Alabasta not long ago. In the past two days, he had killed many pirates through showmanship. He was now known as the hero of the kingdom. Unexpectedly, there was a marine who dared to take his job. Then it turned into windy sand and flew towards rapeseed port. Robin quietly looked at the cloud of sand in the sky, knowing that his boss had taken action. Is he going to deal with those marines? After everyone had a meal and drank, they left under the attentive eyes of the guard captain. Night falls in Alabasta. The large temperature difference makes the temperature a bit cold, and the white moon hangs high in the sky. El Yushu squinted her eyes and felt a little comfortable. Hey, Tina is very trembling. The person next to him seemed to feel a little cold and moved slightly closer to him. Igla. You want to buy perfume for Hina? Uh-huh. I will sleep with Hina today. Uh-huh. You can only belong to one person, Hina. Well, this won't work. Why? They will be sad. Hina is angry. The pink-haired woman turned her back. Okay, okay, we should go back. El Yushu put his arms around her waist. For a moment, they looked like a young couple. Whoosh! On the roofs of distant houses. A place where windy sand slowly condenses into a human shape. Crocodile silently looked at the two figures on the street. Observe the two figures of Marine. Um. Sensing the prying eyes, El Yushu narrowed her eyes slightly. He silently opened his eyes and ears. Then I saw the figure with a big back, and then heard the other person's voice. What is this strong marine doing in Alabasta? Let's test it out later. El Yushu's face darkened upon hearing this. Ridiculous. Laozi didn't even bother you, but you all bothered me, right? Hina. Um. Let's go back quickly. Good. Seeing the calmness on El Yushu's face, Hina stopped making trouble and obeyed obediently. She may have guessed something, but smart women never question. So the two of them quickly returned to the warship. During this period, El Yushu looked at it again with a sense of knowledge. The guy is still following me. You're a dignified Shishibukai, why don't you be ashamed if you follow others around you? I complained in my heart. He said to Bailey on his shoulder. Bailey, change your brush. Okay. The civet cat who was sleeping on his shoulder yawned when he heard this. It turned into a pen with a bang. El Yushu took out the deformed leaf and started painting on it based on the figure in his memory. Russell. Throw it out after painting. Boom. A six meter tall figure appeared. It was Weibul who was killed by him not long ago. He was fat and ugly, and he still looked like a fool. Go give that big guy a good beating. Good. The person transformed by the transformation leaf will obey the user's orders, so he just nodded, and then walked forward with heavy steps. El Yushu smiled. Crocodile at this time may not be as weak as he would be a few years later, but he is definitely not that strong at this time otherwise he would not be blasted by Whitebeard. As for a deadlock with Bullet? Not to mention that Bullet has not fully grown up yet, and is not as scary as the later generations. I, Sand Sand Fruit, have been hiding from your fists in elemental form, and then use a few diamond swords from time to time. From the outside, it seems that there is no winner. So maybe only they themselves know what the specific battle situation is. On the streets of Rapeseed Port, Weibul's tall figure caught someone's attention. Um. Crocodile narrowed his eyes slightly and looked at the tall figure coming towards him. More than six meters tall, with a beard and a naginata. 
This look reminded him of a man who had a scar on his face. It's so infuriating, you guy. He smiled slightly, looked at the figure that looked very much like Whitebeard and said. I was crushed by that man a few years ago. Desert Sword Uh-huh. A blade made of sharp sand rises from the ground into the sky. But it didn't cause any harm to that figure. Boom. Weibull ran towards the distant Gobi with heavy steps, and Crocodile chased after him with red eyes. After leading Crocodile away, El Yushiu breathed out. Oh, it's really troublesome. At the same time, looking at the system panel, my mental energy decreased a little for a minute. Hmm. Not bad. The battery life is about 16 hours, which is enough. The consumption of mental energy made him a little sleepy. El Yushiu yawned. The character copied by a strong person with a paintbrush will not only inherit the abilities of the original character, but will even be stronger. So it's hard to say how strong the way Abul he copied is at this time. Go to bed, go to sleep. If you sleep during the battle, your damage value will be plus 300. Does this count? Okay, okay, I found another way to gain experience. The outskirts of Rapeseed Port. The tall figure stopped. Crocodile stared at the other party with his dark eyes. Who are you? Weibul didn't reply, just looked at him with a naive look. Well, forget it, just die. Desert Great Sword. The extremely fast sand turns into a sword shape and attacks the opponent. Darkness enveloped the surroundings. On this day, Crocodile once again experienced a power comparable to Whitebeard. When Robin saw Crocodile in the office the next day, he saw that he was wearing a mask strangely, as if he was covering something. Hmm. What kind of style is the boss adopting? Good morning, boss. She said hello, and at the same time she was slightly curious. Didn't her boss go to trouble those marines? Well, there's no need to keep an eye on those marines. Crocodile said, with a somewhat puzzled tone. Although there was no evidence, he was sure that that person definitely had some relationship with Marine. Yesterday, he had a fight with his opponent and found that not only could he not cause much damage to the tall man who looked like Whitebeard, but he was also punched hard by the opponent. And the person who can drive such a strong man must be a more powerful guy. Although he doesn't want to admit it, it is indeed not something he can deal with. Okay boss. Robin blinked and he realized that this Lord Shishibukai had suffered a loss in those marines. But marine's strength made her feel uneasy. So Robin had no intention of snooping. It's late at night again. El Yushiu came to the sky above Yudi. See, here, and feel the color silently below. Ha 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 ha, this girl is so exciting today. I actually lasted ten minutes longer. Who says it's not? Come back next time. Damn it. I lost again. No. Give it another try. I will definitely win it back. You are cheating. You are cheating. Most of them are like this, full of life, exaggerated words. This guy has already started preparing to open a casino. In the future, Rainland will become the entertainment capital of the entire Alabasta, and the country's largest casino will appear here. El Yushiu said in his heart. Then continue to explore. Hee <laughs> hee, this mission goal is really easy to accomplish. I will be promoted next month. I envy you so much. That hateful guy, don't let me know who you are. Hiss. The sound made El Yushiu's eyes light up slightly, and then he felt the breath carefully. That's right, it's Crocodile. Got you. Whoosh. He turned into darkness and disappeared into the sky. At the same time, Crocodile, who was treating the wound in the room, couldn't help but blush, and he cursed in a low voice. Damn guy. Damn Marine. Oh? Are you looking for me? A voice came from behind him. Crocodile was shocked, and he immediately used elemental transformation to turn into wind and sand. It's you. Looking at the figure in front of him, 
he immediately recalled the marine he saw during the day. Did you send that person? He asked again. Ah, yes, what's the problem? El Yushiu smiled and said. Humph! Desert sunflower! He put his hand on the ground, and in an instant, all the walls turned into sand. The room instantly shattered, revealing the dark night sky. Taking action at the slightest disagreement, well, that's very crocodile. The figure with the big back looked up and saw that the marine had long since disappeared. Slightly aware of sight, hearing, color. In the sky. So he also came to the sky in an instant. Who the hell are you? Crocodile looked gloomy, and even subconsciously thought that the other party was an agent of the world government. I'm just an ordinary marine colonel. Well. I'm still from the branch. He added. Crocodile didn't speak, but turned his whole body to attack him with elements. Hey! El Yushiu smiled, her hands surrounded by blood. Boom! In Crocodile's disbelieving gaze, his fist hit him directly in the face. Boom! Although El Yushiu used this punch to retain some strength, it still almost knocked him unconscious. But at this time, Crocodile is not a weakling in the future time period. He even had a fight with Whitebeard a few years ago. So although his consciousness was stagnant for a moment, he still seized the opportunity and grabbed El Yushiu's shoulders with his materialized arm. He showed a triumphant smile. Erosion of reincarnation. This move is enough to suck all the water out of any living thing. Whoosh. The ability was activated, but what surprised him was that the opponent was still intact, and his skin was not shriveled at all. Uh-huh. El Yushiu smiled. He did feel the loss of water in his body just for a moment, but who is he? Armament Haki on his body can react at any time. The blood in his body is also controlled by himself. Are you trying to suck water with someone like me who controls blood? What's going on? Snapped. He also put his hand on the opponent's shoulder and activated his blood-sucking ability. Then in Crocodile's slightly horrified eyes, he sucked his blood. Crocodile felt a sense of weakness in his body, his skin became shriveled, and his long back turned grey, making him look like an old man over fifty years old. You! Crocodile wanted to ask how you got my ability, but he suddenly realized. What the other party sucks is not just blood, but also lifespan. Well, that's right. My fruit power can suck away people's lifespan. The vampire fruit originally absorbs the lifespan of others to restore one's youth. Blood sucking is just a basic operation. Please give me flowers. You. At this moment, Crocodile admitted that he was a little panicked. Well don't be afraid, I won't kill you, I'm just looking for you. El Yushi yawned and said on the spur of the moment. Who? Nico Robin. You specialize in. Are you here to catch her? El Yushiu touched his chin. What he said was that he didn't want to meddle in other people's business. It was obviously you who suddenly came to test him. He doesn't want to cause trouble, but that doesn't mean he's afraid of trouble. You've already come to his door, so I can't do anything? And if it is an ordinary pirate, he will be killed but this guy is Shishibukai, the dog of the world government. Recently, because he often kills pirates in Alabasta, there are also kings. National hero title. Not long after he landed on the island, people disappeared, and even fools would suspect him. So. Lao Shat, it is your identity that protects you. El Yushiu smiled and said nothing. Crocodile thought he had guessed the truth. He couldn't help feeling a little regretful. If he hadn't taken Nico Robin in, he might not have had so many things happen. Not to mention receiving two beatings in vain, now life and death are still in the hands of others, this is really. Nico Robin can be handed over to you. I only accepted that woman not long ago. Compared with his own life, he immediately betrayed his vice president. He is still in his prime and he still wants to become the Pirate King. At the same time, 
below the battlefield between the two, what no one noticed was a hand quietly covering a corner. His eyes stared upward without blinking. There was a loud noise in President Crocodile's room, and Nico Robin was naturally curious about what happened. Then she saw Crocodile confronting a Marine. Zero. She couldn't help but be shocked when she saw her Shishibukai president almost knocked unconscious by the mysterious Marine's punch. Later, she was even more horrified when she saw her president's life being taken away directly. Finally, she saw the two of them talking to each other. She suddenly had a bad feeling in her heart. That Marine, isn't he coming towards me? She thought to herself, and the more she thought about it, the more likely it was that she felt it was possible. So, break it off when it's time to make a choice. Get out of here. Get out of here quickly. The voice in her heart shouted urgently, Robin started to move. In the past few days since she came here, she has already figured out all the paths or secret passages in the Baroque studio base. And she who has been in the dark world all year round, believes in this feeling very much. This something akin to intuition has helped her save her life many times. Da da da. Nico Robin left the Baroque studio base through a secret passage and ran quickly in a dark corner. At the same time, my heart is full of mixed emotions. Why, why don't you let me go even though I'm all alone? Nico Robin didn't understand that when she was eight years old, she was rounded up by marine and world government agents. Now she is 23 years old, 18 years have passed. They still haven't let her go. Is there any place for her in this world? She is tired, to be honest, she is really tired. Ha, ha, ha. Because of the emotional infection, her running breathing rhythm was disrupted, and she couldn't help but stop to breathe. At the same time, she used the fruit's ability to be on guard around her. That woman is at the base, I'm going to capture her right now. Crocodile said that he was willing to do this in order to redeem his life. A woman is just a tool. So he turned into wind and sand and left. However, when he appeared in the office again, the figure was gone. His old face suddenly fell silent. Although he had known that the other party would do this one day, he did not expect that at such a critical moment. So Crocodile turned into windy sand and dissipated in the air again. At the same time, turn on full power observation Hacky to search every breath in the rain. Hey, ha, hey, ha. A slight gasp attracted the attention of someone above. Then. Boom. Nico Robin, who was running away, felt like she had hit a wall. She looked up and saw Crocodile with a gloomy face in front of her. You are really disobedient. Nico Robin. Opened his mouth and said. Nico Robin looked at him nervously. Although the other person's old appearance had changed drastically, she could still vaguely recognize that this guy was her former boss. Is it so fast? She was slightly on guard, but at the same time she was secretly looking for a place to escape. She didn't want to give up her life easily until the last moment. And with the old and feeble appearance of the other party, she should have a chance. Robin thought so, but a voice sounded. Oh, Lao Sha, you found it very quickly. El Yushu's teasing voice sounded, and a tall and handsome figure came over. The woman looked up and saw that it was the Marine who had just fought with Crocodile. How come? Robin's heart suddenly sank to the bottom. You, are you here to catch me? The woman trembled and said, looking like she was afraid of him. El Yushu looked at her and raised her eyebrows. Today's Robin has wheat-colored skin and jet black hair. He wears tight jeans on his upper body and ultra-short jeans on his lower body. His tall and graceful figure is clearly revealed. Hearing the other party's question, he couldn't help but smile inexplicably. Guess what? Robin's body trembled even more. She suppressed the fear in her heart and used her powers. Two flowers bloom. Two slender hands sprouted from El Yushu's back, and then they reached out to hold his joints and tried to twist them. Robin has the flower flower fruit ability, 
which allows any part of the body to grow like a flower on any tangible thing within sight and perform attacks or other uses. This use is quite effective in sneak attacks. However, wow! Not only did the two flower arms have no effect at all, El Yushu reached up and pinched them. Well, it will break into pieces when pinched. The ability failed, Robin frowned in pain. Hmm. It feels good. El Yushu nodded in praise. The touch was almost like a real hand, soft and elastic. Is it possible to develop many moves, cough cough. Yukai. Seeing that this woman was not honest, Crocodile looked cold and prepared to teach her a lesson. El Yushu stretched out his hand to stop him. Sigh, don't be so angry, look, you scared her. It's obviously you she's afraid of. Marine. Crocodile didn't say this out loud, he just complained silently in his heart. Let's go. Nico Robin. El Yushu said with a smile on his face, looking like a villain. After realizing the gap in strength, Nico Robin did not resist this time. Follow me obediently. Crocodile looked at this scene indifferently, as if the one who was taken away was not 053, one of his subordinates. Also, to him, his subordinates are just tools and can be discarded at any time. Marine. Seeing that El Yushu was about to leave, Crocodile became anxious and immediately reminded him. Oh, forgot. Snapped. Blood appears out of thin air and flows into Crocodile's body. In Robin's surprised eyes, he returned to his original appearance in his prime, and his originally rickety body became taller again. Then, let's go. Mr. Shishibukai. El Yushu yawned and said. Crocodile turned his back and said nothing, he was ready to leave here. By the way, the people in this country are quite enthusiastic. I will travel frequently in the future. He gave a faint warning. This sentence made Crocodile's face suddenly darken. What did you say? Marine. It's nothing, you understand what I mean. Just don't do anything that harms this country. El Yushu said with a smile. Why? You can't beat me, I'm a Marine. If a major disaster occurs in a franchised country or is attacked by powerful pirates, Marine is qualified to intervene. Humph. I know. Damn Marine, it looks like the Utopia battle plan is going to be shelved. Crocodile thought gloomily, then turned into wind and sand and left. Robin, who was watching this scene from the side, was even more frightened. How could she escape from a man who was even afraid of the unruly Shishibukai? Let's go, Nico Robin. El Yushu put her hands on the other party's shoulders and looked at her desperate look with amusement. It's just dawn. El Yushu took Robin to the warship. In order to prevent the soldiers on the ship from seeing him, he even bought Robin a cloak to cover his face. After all, this is the subordinate he wants to recruit. It is not good for others to see him. Those dogs in the world government have all pervasive noses. Well your back Hina misses you. In the cabin, in the special bedroom of the highest officer, when the pink-haired beauty wearing a suspender saw El Yushu coming back, she subconsciously wanted to go forward and hug her. However, he saw a woman following closely behind him. That's right, it's a woman. Even though the other party was wearing a cloak, his curvy figure could not be covered at all. Woman? This guy El Yushu went out and brought a woman back? For a moment, Hina was filled with discomfort and anger. Hina is angry. Emotions were about to be expressed. The pink-haired beauty pointed at the figure behind El Yushu with her arms akimbo and said. Who is she? Um... Hina's fierce reaction caught El Yushu off guard. He smiled and said. Take off your cloak, Nico Robin. Wow. Robin's iconic face was revealed, making Hina, who was originally full of anger, look stunned. The devil's son? The one with a bounty of 79 million baileys? How did you bring her back? These words made the eyes of Robin, who had been silent, flash. Unlike other marines, 
Hina has a lot of contact with senior executives like Jun and Tsuru. So we roughly know what Robin is like. Although Marine has not given up on arresting her over the years, his force has actually become much weaker, and the world government agents have been stuck on her like a dogskin plaster. So for Hina, catching this guy means having to confront those in the world government. Very troublesome. Why did you catch the guy they wanted? Hina calmed down at this time. There was no way El Yushi would have anything to do with a prisoner with a bounty on his head. Robin is also silently waiting for his sentencing. Should they be given to the world government? Or should they be locked up and tortured? I have no way out. However, what the two women didn't expect was that El Yushi said. Me? I want to take her as my subordinate. El Yushiu said with a smile. This is not a whim, but his younger brother Bartolomeo's power to defeat the enemy and the Hakka family is getting bigger and bigger, but he lacks a think tank and commanding role. So this time I happened to come to Alabasta, and I happened to meet Shishibukai looking for trouble. What's more, Robin happened to be here at this time, so I couldn't let him go. El Yushiu's voice fell. Hina suddenly looked shocked. Eh, eh, eh. She stepped forward and stood on tiptoes, grabbed his shoulders and shook him. You have to think clearly. She is a troublesome person wanted by the world government. You didn't kidnap her because she was beautiful, right? Well, don't worry, as long as you don't get discovered. El Yushiu yawned and said, ignoring the question behind her. Oh. That being said, can you really guard against the all-pervasive world government agents? If they found out, the charge of harboring a criminal would be enough for him, even if he was Marine Admiral's younger brother. Hina thought about it in her mind, and at the same time she became inexplicably hostile to this woman. It's all this guy's fault. At this time, Robin's pupils were shaking. She thought about many endings in her future. Maybe she would become the deputy of Shishibukai and survive, maybe she would join a certain pirate group and become its think tank, maybe she would be targeted by the world government and eventually die. But you never expected this ending? A eh, Marine? He actually said he wanted to protect her? How is it possible, what happened to this world? Her heart was full of mixed emotions. She should be happy that she didn't have to die, but, why couldn't she laugh? Without your kindness. Bring me to world government. Not knowing what emotion to face, Robin responded with a cold face. She remembered that her hometown O'Hara was destroyed by these hateful marines. Obviously many people were innocent. They still chose to kill. Dr. Kloba, Saul, and everyone. Figures of figures flashed through her mind, finally settling on the scene of them falling to the ground. It's all done by these guys. Marine will never be forgiven. Robin's emotions rarely fluctuated. She wanted to express her anger, but she knew she couldn't defeat him, so she just looked at him with a determined look. Hey. You guy. Hina looked very unhappy, are you a white-eyed wolf? El Yushiu even took risks to protect you, but you turned a cold shoulder? Well. I'm not asking you to join Marine. El Yushiu smiled gently and said that he knew what the other person was thinking without having to peek into his heart. He felt sympathy and sighed silently in his heart. My subordinates have established a force to beat up enemy gangster families. You should have heard of it. Robin's eyes moved slightly. As someone who has been in the underground world all year round, she has naturally heard of this force. It has appeared in East Blue Logue Town in the past year and has developed rapidly. As soon as it appeared, it unified most of the underworld forces in East Blue. But although it is said to be a gangster, it actually does not do any evil things such as human trafficking or arms trafficking. Instead, it is like a bounty hunter organization. They are responsible for arresting pirates and acting as escorts for merchant ships. Recently, she even extended her business to Grand Line. She vaguely remembered that Baroque Studio seemed to have some dealings with it. And such an emerging force belongs to this man? She was filled with disbelief for a moment, raised her head and asked. 
Are you the base commander of Logue Town? Yeah, what's wrong? El Yushu was a little confused. Robin nodded and verified his guess. According to the information from the people below, the member of the Beat the Enemy K family revealed that one of them is that all members of their organization must show respect to El Yushu, the director of the Logue Town base. If they can get the other party's signature, they can even do so. Promotion It is politically correct to worship Lord El Yushu in the Hakka family. El Yushu's mouth twitched as she silently opened her eyes and ears. Well, this is very Lomeo. In the end, Robin agreed to join, and El Yushu was not surprised. He didn't invite him to join Marine or anything like that at first. In addition to the identity of the other party, the second issue is the fear of the other party. Marine gave her too many shadows. So Hina took the other party to a room somewhere in the cabin and told the other party not to come out until they returned to East Blue. Robin naturally nodded in agreement, but the glint in her eyes made it hard to tell what she was thinking. At the same time, far away in the capital of Alabasta, King Cobra received a report from below. Oh! A powerful marine helped fight off the pirates. Ha 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 ha! As expected of marine. Cobra laughed, and you could hear his emotion in his words. He looked at the figure kneeling below. If El Yushu were here, he would recognize him as the captain of the guard. Yes, Your Majesty the King. They are so powerful. The pirate I couldn't defeat even with all my strength was killed by that marine's punch. As he spoke, he also demonstrated with fists, without mentioning the process of being knocked over by a stick. Ha 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 ha. So awesome. Cobra said with a smile, then narrowed his eyes slightly. Speaking of which, he hasn't seen Marine in a long time. As a member of the world government, Alabasta has a standing army of 600,000 people, and Marines are not allowed to interfere. It has been several years since we have seen Marines help fight off pirates. Most Marines docked for supplies and then left in a hurry. Now there is Marine who is willing to do this. I think I should meet that guy. Cobra said. The figure below said in surprise. That's right. Mr. King thinks so too. He felt happy in his heart. He had said so much for his benefactor, hadn't he been waiting for this moment? After the king invited him to meet, the credit for the store in the market to receive the headquarters was even greater. D. Cobra smiled and nodded. Recently, there is a Shishibukai who has been performing in his own country. Although the other party has defeated many pirates with great strength, he has been sought after by many citizens, and even gradually gained the title of the hero of the kingdom. But the other party is a pirate after all. As a king, Cobra will not easily trust a pirate. And Marine is much more trustworthy. He also wanted to meet this Marine who sounded powerful, and see if he could make friends with him. If that Shishibukai had any plots in the future, he might be able to seek his slash her number B. Cobra thought a lot in his mind at that moment, and even laid out a way out. Next to his throne, a girl with sky-blue hair listened quietly without blinking. Marine? Righteous Marine? Her eyes were slightly bright, and she felt a little expectant in her heart. At Rapeseed Port, the warship was preparing to set sail. Suddenly, the guards below shouted loudly. It was said that the king invited them to the capital. When El Yushu heard this, he was somewhat moved. In fact, he wanted to visit the capital when he came here. However, due to status restrictions, Marine was not allowed to go to the capital of the affiliated country without a special mission, so he did not go. El Yushu turned to look at the pink-haired beauty next to her and said. Are you going? Hina. Okay, Hina agrees. She naturally agreed. She would not let go of the opportunity to spend more time with El Yushu. Um. El Yushu nodded, then returned to a certain room inside the cabin, and said to the figure who was reading quietly. We are going to the capital for a few days. You can stay here for the next two days. There is a place to wash in the room. 
I will ask the soldiers to bring three meals a day. After saying that, he left, leaving Robin for 2.3 seconds to sit there in a daze. El Yushu didn't do anything to lock the door or tie the other person and throw him into the room. For him, although Robin is indeed very suitable for beating the enemy's Hakka think tank talents, it does not mean that he must be the opponent. Choices are two way, and he also gave the other party a chance. Yesterday, he made it very clear that if she had to run away, there was nothing she could do. So everyone headed towards the capital under the guidance of the guards. At the same time, Bartolomeo, who was far away in East Blue, received news from his subordinates. He was lying lazily on the beach chair and jumped up. What? Master El Yushu is coming back. His words also made the younger brothers around him listen. What? Is Colonel El Yushu coming back? Great. Wow, I haven't seen Colonel El Yushu's handsome appearance for a long time. This time I want to witness his majestic figure. Me too. They were crying and howling, and they kept saying disgusting words. Okay. Quiet. Bartolomeo clapped his hands and said. I just thought of an idea. In order to celebrate Master El Yushu's return and to give Master El Yushu the warmth of returning home, I decided, to build a statue of El Yushu in the center of the square. I want everyone who comes to Logue Town to know. It is Lord El Yushu who protects this place. It is Lord El Yushu who brings them peace. As soon as he said this, the boys around him burst into tears. Ooh that's great. As expected of the boss. We also have a party to celebrate. There is also a banner with Mr. El Yushu's name on it. The younger brothers prepared enthusiastically. Hmm. I wonder what El Yushu will think when he sees this scene when he goes back. Robin stayed in the room quietly, looking thoughtful. After using her fruit power to investigate, she found that there was indeed no ambush. Four days. Alabasta has a large land area, and the round-trip time from Rapeseed Port to the capital is almost four days. He gave her four days to think. No. Maybe more, because we don't know how long they will stay there. It's really difficult, Mr. Marine. Robin murmured. Two days have passed. Under the leadership of the Guard Army, El Yushu and Hina successfully arrived at the capital. This is the country of Arupena. The soldier introduced enthusiastically. Through the other party's introduction, El Yushu got a general understanding of the situation. The capital, Arupena, is located in the northeastern region of Sun Island. It is a giant city standing in the desert and built on a circular foundation. Taking the Arupena Palace as the base point, it can be divided into four blocks, each of which has important urban functions. This city is always bustling with people and full of vitality. The civilians look at them curiously, as if they are wondering what kind of distinguished guests can be escorted by the kingdom guards in person. That's the Arubana Palace over there, where the king and his companions live. This street is Polka Street, it's very lively at night. That building is. El Yushu nodded in agreement from time to time. Hina thinks this place is really nice. The pink-haired beauty next to her narrowed her eyes and said. Hey? How do you say? El Yushu turned around and asked. He heard the other person's emotion. Hina has been to many world government member countries, but she has never seen any country with such pure smiles and happiness. Well, many participating countries will choose to squeeze their citizens in order to deliver gold from heaven. Poverty and hunger are filling many civilians. Under the survival instinct that breaks out in despair, people will trample all laws and morals. They will burn, kill, loot, bully the weak, exchange children for food, and degenerate from humans into monsters. Hearing Hina's speech, El Yushu narrowed his eyes and said nothing. Indeed, in a world ruled by world government, under the oppression of heavenly gold, many places are like this. Tisk. What af ked up world? Guim. Wait till Laozi, I will twist off your head and use it as a ball. He thought with hatred in his heart. 
Mr. Marine, we're here. The guard soldier who had been explaining just now said. El Yushiu looked up. Well, although the palace gate looks tall, it is not arrogant. There are no gold-rimmed sculptures or bright roads paved with diamonds. Not to mention outrageous, some countries are like this. This is a simple king. He silently labeled it in his mind. The soldiers guarding the palace reacted immediately when they saw the figure wearing marine clothes. They all stepped forward to greet him warmly. Mr. Marine, this way. So under their guidance, El Yushu and others passed through the garden, past the meeting hall and other places, and arrived at the palace. The two of them saw the figure sitting on the throne. The affable-looking middle-aged man with black hair said with a smile. You are the Marine who saved Rape Blossom Port, right? Welcome, welcome. He is King Cobra. El Yushu looked up at the figure. It was rumored that the Alabaster royal family was descended from those twenty kings. Don't know what's special about it. The figure beside her tugged, and Hina reminded in a low voice. Hina, do you think you should salute? After all, he is the king of a country, so she feels that the proper etiquette should be followed. As if he heard her words, Cobra smiled and said. Ha 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 ha, no need to be polite. We don't talk about these things here. He said with a smile, he seemed to really not care about this. Well, what is the purpose of Mr. King coming to us? El Yushu got straight to the point. Ha 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 ha. It's nothing, I just want to get to know you. It's been a long time since Marine has been here in Aruba. He opened his mouth to explain, his eyes filled with memories. Remember who was the Marine who came last time? I heard about what happened at Rapeseed Port. I will truthfully report to Naval Headquarters about your contribution. He thought El Yushu and others were implying credit, so he waved his hand and said with a smile. Thank you very much, Mr. King. What I have seen since I came to this country shows your greatness and hard work. El Yushu smiled and praised. Ha 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 ha. You are also a powerful Marine. A Marine who carries justice. Under Hina's bored expression, the two began to trade business blows. Until it gets dark outside. King Cobra finally stopped talking without saying anything. Ha 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 ha. I didn't expect Mr. El Yushu to be such an interesting person. I gained a lot from chatting with you. King Cobra is so honored. Let's go. The dinner should be ready. I specially asked the palace chefs to make Alabasta's special delicacies. You will be surprised. King Cobra stood up and said with a smile. It is better to obey orders than to be respectful. El Yushu smiled back. Hina, El Yushu, King Cobra and others walked towards the door. When El Yushu just stepped out of the palace, a petite figure bumped into him. Ouch! El Yushu's powerful defense knocked him down. Vivi's forehead was a little red from being hit. She covered her head and looked up with tears in her eyes. I saw a marine. She suddenly remembered that the very important guest her father was going to meet today was marine. She immediately got up and apologized. I'm so sorry for bumping into you. His voice was trembling, as if he was afraid of causing the dissatisfaction of his father's distinguished guests. El Yushu came back to his senses after hearing this, and was a little surprised. A girl with sky blue hair had a red forehead and looked at him with tears in her eyes. It's Vivi. Nefert D. Vivi is a descendant of twenty kings and a member of the D family. At the same time, she is also a princess who works as an undercover agent in the Baroque studio for the sake of the people. What a kind and beautiful girl! His tall figure squatted down slightly and touched the opponent's head that had just been hit red with his hand. It was my fault just now. Are you okay? The voice is very gentle. Vivi suddenly lost her fear and said with wide eyes. It's great that the guest is okay. Don't be so sensible. El Yushu was immediately hit hard. Vivi, what are you doing here? King Cobra asked, looking at Vivi's forehead with a worried look. Is his good daughter's forehead okay? 
If it weren't for El Yushu and others next to him, he would have wanted to pick her up and give her a good hug. Yes, he is such a slave girl. I, I came here to tell you that Akaram and the others have prepared dinner. Vivi rubbed her head and said, It doesn't hurt so much now. Don't run so hastily next time Vivi. King Cobra stretched out his big hand and said, Well, you can't act like a slave girl in front of guests and maintain royal etiquette. Yeah. Vivi knows. The girl also put her hand on his big hand. Everyone came to the dinner party and had a sumptuous dinner. The next day, Hina and El Yushu woke up in the same bed. Akaram has been waiting outside for a long time. You too, the place to wash is over here. I will take you to eat later. After the two of them washed up and came to the dining table. Vivi, King Cobra and others have been waiting there for a long time. El Yushu was a little surprised. I didn't expect my standards to be so high. Hey, hey. Do you want to be so enthusiastic? Long wait, King Cobra, well, and Vivi. He smiled and said hello. Good morning, Mr. El Yushu, Sister Hina. What about me? Bailey on El Yushu's shoulders jumped and said. Yeah, good morning to Bailey too. Vivi said with a smile. It can be seen from her crescent-shaped eyes that she likes the furry Bailey very much. Guests don't need to be so reserved. Just call me uncle or uncle. After dinner, Vivi, you can take the guests for a walk. Cobra smiled and closed the relationship and said. Okay. After yesterday's brief interaction, Vivi is no longer afraid of El Yushu, and even thinks that he is a good person and a good person who is easy to get along with. The meal is over. Vivi beckoned. This way. Everyone left the palace together and started walking around Aruba. Princess Vivi is out again. Come to uncle, I will give you the freshly heated steamed buns. Ha 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 no need, thank you uncle Ron. Good morning Princess Vivi. Good morning, Sister Taylai. El Yushu and Hina followed her silently, watching her warmly greeting everyone. It seems that many people in this country know each other and many people seem to like this kind little princess. Vivi is quite popular. Hina smiled and said with a gentle expression. Hey, it's because everyone is nice. Vivi responded with a smile, her eyes sparkling. Hey, boss, that person is the princess. If we tie her up, we can sell her for a lot of money, right? Hehe, <laughs> I must blackmail King Cobra when the time comes. That's it. Let him prepare a ransom of 100 million, no, 1 billion belly. Ah, is it too much? Ha 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 too much? Who makes him so stingy? Why should he only give money to that blind man? Not to us. I'm going to tie up her daughter this time. We won't be short of money ha 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 ha. This is not good, after all. Princess Vivi is usually pretty good. Hey hey. Which side are you on? A slight quarrel came from afar, El Yushu raised his eyebrows slightly. He lowered his head and asked the girl leading the way casually. Vivi, are your royal family still giving money to civilians? He asked very directly. Eh? Yes, there are some people in the city who are living in difficulty. When my father finds out, he will send some money to them every month. She explained softly, with a hint of pride in her tone. El Yushu nodded when he heard this. Understood. El Yushu silently thought about it. Vivi leads the way enthusiastically. They walked through street after street. The frequency of greetings from civilians is still high. It can be seen that the civilians in this city are very grateful. Snap. She walked to a relatively dark alley, pointed towards El Yushu and the others and said. It's very quick to get to Barlow Street from this alley. You don't have to take a long detour. As she spoke, Vivi stuck out her tongue, seeming to think of her own embarrassing experience. What she didn't notice, however, was that. Danger is approaching. Wow. 
a piece of marijuana. The bag suddenly appeared and was ready to trap her. 2. El Yushiu is faster. Whoosh! He appeared behind Vivi in an instant, and the sack was torn into pieces. What? The strong man looked shocked, and then was knocked unconscious by El Yushiji's knife. Vivi, who is he? El Yushiu yawned and said. Eh. Only then did the girl react. She stared blankly at the figure on the ground, as if she couldn't believe what had just happened. There are also accomplices. After Hina finished speaking, her figure disappeared. Bang bang! Ah! Ah! I was wrong. Don't slap me in the face! Two different voices sounded, and a dull sound came from the alley. When she reappeared, she was already holding two people in her hands. One man and one woman. Boom. She threw it on the strong man. Well, three people. El Yushiu touched her chin, then squatted down and touched Vivi's little head. What do you think they want to do? He, they. Vivi covered her mouth, as if she couldn't believe this scene. Her own citizens were going to harm her. To be honest, it shocked her. In her opinion, aren't our citizens always good people? Hey! Tell me your purpose! El Yushiu said to the only girl with a grey face who was still awake. I, I didn't want to get involved. They insisted on whining like this. Being stared at by El Yushiu's eyes as if he was going to kill someone at the next moment. The girl with short blonde hair replied with a pale face. Princess Vivi, please spare me, we of you, I don't dare to do it anymore, don't kill me. Obviously she also knew how serious the crime of kidnapping the royal family was. Why are you doing this 460? Surprisingly, there was no anger or sadness on Vivi's face. Instead, she stared at her seriously. I, is like this. She cried and explained that everyone heard that the other party and her two brothers were dissatisfied and unfair because Cobra gave money to those with disabilities but did not pay them. Recently, they have been living on the streets because they have no money, so they are so hungry that they want to get Bailey by kidnapping Vivi. Then you should know that every member of the Alabasta Guards is a superhuman being. You probably won't be able to guard the hostages, right? Hina spoke calmly revealing the loopholes in her words. Three ordinary people want to kidnap the princess? Do you really think those guards are vegetarians? For these superhuman strong men, ordinary people would be killed on the spot without even having time to react. That, that's because not long ago, I suddenly developed a magical ability. The blonde girl explained and lightly stepped on the ground with her foot. Boom! Those small feet looked light, but they made a big hole in the ground. El Yushiu raised his eyebrows. A figure in his memory gradually overlapped with him, and he asked. May I have your name? My, my name is Mishida. The three of us, brother and sister, are from West Blue. Then we heard that Alabasta has treasures that ordinary people can spend a lifetime, so, we came here. She explained intermittently. That's right. Mishida, the user with light and heavy fruit abilities. You can control your own weight and freely manipulate your own weight from 1 kilogram to 10,000 kilograms. It can float like a feather, and can also suppress the enemy with its astonishing weight. Some people may not be familiar with this name, but her work code name will remind people of it. Baroque Studio Cotter, Miss Valentine. El Yushi watched quietly. Unlike the charming little girl in the future timeline, she now looks grey and shabby. She is slightly more recognisable with her short blonde hair. El Yushiu turned to look at Vivi and said. Princess Vivi, is it okay if I take these three people away? They will be well transformed in the marine. As he said, when he returns, he will leave them to Bartolomeo. Um. Vivi nodded in agreement. She was obviously a little girl, but she was surprisingly independent. But Mr. El Yushiu must treat them well and not let them starve. Apparently I heard that they came here because of hunger. At the same time, 
she thought slightly in her mind. Do you want to go back and tell your father about sending food to some people every day? She is so kind, I cried to death. Thank you. Thank you for not killing me. The girl burst into tears, and at the same time she felt remorseful that she had actually done something to such a kind princess. It's getting late, let's go back. El Yushu yawned and said, they have been shopping for a long time today, so they are surrounded. Well, okay, Bailey is tired too. Bailey, who had been sleeping on El Yushu's shoulder for a whole day, also replied. Go shopping while on a business trip, the value of bad things will be plus 300. El Yushu and his party stayed in the capital for two days, and their relationship with Vivi became more and more harmonious. So under the deliberate promotion of King Cobra, the daughter of the kingdom called El Yushu her brother. A lovely and kind-hearted princess calls herself her brother. Who can resist this? Of course El Yushu readily agreed. I agreed to this brother and sister relationship. As for whether the relationship between the brother and sister will deteriorate in the future, it's hard to say. After all, they are not close. One evening, El Yushu said goodbye. Are you really not going to stay another two days? Cobra's expression was a little regretful. He wanted to have more contact with each other, but he didn't expect that the other party was leaving. No. Uncle, as the base director of Logue Town, I still have many important matters to deal with. El Yushu said with a smile, of course this is just a refusal. Okay. Cobra nodded and said he would always be welcome in Alabasta. Hey goodbye, brother El Yushu. Please come more often. The blue-haired girl in a beautiful princess dress waved, her voice sounded full of reluctance. It seems that El Yushu has gained the girl's favorability in the past few days. El Yushu also waved in response. Nu. No. So, the kingdom guards, three siblings, Makita, El Yushu, Bailey and Hina embarked on the journey to Rapeseed Port. Rainland, Baroque studio base, Crocodile received news from his subordinates. Have you left the royal capital? He looked at the report in his hand which showed that El Yushu was close to the Alabasta royal family and stayed there for a few days. Are you warning me? Crocodile squinted his eyes and thought of that man's strength again. What a hateful guy, I can't bear it. After two days of traveling, El Yushu and the others returned to the warship. Ah! Mr. Marine is back. Mr. Marine, are you leaving? This is the treasure of my store. Give it to you. Are you hungry, Mr. Marine? I'll bring you some food. People were very enthusiastic and recognized him as the man who defeated the powerful pirate a few days ago. Thank you, thank you, I'm going back, I still have tasks. El Yushu happily accepted what they gave away. After all, it came from the people's wishes and he couldn't live up to it. Goodbye Mr. Marine. Goodbye. Mr. Marine. Please come visit often in the future. I want to be as strong as Mr. Marine in the future. So the civilians, traders, and guards waved goodbye. People's gratitude is superficial. The warship slowly left the rapeseed port. After boarding the ship, El Yushu first ordered the adjutant to send Makita and the three of them to do chores and get some exercise. Then, after leaving Hina and Bailey, when he came to the secret room, he found that slim figure still sitting there. Aren't you leaving? El Yushu smiled. I finally found a place to stay temporarily, but you kicked me out. Robin turned around, rolled his eyes and said calmly. The initial vigilance has been worn away by these days, and the other party did not restrict her freedom or anything. But although I stayed, it doesn't mean that I won't leave in the future. Robin spoke lightly to remind someone. The implication is that you want me to work for you forever? Dream. All right. El Yushu didn't seem to hear it. He yawned and said perfunctorily. You can stay or stay here as you please, don't worry. Then, please cooperate. She held out her hand. Well, it's a pleasure to work with you. 
El Yushi reached out and took hold of her soft right hand, and it was easy to leave at the first touch. It was just the right thing to do. He doesn't feel at all that the other person will leave him. A crocodile can protect you, but Lao Zi can't protect you? So what if you are a wanted criminal by the world government? That old man Garp has been adopting the Pirate King's son for so many years and nothing has happened. Lao Zi's strength is comparable to that of an admiral, and his brother is also a marine admiral, so even if he is discovered, it won't be a big deal. At most, he will be questioned by those bullies from the world government. This matter is trivial to him. In this world, the strong is respected after all. Then you stay here for two days, we are going to East Blue. El Yushiu said lightly. Okay. Robin nodded as a response. Another day passed, and when night fell, the marine warship finally returned to Logue Town through Upside Down Mountain. Woohoo! Clang clang clang! As soon as the warship docked, a sound of gongs and drums was heard. It's Master El Yushiu who is back. Coming! Da 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 da! The sound of neat footsteps came as a group of figures in black suits gathered at the port. At the same time, a huge cart covered by red cloth was pushed. When El Yushiu and others disembarked one after another, the leader Bartolomeo gave a standard military salute. Welcome home Mr. El Yushiu. Welcome home, Mr. El Yushiu. XN. Mishida who was following behind her turned pale when she saw this scene. Is this person really marine? Why is it more gangster than the gangsters in her hometown? The warship behind him slowly left without any hesitation. The reason Hina gave El Yushiu was that she had a mission to go back to, but actually she didn't want to see him having sex with other women. So El Yushiu and the others just watched the warm welcome of a large group of gangsters. The two big brothers behind Mishida looked even more frightened. Did they not expect this person to be so terrifying? Not only Marine, but also a gangster with such terrifying power under his command? Black and white take it all? How terrifying! For a moment, the little thought of escaping completely dissipated, and I didn't dare to disobey this boss. I would be hunted down no matter where I went, right? Lord El Yushu. In order to thank you for leading us to the right path, we specially made a statue for you. As soon as he finished speaking, the younger brother opened the curtain. A lifelike stone statue of El Yushiu stands on a cart. The corners of El Yushiu's eyes twitched when she saw it. My younger brothers really know how to do tricks. Okay, okay, I got it. He yawned and then encouraged. Well, you did a good job. Woohoo! Mr. El Yushiu praised me. I'm so touched. Bartolomeo was moved to tears. Master El Yushu, can you give me your signature? A younger brother boldly said, after all. El Yushu's signature is a hard currency in the gangster family. Okay. What could El Yushu say? They had prepared such a grand welcome ceremony for themselves, so they couldn't let their hearts go cold. I didn't expect that when he opened this mouth. The other boy's eyes lit up one after another. I want it too. Master El Yushu, I want an autograph too. And I. I'm Wu Wu, Master El Yushu, look at me. I've missed it five times Wu Wu. If Bartolomeo hadn't been standing in front of him, they might have surrounded him at this time. Mishida and the others were so angry that they didn't dare to breathe. El Yushu, they are so enthusiastic. Bailey hid his furry body behind him, feeling overwhelmed by the enthusiasm of these people. Ah! Were you brought back by Master El Yushu? Ah, so cute! As expected of Master El Yushu's pet. It's so cute! You can actually talk! So amazing! For a time, the little raccoon cat Bailey instantly became the group's favorite. He scratched his face in embarrassment. Okay? Okay. Let's break up. El Yushu started to drive these guys away, otherwise they would chatter endlessly. Goodbye, Master El Yushu. They immediately lined up neatly, 
leaving an empty road. Everyone walked through it and walked towards the base. When El Yushiu returned to the Logue town base, Nami, Kuina, and Tashiji had been waiting in the conference room for a long time. El Yushiu! You still know how to come back. As soon as he stepped in, Nami asked first. This guy actually went out for such a long time. He didn't even know he took the initiative to call back. Did he go out to provoke women again? Well I miss you Nami. El Yushiu expressed her feelings directly. The best way to coax a girl is to express her longing boldly. You me him. Sure enough, Nami's face turned red and she was speechless. Hum Kai Dog. Pfft. Tashiji smiled and seemed to find this scene very interesting. Welcome back, El Yushiu. Kuina just smiled softly. Humph, welcome back. Nami came back to her senses and added a sentence, but turned her face away, as if she didn't want him to see the blush on her face, but what she might not have noticed was that the other half of her face was also blushing. Ha 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 El Yushiu laughed loudly. Nami stepped forward angrily and hammered him several times. Let's go, dinner is ready. Kuina said with a smile, she always arranges everything so carefully. I can only say that she is worthy of being a swordsman. Is it so detailed? So a few people had a sumptuous dinner together. Oh, this life is so wonderful. After all, she stayed in Logue Town for a longer time. El Yushiu just felt that coming back here was like going home. After eating, El Yushiu lay half alone in the office, looking at the bright starry sky outside the window. Look at the scenery while working. The value of being bad is plus 50. The sound of the system made him subconsciously look up at the clock on the wall. Hey? What the hell? Working hours? It's 8 o'clock, who's still at work? Oh. Kizaru, who was far away in an office at naval headquarters, sneezed. Strange, who is talking about me? He shook his head slightly and began to continue signing documents. There were 270 documents beside him. As an admiral, he needed to sign many things. It's so miserable, the poor workers. At the same time, somewhere in a secret base in Logue Town. Bartolomeo and his cronies looked at the woman opposite and said seriously. You are also impressed by Master El Yushiu's reputation, right? Robin. How did the powerful Marine find such a group of idiot fans? But the world is full of wonders, and Robin, who often hangs out in the underground world, has long been used to it. Knowing that she is now under the protection of El Yushu, in order to better integrate into this moment, she should express her position. So she nodded slightly and spoke nonsense seriously. Yes, I have admired him for a long time. Sure enough, as soon as these words came out, Bartolomeo burst into laughter. Ha 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 ha. Then you will be one of your own from now on. For him, he is happier when his idol is praised than when he is praised. As long as El Yushiu is praised, then we are. One of our own. Robin looked at this scene with a faint smile. El Yushiu's men were quite interesting. Some other island in East Blue. A figure in a black suit was giving a speech there. Why has East Blue's Marine become so active? Don't you know? They are all brought by Logue Town Base Chief, Mr. El Yushiu. He is Marine Admiral's younger brother. He is Marine's future. He suppressed Logue Town alone. Many evil pirates were eliminated by him. We have to be grateful to him. He brought us peace. The people around him listened silently, clenching their fists from time to time and nodding silently from time to time. What this gangster talks about is so passionate. Okay, okay. That's so well said. Some people suddenly understood in their hearts. I see. No wonder there have been fewer pirates recently. No wonder those marines have become more active in going to sea. It turned out to be the credit of Colonel El Yushu. Let us thank Colonel El Yushu. Thank you Colonel El Yushu, XN. 
The gang members pointed to a direction in the distant sea, which was the direction of Logue Town. Logue. Over there is where Colonel El Yushiu is. Although he can't see everything we do, we should still be grateful. Let us give applause to Colonel El Yushiu. Bang bang bang. He was the first to applaud. Bang 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 bang. The people were infected and applauded one after another. And at the outermost edge of the crowd, a slightly wretched looking figure flashed his eyes. Marine Admiral's younger brother? The future of Marine? I see. He left silently and disappeared in a corner. East Blue Marine Base Office. Click. The door slowly opened. El Yushu, who was dozing with her eyes closed, opened her eyes slightly. He saw Kuina standing in front of him in her pajamas. Her fair and smooth calves were slightly exposed, the fresh fragrance from the shower was fragrant, and her pretty face was slightly red. El Yushu. Uh huh. Since the other party was so proactive, El Yushu naturally took the initiative to get up and hug her. A pleasant and relaxing night passed. Outside the door, Nami, who had dark circles on his face, gritted his teeth. Damn it, why haven't I grown up yet? Hearing the rustling sound of clothes being put on inside, she immediately slipped away and fled as if, Mano Zhao, was leaving. El Yushu, who was wearing clothes in the office, slightly raised the corners of her mouth. Vn. Provoked, Kuina raised her head and asked curiously. What's wrong? Nothing, I thought of something interesting. He stepped forward slightly and touched her hair. Kuina narrowed her eyes and hugged him. In a secret room outside East Blue. Several figures are gathering together. Drag, are you really going to contact that Marine? He is Admiral's younger brother. Ivankov's big face was full of hesitation. Hmm. That Marine is not simple. The man named Durag looked up into the distance, which was the direction of Logue Town. It can be seen from the family that he founded to beat the enemies and the guests. Those people never do anything illegal, but are very disciplined. He calmly stated his basis. And the news from naval headquarters is that he is very powerful, comparable to the marine elite vice-admiral. And such a powerful and powerful man, must be. There is the other party's purpose. What would he think if he knew that? The so-called beating up the enemy's Hakka family is just a fan support club created by the opponent's number one fanboy. And such a person is of great contact value. If we can draw him to the revolutionary army camp, then the difficulties will be reduced a lot. Durag finished explaining his reasons. The revolutionary army had only been established a few years ago, and the initial stage was really difficult. They urgently needed to find all the people they could win over. That's right, and Kojiro's daughter is still working as a marine under him. Ivankov nodded and said. Well, so that's why I'm going to get in touch. I don't know when dark clouds appeared in the sky, and a bolt of lightning flashed, revealing the face covered with tattoos under the cloak. The power of the revolutionary army is gradually growing, and the wind of a new era has begun to blow. What will the world become? East Blue thousands of meters above the sky, floating sky islands float irregularly, shrouded in clouds and mist, looking like a dream. A huge ship hangs in the sky. The tall man with blonde hair was smoking a big cigarette. Report to the Admiral. I found important information down there. A pirate came forward to report. Oh? What information? His voice was lazy and the rudder on his head made him look not very smart. The base commander of East Blue Logue Town, Marine Colonel El Yushu, is very powerful. His elder brother is the current Marine Admiral. Subordinate, report, he is the guy who listened to the gang member's speech on the island. Hearing the words Logue Town, the man's pupils, which seemed indifferent to everything at first, finally showed a slight fluctuation. Logue Town the place where Roger died. Jahahahahahahahaha. <laughs> Is there a marine there? He stood up, his long golden hair shining in the sunlight. That boss. 
There is always a marine base in Logue Town. The boy next to me reminded him in a low voice. Shut up. Don't I know? I'm a golden lion. He angrily scolded the boy next to him. I don't care. The place where Roger died cannot be defiled by Marine. Roger is the man whom Golden Lion respects the most in his life, and he only recognizes that man. Then boss, how about we go and destroy it? The younger brother suggested. Jahahahahahahahaha. What a great idea. Golden Lion laughed, and then said. But where Roger died, let him rest in peace, but... Bah! Smoke shrouded his face. Kill all the people above. Leave no one alive. He, Golden Lion, is a legendary pirate. Destroying an island is just a small matter for him. But boss, naval headquarters discovered it, what will happen to our plan? After Golden Lion escaped from prison... He went to a magical island and found that there were many animals on the island that became violent after eating plants containing IQ ingredients. So he used his own ability to pull the entire island into the sky and move it as his own floating island. For the floating island strong world. For more than 10 years, he has hidden his whereabouts and studied IQ with his trusted deputy Dr. Indigo. And living on the floating island, he planned a comeback. He liberated these animals to East Blue and let them wreak havoc, showing his power of revenge to the world government. My subordinates feel that they should not reveal their whereabouts so early now. Gee ha 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 ha. What are you afraid of? I am a golden lion. More than ten years ago, he dared to break into Marine Base 520 alone. More than ten years later, he didn't even have the courage to clean up a Marine Base. What a joke. It's been more than ten years. It's time to charge some interest. Golden Lion came to the bow of the ship and looked at the blue sea below that was obscured by clouds and mist but was faintly visible. He decided to go and kill ten islands this time. Prove to the world that although he has retired, he is still the same Golden Lion who can swallow up mountains and rivers. Gee ha 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 ha. The arrogant and bold laughter resounded through the clouds and seemed to announce to the sea that a sleeping lion opened its eyes. East Blue Logue Town, Nami is scolding the figure lying on the beach chair. El Yushu why did you lie down as soon as you came back? She was so angry that her teeth itched. Maybe this was also the mentality of most people. When we first met, I kissed my baby, but after two days, I started to feel uncomfortable. Well. Nami, I believe in your ability. El Yushu's lazy voice sounded, and then he said. Sleeping during working hours, damage value plus 50. The sun is so bright, it's raining Nami. Really? Don't you have an awning? Nami said angrily, then stepped forward and twisted his soft flesh. Ouch hiss it hurts, it hurts. El Yushu took a breath of cold air and then said. But the temperature is too high. Let's go and let it rain to cool down. It's around July now, and the climate in East Blue is pretty stable, so the weather is starting to get hot. Snort. After hearing what the other party said, Nami turned her head and hummed as a sign of agreement, then she turned into flames and floated into the sky. Fire breath. A subtle sound sounded in the sky, El Yushu raised his head slightly and a red light appeared in the white clouds, and then the clouds began to close, turn black, and rain. That's right, it's raining. At first, El Yushu was surprised when he learned that the other party could change the weather. After all, Nami at this time did not have the weather stick made by Usopp. Later, she said that the high temperature heat flow created by the Maramara fruit collided with the cold air in the clouds, and the water molecules condensed into rain. After hearing this, El Yushu couldn't help but sigh, Nami is really a genius, he can think of other uses for Maramara fruit. He realized that maybe he could take her to that little sky island to systematically learn climate knowledge. Makita, are we going to treat Eri like this? The strong man asked his sister that he had been exhausted these past few days. Being commanded by gangsters in suits, 
they petted old men passing by, helped little girls find cats, and went to weed the fields. Isn't it good? Brother. Mishita, the future Miss Valentine rolled her eyes and said. The food here is good, the clothes are warm, and there is accommodation. It's much better than in West Blue and Alabasta. These two days of life made her feel extremely satisfied and happy. When they were in West Blue, their parents were killed by gangsters, so the three siblings had been dependent on each other since childhood. When he grew older, the eldest brother suddenly said that he found a treasure map, which was a treasure left by a great pirate. The location was in Alabasta on the Grand Line. So the three of them worked together and secretly boarded a merchant ship bound for the Grand Line. It was fine at first, but they didn't expect that they were only one island away from Alabasta. The merchant ship suddenly encountered a group of pirates. The pirate captain was a strong man with a bounty of 4,000 and 5,000. He wielded a mace and killed all the guards on the ship. Fortunately, the three brothers and sisters were smart and jumped off the ship when they saw the pirate ship. Way to go! After escaping, the three of them finally arrived at Alabasta by accident only to find out that the treasure map was fake. After digging it out according to the location, it said, cheated. Idiot. Buggy is here to visit. So the three of them started wandering in Alabasta. Since they were young, they had lived in the West Blue-like environment of grabbing things to survive. At first, they were ready to follow suit. However, there were too many guards in that country, and they were everywhere. From then on, they lived a life of endless meals. Later, they finally couldn't stand the hard life and wanted to kidnap Princess Vivi. Get rich. It's not bad, I'm just too tired. The strong man touched his hair. It was his first time to get paid through work. In the past, he had relied on robbing. For a while, he felt very uncomfortable and awkward. Second brother thinks it's very good, but you are the only one who has many things to do. Mishita rolled her eyes and said, anyway, she likes it here very much. For a moment, she couldn't help but feel lucky that Master Marine caught them, otherwise how could such a good life come about? Thinking of El Yushiu's figure, her face couldn't help but blush again, and her body twisted slightly. Now that I think about it, he is quite handsome, and he is also a Colonel Marine. If, if I could become his lover, wouldn't I be able to live a better life? Mishita couldn't help but imagine a better future. The elder brother couldn't help but sigh when he saw that the younger sister was having a seizure again. Oh, okay, okay. What can he do? My little sister and second brother both like this place. As the eldest brother, he can only go along with it. The three brothers and sisters have come here like this over the years. Thinking about it carefully, this place seems like... Maybe, not bad? Wow! It started to rain. The eldest brother took off his clothes and came close to Mishita to cover the sky. It's raining, let's go quickly. Seven dollars. The two of them ran towards the house not far away, which was the road to a better life. Nami-sama went to make rain again. As expected of Nami-sama. You are so considerate of the people. Somewhere in Loke Town, Bartolomeo was crying in the rain. It seemed that he was deeply aware of the heat these days. Wow! As expected of Nami-sama. The boys in black suits beside him also followed suit and cried bitterly. They could only say that they were not a family and would not enter the same family. Ha! Huh. On the rooftop of Marine Base, El Yushiu was lying on a beach chair and yawned feeling the cool sea breeze due to the rain. Hmm. It's really cool. He squinted his eyes. Sleeping while working, the damage value will be plus 100. Experience points are full, character level plus 1. Wow. The upgrade came unexpectedly. The corners of El Yushiu's mouth raised in comfort, and he called Mr. System. BBCG, System. Level 76, 50 slash 100000. Attributes, Strength, 
11,600, Constitution, 14,023, Agility, 15,236, Spirit, 1,280, Luck, 80. Current Abilities, Haki, Teijutsu, Marksmanship, Swordsmanship, Navigation, Ancient Languages, Medical Skills, Devil Fruit Ability, 59%, etc. Current Comprehension Level, S, Full. Special Skill, Divine Avoidance. This upgrade not only increases each attribute by hundreds, but also directly increases agility by a thousand, and there is also a special skill. This. L. Yushu squinted her eyes and clicked to see the details. Special skills, famous skills from every strong person, host can learn them by lying down. Ignore the difficulty, ignore the skills, as long as you have seen it or know the specific principles, you can understand it. 6. Doesn't this mean that he can learn many powerful moves while lying down, such as Thunder 8 Trigrams? Wayaguo? Elbaf's Spear? After all, he really knew the principles of those things. Although he could imitate them, he felt they were not as powerful as the originals, so he stopped practicing. That is to say, it has only its shape but not its meaning. B. El Yushu closed his eyes slightly and began to recall Kaido's thundering eight trigrams, Big Mom's majestic country. The system panel special skills also display several words. Thunder eight trigrams 1%. Wayaguo 1%, Elbaf Spear 1%. Somewhere in Logue Town. The breeze blew, and a figure appeared on the roof. The cloak covered him so deeply that no one could see his face clearly. It's raining. The figure looked down at the civilians hugging each other and laughing, taking shelter from the rain, and murmured in a low voice. It's such a peaceful town. Boom. A flash of lightning flashed across the sky. Reflecting his tattooed face, the leader of the Revolutionary Army, Long, looked in the direction of Marine Base with a smile on his face. El Yushu, I am becoming more and more interested in you. Nami, thank you for your hard work I will reward you for rubbing my shoulders. The orange-haired figure returned, El Yushu waved and turned over. El Yushu. You guy. Nami was a little angry. She was obviously going to rain, but this guy didn't want to give her Bailey, but he also wanted to squeeze her labor force. I, Nami, will not succumb to your power even if my salary is deducted. Rub or not? El Yushu raised an eyebrow, lifted up her clothes and inadvertently exposed her abdominal muscles. Nami whispered, the energy in her heart just now was gone. She came to him with a blushing face touched his sharp abdominal muscles with her soft, boneless hands, A and D. Hey! Where are you touching? El Yushu protested. At the same time, another place in Logue Town is the Logue Town Marine Academy, named by El Yushu. It is surrounded by an iron fence and surrounded by thick and high walls. Buggy patted his work uniform and said, Ha 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 ha, I'm so awesome. I ended my work today so early. Yes, the pirate buggy works here every day, and according to the regulations of the top base commander, El Yushu, the working time cannot be less than eight hours a day, so he cannot go home from get off work yet. Damn it! Buggy cursed in a low voice, because there are El Yushu admirers and little fans everywhere here. In his opinion, those who beat up the enemy and the Hakka family are crazy. As long as someone says something bad about El Yushu, these people will hit him hard. Don't mention it, it's all painful memories. As he spoke, he rubbed his cheek, as if he was still feeling a faint phantom pain. Oh, how can I still be a pirate like this? He helps them study buggy shells here every day. Although he has no worries about food and drink, and even gets bonuses, he really doesn't want to continue at all. Laozi's original dream, was to find the One Piece. Buggy gritted his teeth and seemed to think of his youthful years, and then thought of that figure again, and he felt a little depressed again. Damn redhead, 
you actually abandoned my dream. When he was young, Buggy was once a crew member of the Roger Pirates. Only he and Shanks and the Roger Pirates had never reached the final island. But Roger said something to Shanks before he died, and Roger entrusted Shanks with the straw hat. So he always felt that Shanks was the man who should reach the final island after Roger. He had a good relationship with Shanks and therefore chose to give up his dream of reaching the final island, hoping that his good brother would inherit Roger's ideals. Unexpectedly, that man actually chose not to go. Instead, he wanted to hand everything over to some bullshit new era. Damn redhead. Unforgivable. He became angry when he thought of this. Lousy bet everything on you. You actually failed to live up to expectations. No. I want to escape. The more he thought about it, the angrier he became. At this moment, Buggy's already cold heart became warm. I'm still young, I still have time. He raised his head slightly, his red nose getting even redder. I'm going to the final island. I'm going to prove that bullshit redhead wrong. Then how to escape? He frowned and began to think. He has visited Logue Town in this year, so Buggy knows very well that the safest way to leave the island is to follow the merchant ships that come to Logue Town every day. Only they can travel to Logue Town unimpeded. But how to contact them? A new problem arises. Whether Buggy is at work or off work, in order to prevent him from escaping, he is actually followed by a black suit every day. Buggy squatted down again and started thinking. Got it. His eyes lit up slightly, and he thought of a good idea. At the same time, El Yushu, who was enjoying Nami's massage, opened her eyes. He squinted his eyes and looked at the figure whose cloak was fluttering slightly in the wind. Nami. Um. You go in first, there are guests coming. Nami left obediently. A gust of wind blew, and the cap of the cloak was blown. The leader of the revolutionary army, Durag. El Yushiu took the lead. Well, it looks like I don't need to introduce myself. He responded with a faint smile, and then looked at the other party carefully. A handsome face that is completely different from Kizaru's wretched look. With his lazy demeanor, he seems to enjoy life better than those nobles. He can feel the terrifying physique of the other party that is comparable to the Sea Kings without seeing or hearing. A young man with great potential. This thought flashed through his mind. Why are you looking for me? You don't want to invite me to join the revolutionary army, do you? El Yushiu picked his ears and was not afraid at all because this man was a major criminal wanted by the world government. Ha 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 ha. Of course not. I just came here to make friends with you. That's what I said, and that's what I thought in my heart. Durag has never doubted his vision of others. Ever since he saw him for the first time, the thought of inviting him to join the revolutionary army has completely dissipated. This man is not on the same path as the revolutionary army. How to describe it? It's like the kind of salted fish that knows how to eat and wait to die every day but it also gives him a beast that can accumulate strength with its eyes closed. As if waiting for one day to shock the world. Well, we met there and talked about it. Is it time for you to leave? El Yushiu said with a smile, he didn't want to have anything to do with these guys. These people have caused so many revolutions around the world in the past few years, and the world government has paid too much attention. This is very troublesome. Please wait for a moment. Seeing that the other party was actually preparing to drive them away, Long frowned slightly. He stepped forward and said. We can make friends. It's not easy to be a friend. El Yushiu smiled and said. Well, are you willing to aid those fighting for freedom? I don't want to. Have you not seen the difficult lives of people under the tyranny of the world government? Oh, I'm a marine. I'm supposed to protect the world government, what do those people have to do with me? El Yushiu talks nonsense. Durag stopped talking. Why can't this young man get enough food and salt? But in line with the principle that one cannot be an ally or an enemy, he nodded slightly. 
I see. There was a sigh in his tone, as if he hated iron for not being able to become steel. Go slowly and don't see me off. El Yushu just yawned and said. If you catch fish during work, you will get plus 50 damage value. Call. Durag's figure turned into the wind and left. El Yushu watched quietly, unblinking, and muttered. It feels a bit like the fruit of Logia. El Yushu? Are you leaving? Nami's little head poked out from behind the door. Well, let's go. El Yushu rubbed his head, looking very helpless. I just heard it. Yeah. I know you heard me. Then why didn't you agree? Nami tilted her head and asked curiously. The Revolutionary Army will save many people, right? The nobles in those countries are terrible, right? Nami hasn't always stayed at the Logue town base these years. Occasionally she would go out to see when the mood strikes. Anyway, with her strength, she is enough to run rampant in East Blue. Because of this, she also saw how many countries treat their own citizens. It can be said that it really refreshed her outlook on life. For Nami, who had lived in Coco West Village since childhood, this was the first time she saw such disgusting people in the world. In order to suck blood from the common people, they wantonly raise taxes, and in order to squeeze out the last bit of their hard-earned money, they also lend money. If they can't pay, they use the house and land as mortgage. If they can't pay it back? It's easy to handle. Just go and work for the nobles. It's just a matter of going there. People often have a narrow escape from death. These people still know some etiquette and are not so blatant. Some people are so shameless. They directly order their subordinates to come to grab money, and then increase the prices of various commodities. One loaf costs 100,000 belly. Some people had no money or food and had to starve to death. Some people wanted to resist but were quickly killed by heavily armed soldiers. Some people were forced to go to sea and become pirates. She has seen all of this before. So she really felt that contacting the Revolutionary Army might be a good opportunity, so that she could save more people like that. Well, they are too popular now Nami. El Yushu touched the other party's head. But I think we should be able to do something. Yes, so I can still provide food, Bailey, and so on. El Yushu said with a smile, and at the same time decided to go back and see Kuina's father. Anyway, he had contacts with the Revolutionary Army. You agreed. Nami was a little surprised. You have made such a request, how can I not agree? El Yushu talks about tricks to coax women. Caddy Island was once inhabited by pirates and people's lives were miserable. But since the gangsters who beat up the Hakka family came, not only were the pirates driven away, they also brought unprecedented advanced fishing technology and planting technology, and learned how to use the island's resources for export and trade with other islands. Life here has changed, people's lives are full of hope. Robin in disguise followed the gang members to the island, and from now on she will conduct a week-long guidance work here. Miss Lola, this is our base. A burly gangster boy led the way and said respectfully, this woman was personally recommended by Master El Yushu, and said that she would be their commander in the future. As for Lola, it is Robin's pseudonym. Well, thank you. Robin said calmly, this island made her feel very comfortable, and people's lives were full of vitality and hope. Did he bring it all? It's really good. Robin's heart was full of complexities for a while. Having been in the underground world for many years, she naturally knew that there are good and bad people, and so does Marine. But when she thought about Marine, who once destroyed her hometown, now she has a person to lead and protect other people's hometowns. Ha 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 ha. Is this Miss Lola? Miss Lola, please give me some advice. Have you eaten, Miss Lola? Do you want to come have something to eat? As soon as she arrived at the base, she opened the door and was welcomed by all the members. Well, thank you everyone, I've eaten. Robin smiled and refused. 
The warm atmosphere made her feel a little uncomfortable. She went to the office without looking back. I was originally in darkness, why should I be allowed to see the light? She subconsciously didn't want to face it. Hey! I told you not to scare Miss Lola with your enthusiasm. A man in a black suit scolded his companion. Well, I wonder if Miss Lola ate one bite at a time. I think you were scared, ha ha ha. You guy. Okay, let's eat quickly, there are still many tasks to be done, we will help them reclaim wasteland later. There should be a lot of rewards from the headquarters this time, right? Yes. I heard that there is also Mr. L. Yushiu's signature. What? That must be mine. Oh, it must be mine. The people in black suits were discussing and talking about work matters. Robin left quietly outside the door. Thousands of meters above the ground, Golden Lion's flying pirate ship began to set sail. Boys, show some color to the people of East Blue. Golden Lion, who was smoking a big cigarette, laughed and said, Roar. The younger brothers raised their swords and responded wildly. At the same time, Loke Town. El Yushiu also went out. He and Kuina stood on the warship and waved to the people below. Nami, I'll leave the base to you. He waved and said. Asshole El Yushiu. I know. Nami waved his fist and said fiercely, he was just about to give him a fire punch. The warship sailed slowly away. What a hateful guy. She muttered, a little dissatisfied, but she also knew that he had gone to do business. Goodbye, Master El Yushiu. Bartolomeo waved goodbye, well, there were a group of black suits. On the warship, Kuina looked at the blue sea ahead and suddenly said. El Yushiu. Um. Did you bring any wine this time? Oh ho. I forgot. Really, fortunately, I'm ready. Kuina frowned. It seems that I brought my boyfriend home because I was afraid that he would not prepare a gift and would be scolded by his parents. Ha 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 ha, I'm teasing you, how could I not be prepared? El Yushiu smiled and said. How can Kuina be so good? Humph. You're teasing me again. What to do with the extra wine? Just say you bought some too. Anyway, his daughter will give him wine so he will definitely be happy. Ta! El Yushiu smiled and said nothing, but she was thinking in her heart, should she go to Robin's place to have a look? Anyway, I'm just dropping by. Let's go and have a look. The warship began to sail slowly towards Caddy Island. One afternoon passed, the sun set. Caddy Island. Robin was wandering in the woods on the island. She was investigating whether there were any ruins related to the island. And in the sky above the island, I don't know when a floating ship appeared. Hey! What is that? A flying pirate ship. Real or fake? Is it a pirate? Oh no! The pirates are coming. Although they don't know why the ship flies, they still recognize the pirate flag. People subconsciously want to escape. Their fear of pirates is engraved in their bones. Hearing the shouts of residents in the distance, Robin subconsciously raised his head. She squinted her eyes. That's, the Flying Pirates, Golden Lion. Robin naturally knows the legend of the Golden Lion. Gee ha 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 ha. A figure with blonde hair floated down from the sky, his laughter full of heroism. After driving away the residents, the men in black suits who beat up the enemy and the Hakka family were waiting in formation below. This made Golden Lion a little unhappy when he saw this scene. Has it only been more than ten years that people have forgotten his reputation? Are you no longer afraid of him? A person with abilities? Well, it looks like. What's wrong? I don't have sea stone handcuffs. What will I do next? What can we do? 
we can't let this guy hurt the people on the island. Hearing that the men in black suits were discussing how to deal with him as if no one else was around, Golden Lion raised his eyebrows and rattled the flu. Hey! Do you know who I am? I don't care who you are. Pirates, please leave this island. The man in the black suit who brought Robin to the island during the day said loudly, he looks very brave. Oh! The Golden Lion had a sneer on his face and was about to get angry. The sound of rapid footsteps came. Get out of here. He's the Golden Lion. A few dozen nautical miles away from Kadi Island, a warship is sailing. El Yushu was lying on a beach chair wearing big underpants, holding juice in her right hand and reading a newspaper in her left hand. This is life. Reading the newspaper while on a business trip, the damage value is plus 100. El Yushu, we are going to Kadi Island. Kuina's voice sounded. Good. What? Golden Lion? That legendary pirate. The expressions of the men in black suits changed greatly. When they heard this name, they recalled it. How could such a big pirate appear in East Blue? What happened? Gee ha 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 ha. Some people still know about me. When Golden Lion saw a woman recognizing him, he couldn't help but nodded with satisfaction. Hey! Woman! What's your name? I can consider leaving a whole body for you. He smiled and seemed to think this was a gift. Boss. She seems to be Nico Robin, the survivor of O'Hara. The younger brother opened his mouth and said. Although they have lived in seclusion for more than ten years, it does not mean that they are isolated from the outside world. They still have their own sources of information. Oh? Are you the, son of the devil? The one who has been wanted since he was eight years old? Golden Lion asked with a cigarette in his mouth. In fact, he was not very interested in guys who could read the text of history before. Zero zero. After all, he once only wanted to unify the world, but since Roger has reached the final island of Raftal, then as an old enemy, he should also go there. Yes, this is what he thinks. So for a while Golden Lion had a strong interest in Robin. Robin said nothing. Gee ha 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 ha. As long as you come with me, how about I spare these people? He smiled slightly, as if he was talking about a deal. Robin still didn't speak. She didn't know what choice she should make. She had just arrived not long ago. So why should she take risks for a group of people who had nothing to do with her? Seeing the inner struggle of the other party, the man in black suit who had brought Robin here stepped forward slightly. His expression was full of determination and seriousness. Miss Robin, please stand back and leave this to us. After he had just learned through those people that Miss Lola was the criminal wanted by the world government at the age of eight, not only did he not feel scared, but he felt a sense of pity. Of course he knew that his own strength meant that he would die, but he remained steadfast, as long as he could hold on for even a second for poor Miss Robin. Miss Robin, please step back. I don't know why, but these people are always laughing and joking, but at critical moments they are united. They blush and form a human wall to protect Robin behind them. It was full of tragic atmosphere for a moment. Gee ha 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 ha. Since you want to die, then I will make it happen for you. Golden Lion laughed wildly and said, he just likes to kill people like this. He suddenly flew up and stretched out his hand, as if calling something from the sky. I changed my mind. The Golden Lion smiled ferociously. The idea of accepting Robin had disappeared. Go to hell. All of you. Let these people know what it's like to piss off the king of the sea. The golden lion and the flying ship flew into the sky without looking back. Robin suddenly thought of something when he saw this scene. She shouted violently. Get out of here quickly. The tone is full of despair. The reason why golden lion is called a legendary pirate is because of his fighting style of hitting people with islands at every turn. Whoosh! Until a black spot appeared in the sky, 
accompanied by the flow of inflammation that broke through the air friction, everyone gradually saw its appearance clearly. There are rich vegetation, mountains, soil, and even large animals living on it. It's, it's an island. A sharp scream sounded, and everyone's face was covered in cold sweat. Run away. Jump into the sea. Get out of here. Some naive people want to leave before the island comes down. Ouch. Mom, I don't want to die. The child's desperate cry sounded, and his parents hugged him tremblingly. Ah. I don't want to die. Why do you want to kill us? We did something wrong. Some residents knelt on their knees. They didn't understand why people like them had to suffer such an unreasonable disaster. Despair, fear, anger, and other emotions filled the crowd. What should I do? Miss Robin. The faces of the men in black suits were also full of fear and fear. They subconsciously wanted to find a backbone. Robin's face turned pale. Even if she wanted to leave here, she had no choice. It's hopeless, it's already, it's over here. She thought of a figure in her mind. If it was him, maybe he could beg? A few nautical miles away from Caddy Island. A warship is sailing leisurely on the sea. El Yushu, who was lying on the beach chair, suddenly opened his eyes. Ha! Huh. What's wrong El Yushu? Kuina asked. No. I'm going to go, there's something going on over there. El Yushu stood up slowly. He looked up at the sky. There was a huge thing getting closer and closer to the bottom. Then Kuina also saw it. Her pupils were shaking as she looked over there. Then, that's, the island fell. Let's go Bailey. El Yushu grabbed the sleeping civet cat by its tail. At, at, at. Bailey, who was caught by the tail, was stunned for a moment at first, and then cried bitterly while moving at high speed. What should I do, what should I do? Why are you doing this to us? What did we do wrong? Damn pirates! Why don't you give us a way to survive? Perhaps they thought they were about to die, so they yelled and cursed. I'm going to die, I haven't confessed my love to Rita yet. Yet, I haven't even had a chance to use the Bailey I buried at home. Um, Bella, actually it was my fault that day. I shouldn't have laughed at you like that. It doesn't matter, I was wrong too. In despair of life and death, people speak their last words. I didn't expect. I would die here. Robin had given up struggling. She quietly looked at the island getting closer and closer in the sky, and began to count down her death. Oh, I still want to go back and propose to Miss Loyalun, ha ha ha. It seems that I can't do it. It seems that I can no longer look up to Colonel El Yushu anymore. I really want to see him become Marine Marshal one day. Then we will have face wherever we go, ha 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 ha. When death was imminent, the men in black suits were filled with fear, but they still lit cigarettes with each other and chatted as usual. Oh? You guys, I don't want to be Marine Marshal. A familiar voice sounded. Everyone looked up. Ugh. Colonel El Yushu. Am I hallucinating? I also saw Colonel El Yushu. The people in black suits cried bitterly, and the leader suddenly looked anxious and said. Colonel El Yushu, why are you here? Run. With your strength, you will definitely be able to leave in time. Yet, yeah, get out of here quickly. Go back and ask Kizaru Admiral to avenge us. Pfft. Hearing these people's lovely speeches, El Yushu couldn't help but smile. Hey! You guys actually look down on my boss. Bailey was jumping on his shoulder, looking very angry. I don't know who he learned the word boss from. Okay, I won't tell you any more. I'm going to take care of it. El Yushu yawned and grabbed Bailey. His body turned into red light and flew towards the sky. Robin watched this scene quietly, it was his words, is that okay? Although she had doubts in her heart, she didn't know why she no longer had the fear of death. She seems, to believe that man? Why? 
Bailey. Watch out. I'm going to use my ultimate move. Okay. Rush. El Yushu's figure lingered in the sky. He quietly looked at the island that was getting closer and closer. We haven't even arrived at the island yet, but we can already feel the strong sense of oppression there. Zero. One sword style. Get Shuga Tensho. He spoke calmly and swung out the western sword in his hand. Wow. In the shocked eyes of everyone. A giant crescent-shaped sword energy was slashed out by him. Not only that, he continued to swing his sword. Two ways, three ways, four ways. Four giant sword energies quickly approached him in an encirclement and suppression manner. Rumble. The sword energy sank into the island like cutting tofu. In everyone's disbelieving eyes, that island, was just divided into several pieces. But it's not over yet. Although the island has been dismembered, those falling behemoths will still cause a lot of deaths. But who is El Yushu? How could he not have thought of this situation? Bailey. Exist. Bang. The civet cat turned into a paintbrush, El Yushu painted casually, and then threw it out. A purple robed figure appeared. Leave it to you Mr. Fujitora. Well, I will do my best. Buzz. Deep purple light shines into the islands. The rapidly falling rocks suddenly became extremely slow, and then stabilized like this. The flying pirates, who were already hundreds of meters away and watching the excitement in the sky, were stunned. Hey! Boss! Someone chopped down the island. The younger brother's scream sounded. The golden lion, who was originally smoking, raised his eyebrows. Oh! There is actually a great swordsman in East Blue. Only great swordsmen have the power to cut through mountains and seas. He couldn't help but become interested. Golden Lion slowly stood up. Gee ha 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 ha. Let me see which brat it is. For a great pirate like him who has been famous for a long time, everyone is a junior. I saw that figure across the sea. Hey? You're a marine. Then I'll kill you. His figure flew towards the opponent quickly. Um. El Yushu, who was posing in the sky and enjoying the worship of people on the island, turned his head and looked at the blonde figure coming towards him. Hey. Kid. Where did you get that sword? Golden Lion recognized it as Roger's sword at a glance. Um. El Yushu yawned and said in a casual tone. Of course I picked this up. You pirate bastard. Gee ha 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 ha. If Roger knew that Marine had taken away his sword, his face would be ugly ha 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 ha. Golden Lion laughed wildly when he heard this, and then suddenly his face turned cold again. Hey kid. Roger's sword is not yours to own. Damn it Marine. Oh. Golden Lion cheeky, if you don't just wait to die in peace. Why did you come out and dance? The remnants of the old era. There was a coldness in El Yushu's eyes. If he hadn't come to see Robin, everyone on this island, wouldn't be alive. Damn it. Pirates. Gee ha 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 ha. Then let me see the power of the new era. Known as the remnant of the old era, Golden Lion was not only lifeless, but laughed loudly, and then took action violently. Slash wave. Uh-huh. A huge slash came to El Yushu in an instant. El Yushu just snorted coldly, drew out his western sword and slashed. Clang. With the strong wind blowing. The slash wave that could cut off the sea was actually blocked. Ha 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 ha. Interesting young people. Golden Lion is interested. Snort. El Yushu snapped his fingers and countless black mist appeared behind him. Hu ho ho! The golden lion was enveloped in an instant. Oh! Demon fruit power! Gee ha 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 ha! Little devil! Are you going to play hide and seek with me? Despite being suppressed in what he saw and heard, golden lion did not panic at all. The sword on his leg, 
Sakura Jokiji, swung rapidly. Lion Thousand Slice Valley Countless golden slash waves enveloped the surrounding area, including El Yushiu's position. His meaning is very simple. Although he can't see you, he just needs to cover all areas. Swish swish swish. Countless golden slash waves cut through the black fog, as if the endless darkness was coming out. Clang clang clang. El Yushiu intercepted several slash waves that might threaten Caddy Island, and then allowed other slash waves to fly out of the black mist range. After all, his black screen is not a barrier, it can only be said to interfere with perception. Gee ha 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 ha. I found you. Hearing the sound of El Yushiu intercepting the attack, Golden Lion smiled and then quickly approached him. El Yushiu raised his eyebrows. As expected, his mental interference in the dark scene had no effect at all. He is indeed a big pirate, I'm so scared. Gilyalu. Blood surrounds Zhou Shen. Then it turned into a sharp sword and swung it towards the incoming figure. Golden Lion sneered, Sakura on her feet easily cut through the blood sword. She came to him in an instant. Clang 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 clang. Fierce sparks broke out between the two. Whoosh! El Yushiu accidentally made a gash in his arm. Jaha ha 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 ha! You're hurt, Marine. 0.2. Golden Lion showed a successful smile. He is a top swordsman, a mere junior. For a swordsman, an injury to his arm will seriously affect his sword swing. This is also intentional. He wants this Marine to slowly feel the coming of death. He wants to make this marine feel despair. Hey? Stinky old man. What are you thinking about? El Yushiu sneered, and then his temperament changed drastically, his figure became slightly thinner, his pupils became blood red, and his nails became slender. The wound that was bleeding just now has healed. Oh? Phantom beast species. Golden Lion was a little surprised, and then showed a sneer. Not bad, kid. He held it in vain with one hand. Lion Majesty. Earth coiling. It turned out that he had summoned several islands around him without knowing it. Those islands turned into lions roaring towards the black mist. Um. El Yushiu thought for a while and removed the black mist. For a time, he was exposed to everyone as he was being hunted by several island sized lion heads. Colonel El Yushiu. The people in black suits started to worry. El Yushiu. Even Robin couldn't help but feel a little nervous. She clasped her hands slightly. Can El Yushiu, can defeat that big pirate? Jahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahahah
A purple robe figure suddenly appeared, it was Fujitora transformed into a shape-shifting leaf. Let me clean up the evil. Call. The islands that originally attacked suddenly stopped. Golden Lion's face changed slightly, why was the island that he could command like an arm out of control? Yukai. He looked at the blind man and couldn't help but feel a little angry. Don't be distracted during the battle. Golden Lion. Wow. The sword flashed, and even if Golden Lion reacted, he still added another wound. Smelly brat. He looked at El Yushu with a gloomy expression. I don't understand why the other party is so fast. Ah. When the time came, El Yushu's lips curled up slightly. He snapped his fingers. Snapped. Golden Lion had a bad premonition, and sure enough, the next moment his blood spurted out uncontrollably. Wow! Countless blood surrounds El Yushu. Oh, the response is pretty quick. El Yushu said with a smile, the opponent tightened his muscles and covered them with armed colors, blocking the blood that was constantly trying to spurt out. 11. Golden Lion who had lost at least one-third of his body's blood, looked pale. Then I saw the purple-robed figure coming not far away. What does it feel like for an elderly lion to be mauled by two marine admirals? He suddenly had a premonition that something might happen this time. Naval Headquarters Sengoku looked serious. The Garp Golden Lion guy showed up. Hmm. That old guy doesn't treat him well as a legend. Why does he have to come out? Garp also looked solemn. After all, that was the Golden Lion. He once came to naval headquarters alone and destroyed most of the men in Marine Ford. I have sent Pora Salano first, he is fast. Sengoku said. How many warships were sent? Thirty ships. For a big pirate like Golden Lion, a small number means nothing at all. The two were silent for a moment. Then Garp suddenly raised his head and asked. Then it's that brat El Yushu who's fighting him now. Oh, yes. Sengoku was a little worried for a while. Although El Yushu seemed a bit lazy to him, he was still a strong and promising young man, so he still had high hopes for that guy. If he dies like this, Marine will lose another pillar. Sengoku sighed inwardly. Grand Line Sky a golden flash of light is rushing towards East Blue at great speed. It was Kizaru who was on his way. An hour has passed since he set off from naval headquarters, and he is now almost arriving at Alabasta. El Yushu, you guys have to hold on. He murmured in a low voice, his face was full of seriousness, not at all like he was just messing around. Although my younger brother is sometimes annoying and sometimes very indebted, he is my younger brother after all. You can beat or scold yourself however you want, but if you are attacked by pirates. Kizaru's body accelerated again. Everyone thinks El Yushu will lose, but actually? East Blue. The Golden Lion is panting, his lamp has run out of oil. Jahahahahahahahaha. I didn't expect. I would die in Marine's hands. Even when death was imminent, he still looked very bold and unrestrained, as if he didn't care about death at all. Hey! Marine! You're great! Do you want to inherit everything from me? Jahahahahahahaha! <laughs> he opened his hands and laughed wildly. As the sun set, the golden sun shone on him, making him look like a lion in his twilight years. I leave everything to you. Golden Lion suddenly looked at El Yushu seriously. I don't know why, but he obviously hates Marine the most, but he can't hate this guy who defeated him. Instead, he admires him very much. That's why I came up with this idea. However, El Yushu just yawned. Hey? Who wants to inherit everything from you, pirate, don't think too highly of yourself. Gee ha 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 ha. After being rejected, Golden Lion was not angry. He grinned and said. That's such a pity. After saying that, his whole body fell downwards. Having been drained of more than half of his blood, 
and having just contended with the combat power of two admirals at the same time, he had already run out of oil. To be able to hold on and say what he just said was already an amazing feat of his will. You have experienced a great battle and seem to have some enlightenment. Conqueror's experience value is plus 1W, weapon color experience value is plus 8,888, and knowledge color experience value is plus 10,086. The sound of the system constantly refreshing the screen sounded. El Yushu raised his eyebrows. The experience provided by the battle was actually so good. Oh, I can become stronger just by lying down, so that's okay. As the user dies, the Golden Lion's power dissipates, and the islands all sink downwards. Fortunately, there is Fujitora under the control of gravity. All the Fallen Lion Head Islands are well placed near Caddy Island. Later, almost all the merchant ships passing by came here to check in and pay homage to the battle scene between Colonel El Yushu and the Big Pirate. Ah! Help! The pirate ship that was originally floating in the air quickly fell downwards. A shrill scream came from above. El Yushu ignored it. Let it fall. When he returned to Caddy Island, Cheered by all. As expected of Colonel El Yushu. Wu. You don't have to die. As expected of my idol. Thank you Mr. El Yushu for saving us. They cried and shouted, and their words were full of joy for the survivors. Robin hid in the crowd, quietly watching the figure who was cheered by everyone. If it were him, maybe he could protect me. She thought to herself. Wow. A golden light flashed in the sky, and Kizaru wearing a coat of justice appeared. He looked at him carefully up and down. Oh El Yushu you're not dead. He looked a little surprised, but he was actually using this expression to cover up his inner worries. It's impossible for me to die even if you die. Poor Asalano. El Yushu was not in a good mood. A battle has just ended and summoning Fujitora has consumed more than half of his mental energy. He is now a little dizzy. Where's the Golden Lion? Kizaru asked, subconsciously thinking that the Golden Lion had left. Oh, that old thing, is dead. El Yushu yawned and said, his words full of carelessness. Uh-huh. Kizaru was really surprised this time. He stared at El Yushu in disbelief with a serious expression. Real. Um. That's really amazing. He silently looked around Kadi Island. No wonder there were so many island wrecks and those lion-shaped islands. Is it Lion Majesty? Golden Lion's famous moves. Has El Yushu's strength reached this point? Although he is a great pirate, he is already old. What should he be afraid of? El Yushu said lightly. Um. Kizaru was noncommittal. Even so, he was not easily defeated. He waved his hand and said. Take a break. Remember to fish out Golden Lion's body and hide it for me. El Yushu whispered. Um. Kizaru glanced at him, and although he didn't know what El Yushu wanted to do, he still nodded. El Yushu left, he was going to have a good sleep. After the little brother left. Kizaru took out the phone bug. Blue brew 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 brew. Moses Moses, this is Sengoku. The phone was connected, and Sengoku's slightly urgent voice came from inside. Marshal Sengoku, that guy El Yushu killed the golden lion. Kizaru organized his words and began to report. What? Sengoku's disbelieving voice came from inside. At the same time, Thirty headquarters warships headed to East Blue in a mighty manner. Zephyr also received news from the headquarters. That guy El Yushu, actually. What's wrong? Teacher. El Yushu, is he okay? When the blue-haired, baby-faced Anne heard the news about the person she liked, she asked worriedly. After all, East Blue is where El Yushu is, and he is the one most likely to face off against Golden Lion. It's okay, how could something happen to that brat El Yushu? Zephyr took a look at his own cabbage, and then sighed. He was the one who killed the golden lion. And, eh. 
Then teacher, are we still going? Sadie came to them at some point and asked. Leave ten ships and return twenty ships. Zephyr said. The golden lion is dead, his floating sky island will definitely fall, and there will still be some remaining pirates. Ten headquarters warships are enough. Yeah, I'm going to meet El Yushu. Anne is very happy. Sadie was also very happy. She touched her butt silently and felt a little itchy there. In the past two days, countless new seagulls have flown from the World News Agency headquarters to all over the world. Morgans laughed loudly. Ha 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 ha. This is big news that shocks the world. So, the news of Golden Lion's death quickly swept the world. A war reporter captured the scene of El Yushu slaying the Golden Lion with his sword that day. New World, Ghost Island. A figure several meters tall is drinking. Boring wine. Gilu gilu gilu. Hiccup where's the wine? Here's another hundred barrels. He waved his mace and said. Report to Boss Kaido. There's big news. A pirate burst in excitedly with a newspaper in his hand. Ha! Huh. What's the big news? Kaido's face was a little tipsy. It looked like he was really drunk. He took the newspaper and read it. His eyes that were originally confused opened slightly. Hmm. Marine. Golden Lion. Uh ha ha ha. That old guy Shiki is dead. He was once a member of Rock's Pirate and died. Not only did he not feel sad, but he felt very happy. He waved his mace and shouted. Uh ha 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 ha. Kids. Let's have a party. Seems to be celebrating. Whitebeard Pirates, Moby Dick. Dad. Something big happened. Gula la 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 la, what happened? Marco, is so impatient. The six meter tall figure smiled and said, he is the four emperors Whitebeard who is now vaguely the strongest man in the world. There's Marine, killed the golden lion. Marco's expression was a little solemn. The presence of such a powerful guy in Marine was not a good thing for them. Gula la 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 la. Has that cheeky guy, finally left the stage. Whitebeard grinned, as if thinking of the figure who liked to laugh wildly in the sky. Then he sighed and said. We are all old. This era no longer belongs to old guys like them. What are you talking about, Dad? You will definitely live a long life. That's right. We will take care of you in your old age. Gu la 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 la. Seven hundred hearing his son's words, Whitebeard showed a smile, stood up slightly with his tall body. There's a party today. Oh. The pirates cheered. Red hair pirates. Hey, Captain. East Blue has a very powerful marine. The crew member smiled and said. I actually killed the golden lion. It's incredible. Beckman took a sip of wine and said. Ha 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 ha. Marine is really interesting. Let's meet him next time we go back. Shanks smiled and said. Hey, Captain, he is the Marine who killed the Golden Lion. Aren't you afraid that he will kill you too? The crew member raised his hand and said. Ha 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 ha. If he can do it, just come. Shanks laughed and didn't seem to care about this kind of thing at all. Naval headquarters, world government, pirates all over the world all know that Marine killed the legendary pirate. Ha 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 ha, the legendary pirate was actually killed by a mere Marine. That's right. This name was just blown away, ha 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 ha. If I were born in that era, maybe I could be one of the four emperors ha 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 ha. The attitude of the pirates is one of ridicule and emotion. Marine has a completely different attitude. Oh. As expected of Mr. El Yushu. When he was able to defeat Jun Vice Admiral, I thought he was awesome, but I didn't expect him to be so awesome. That's great. This time I should be able to destroy the pirates' arrogance. The Marines in the headquarters discussed one after another and were happy that such a powerful Marine appeared in their camp. Jun stationed in New World also received the newspaper. 
Her hand holding the handle of the knife couldn't help but exert a little force. He narrowed his eyes slightly, seeming to think of that lazy guy who always yawned. Are you already so powerful? I have to hurry up. Catching up with you. As Kizaru and ten warships from the headquarters were dealing with the follow-up of the Sky Pirates in various parts of East Blue. So El Yushu, who is the subject of much discussion around the world, has almost arrived at Shimatsuki village. At this time, on the marine warship, he looked at the fruit placed in front of him, an off-white cantaloupe, covered with mysterious lines. Um, this is lion fruit, right? El Yushu sighed with emotion. This fruit is amazing, it can control the island to fly into the sky at will, it can be used as a base or thrown down as a weapon. The power of an island can smash an idle person into a pulp, and it can also operate a ship and become a real flying ship. Its maneuverability is much higher than that of sailing on the sea. So who is this fruit for? Several figures flashed silently in his mind. Kuina. Hey? What's wrong? The girl sitting next to her making tea looked up and asked. She had just completed today's training, and her fair face was a little rosy. Do you want to eat it? This fruit. El Yushu looked at her quietly. Is that the one? Kuina tilted her head and pointed out. Well, it's the golden lion one. El Yushu nodded, acknowledging her suspicion. It's really amazing. Kuina took a sip of tea and sighed. Over the years, she has often seen El Yushu take out some devil fruit from nowhere, and the other person's excuse is always that he picked it up. Devil fruit is a secret treasure in the sea. If it is so easy to pick up, why can't I pick it up? But she is smart and never chooses to ask about this. After all, everyone has a little secret. Hmm. So you want to eat? El Yushu asked, this fruit is very powerful. After eating it, you can throw it on the island and play with it after a little training. Unexpectedly, this time the girl still shook her head firmly. No need, El Yushu. All right. Looking at her eyes, El Yushu knew that the girl was still loyal to the sword. Then give it to Tashiji. El Yushu said, this fruit is very powerful and has higher auxiliary functions. Having it is equivalent to having a super large air mobile base, so it is impossible for him to feed women who are not around him. And the one who fits the most is Tashiji, that stupid girl. Um. I'm tired. 47. Kuina stepped forward, El Yushu hugged her soft waist, the dog's nose was slightly close. The girl pushed gently with her hand, but did not push away. Wait a minute. I haven't showered yet. It doesn't matter, it's better this way. El Yushu said something incomprehensible. A rehabilitation movement passed quietly with music and singing. Afterwards, El Yushu came to the deck alone to enjoy the breeze. He opened the system panel to see what he had gained. System Level 76, 6430 10000 Attributes, Strength, 11,600, Constitution, 14,023, Agility, 15,236, Spirit, 1,280, Luck, 81. Current Abilities, Haki, Teijutsu, Marksmanship, Swordsmanship, Navigation, Ancient Languages, Medical Skills, Devil Fruit Ability, 60%, etc. Current Comprehension Level, S, Full. Special Skills, Divine Avoidance Mastered, Elbaf Spear 6%, Thunder 8 Trigram 7%, Powerful Kingdom 4%, Lion Thousand Slice Valley Mastered. He gained a lot from this battle. Not only did it allow him to more accurately understand his current power, but in this sea, as long as he did not risk his life to fight four emperors alone, or fight against twelve knights of God, he would be able to survive no matter what. There have also been quite a few changes in the system panel. Except for those special skills that automatically increase the progress of the damage, what surprised him was that he actually understood the Lion Thousand Slice Valley. 
sure enough, only by fighting can you understand faster. El Yushu murmured, and then couldn't help but feel a little happy. Comprehending the Lion Thousand Slice Valley is not just a simple move, but also adds a lot of experience to the swordsmanship, allowing him to have a deeper understanding of the way of the sword. In other words, he is now almost as good as the old swordsman. I just don't know if I can beat that guy Hawkeye. El Yushu narrowed his eyes slightly, and then looked at the other one. The Devil Fruit development level had increased to 60%. Yes, it only increased by 1%, but it made him feel that he could do more, just like someone the authority of this power is once again strengthened. I'll try it when I get back. He had a lot of ideas about fruit development, so he asked Pora Salino to bring the Golden Lion's body back to Logue Town. Reviewing the results of this battle, he yawned and returned to the room, hugging the kitten-like person and slowly fell asleep. Sleeping while on a business trip will get plus 333 damage value. The warship slowly sailed towards Shimatsuki village. At the same time, in Logue Town, Buggy pretends to be shopping on the street. He looked back at the black suit staring at him from a distance. He snorted coldly in his heart. What a bunch of hateful guys. Buggy looked up at the sky, whistling, and seemed to accidentally come to a vendor. This person is the target he has been watching for many days. He travels between Logue Town and other islands every day. Hey. Boss. I want to buy something. What does this customer, want to buy? We have a lot of wine here, and they are all good products from other places. Um, this, this, I want it. Buggy randomly ordered a few bottles of wine worth tens of thousands of baileys, then took out a large denomination note wrapped in something and gave it to the other party, waving his hand and saying. Keep the change, please. Okay, thank you guest. The boss put it into his arms without even looking at it. He quickly packed the drinks and smiled widely. This guest is so generous. Um. Buggy nodded, and then left here quickly, fearing that the man in the black suit behind would find any clues. Damn it, I, a great pirate, actually have to pay for drinking, damn El Yushu. Not long after Buggy left, the boss just pinched the banknotes, and then pinched something unusual. Hey? A small note. He spread it out to look at it. One night passed. The warship slowly docked at an island. El Yushu and Kuina, wearing justice coats, disembarked from the boat. A green algae-headed boy was wielding a sword not far away. During this time, he had been approved by Kojiro and was allowed to train with an edged sword. It's El Yushu and Kuina who are back. With a hint of excitement in his tone, he ran over quickly. El Yushu yawned as he just got off the boat. Before he could take a look at the changes on the island, he saw a green-headed young man running towards him out of the corner of his eye. Ah! El Yushu! I want to challenge you! He glared at the nominal senior brother in this sword hall and said. Well, come on! El Yushu yawned and then pulled out the wooden knife used by Kuina for training beside him. Damn you guy! You actually look down on me. The other party's casual demeanor and the use of wooden swords to fight against him deeply hurt Zoro. He gritted his teeth and said. You will pay the price. I can't get much in during this period. Well, come on. The green algae-headed boy slashed at him with a long knife. Call. The blade cut through a glint of cold light. El Yushu just used the wooden blade in his hand to point it somewhere in the air. Clang! Zoro felt the knife in his hand flying upward uncontrollably, but he quickly held it firmly with both hands. The huge force makes others flip over. Well, yes, the knife is there and the person is. El Yushu saw this scene and commented. It's 3263 to zero now, Zoro, you lost again. Kuina looked at him funnily. This guy is really persistent. Humph. Damn you. I will definitely catch up with you. Zoro's current target is no longer Kuina, but this man named El Yushu. 
Well El Yushu defeated the great swordsman not long ago? Zoro, you are still far behind. Kuina smiled. Oh, so what? The world's greatest swordsman must be mine. The green algae-headed boy clenched his fist and said indifferently. Then come on. El Yushu yawned and said. Let's go to the sword hall. The three of them walked towards the sword hall. Hey. Zoro. Where are you going? Hey. Aren't you going to the sword hall? You're going the wrong way. Oh. The red-faced boy came to the swordsmanship gym amid loud laughter from everyone. Master. It's the senior brother who is back. Elder brother is back. Master. Ha ha ha. Senior brother, please beat that idiot Zoro. He bullies us every day. That's right. The apprentices in the sword hall all knew him and greeted him one after another. Okay, okay. I have already taught you a lesson. El Yushu said with a smile, then raised his eyes slightly and looked at the gentleman wearing glasses sitting in the main seat. Shimatsuki Koshiro his former half-kendo master, came back. The middle-aged man smiled gently, as if he had been waiting for a long time. Well, I'm back. El Yushu said with a smile. Loke Town. Ah. Stop fighting. Ah. Buggy, who had a bruised nose and swollen face, was being held down by a large group of figures and beaten wildly. Among them, Makita was beaten the hardest. She also used her fruit power. Every time you step on it, the ground shakes. Stepping on and scolding at the same time. So it's you. Damn pirate. He was the buggy who made them run all the way from West Blue to the Grand Line without finding anything. Hey. Buggy the Clown. Are we, Mr. El Yushu, treating you badly? Bartolomeo picked his nose and looked like a social big brother. The tone is full of anger, this person actually wants to betray Xiu Tianren. If the businessman hadn't reported that he wanted to escape, he might have succeeded. Thinking of this, Bartolomeo couldn't help but feel a little proud. This pirate must have never imagined that almost every businessman who comes here admires Master El Yushu, right? After all, it was Master El Yushu who protected this place from pirates. Ah, ah. Don't slap me in the face. I was wrong. Buggy's pitiful screams kept ringing. Humph. Our Colonel El Yushu defeated the legendary Golden Lion. You actually want to betray him. Mishida, who was somewhat relieved after the beating, put her hands on her hips and said. Wah, what? Buggy's jaw dropped in shock. Did he hear it correctly? Golden Lion? Is that the golden lion that once forced them to narrowly escape death? That's right. That's the golden lion. Seeing the other person's shocked expression, Bartolomeo was very proud of his idol. Buggy stopped talking. He began to feel sad for the rest of his life. Could it be that, would he have to stay here for the rest of his life? At this moment, he began to miss the red hair very much. Woohoo! Shanks! Come to East Blue, your good brother Buggy is about to be beaten to death. El Yushu and Koshiro are in a quiet room. The two of them drank tea, but no one spoke. Awesome, you've already done a great job with the sword, Kouchu. Much better than me. Koshiro sighed. He started out as a guy who only half understood and didn't understand the essence of a swordsman but now he is a great swordsman who is famous throughout the sea and can kill legendary pirates with his sword. Well, you taught me well. No matter what the reason is. El Yushu felt that he should thank him. Whether it's Kendo teaching or Kuina, you are one of my father-in-laws. I said so. Then why did you suddenly come back to see me this time? Koshiro said, he didn't believe this guy would come here without any problem. Well, it's because of the revolutionary army. El Yushu said. Koshiro's eyes narrowed, and his breath suddenly became sharp. El Yushu finally reached an agreement with Koshiro. Nowadays, 
the BDK family all over the East Blue can help a little, including food, weapons, and other assistance. It is impossible to provide help, but they can be sold cheaply. Some things are still okay. And even if the world government discovers it later, he still has a reason to shirk the blame. There is no businessman who doesn't do business. The question is that the other party's bid is too high and he doesn't know who the buyer is. Moreover, the people in the world government can trade with pirates for profit. What happened if I accidentally sold something? El Yushiu stayed in Shimatsuki village for two days and accepted ten fights with Zoro. Although he won easily, he was so annoyed that he wanted to leave. So he said to Zoro, Hey! If you want to defeat me, how about joining Marine? That's right, he wants to invite this guy with the potential to be the world's best swordsman under his command. However, what El Yushiu didn't expect was that Zoro shook his head and refused without thinking. No, I want to challenge the powerful enemy on the sea. Marine is not my choice. His eyes were full of perseverance. Well. Then you can join the Hakka family to defeat the enemy. Doing tasks, bounties, etc. will be enough for you to experience in the early stage. El Yushiu touched his chin and explained what kind of organization this was. Sure enough, Zoro's eyes lit up after hearing this. Obviously, a career similar to that of a bounty hunter was more in line with his choice. Okay. I agree. Okay, let's do it one year later. El Yushiu made a one-year appointment. Good. Zoro nodded. Then I'll leave first. El Yushiu waved her hand and walked towards the warship that had docked. Kuina had just returned to her parents' home and wanted to stay with them for a few more days so she didn't follow them. Bailey was welcomed by many apprentices in the sword hall, and after meeting so many new playmates, he also said he would stay there for a few days. So he decided to go to Coco West Village to have a look. It's been a long time since he saw the lovely Nyaki Gao. The warship slowly sailed into the distance. El Yushiu lay leisurely on the beach chair. I just feel like something is missing. Kuina squeeze my legs. But the people of Quezi responded. Oh, not here. He suddenly felt a little empty in his heart, but when he thought of the lovely Nakajeo he would meet later. Well, that empty heart has been filled again, half. In a certain country in East Blue, the cotters of the Revolutionary Army gathered together again. Ivankov exclaimed, of Lees. It's amazing, this marine is so powerful. Well, that's true. Durag was a little emotional. He didn't expect that the other party had such strength. Then are we still in contact? No. Such a powerful marine, should not come into contact with us. He shook his head and said, the other party's stubborn demeanor is still impressive to this day. However, at this moment. Blue blue blue. The phone bug's voice rings. Ivankov clicks to connect. Moses Moses. The person on the other side of the phone began to speak slowly. What? He actually touched you. Ivankov stood up completely. Um. Durag looked over. That Marine, contacted Kojiro. Durag's pupil shrank. At the same time, somewhere in the waters of East Blue. A merchant ship was threatened by pirates. Ha 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 ha. We are so lucky. We met someone who was alone. A pirate said with a ferocious smile. Ha 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 ha. Kids. Let's hurry up. If those nasty marines find out, we'll be in trouble. The pirate captain raised his sword and shouted loudly. In the past year, thanks to someone, the warships of various marine branches have been going to sea very diligently. Their life was miserable, and now they finally found a prey, and they couldn't let it go. And beat up those black dogs who are enemies. A pirate whispered, Marine teamed up to beat the enemy, it was almost turning into a nightmare for the East Blue Pirates. Shut up. Get the boat to me quickly. The pirate captain's face darkened. 
the pirate ship with its skull flag fluttering in the wind followed closely behind the merchant ship. On small merchant ships and above. Two couples dressed as businessmen looked nervously at the pirate ship that was getting closer and closer. The woman looked desperate. What to do? Men are also helpless. It's over, we are dead, what will happen to my daughter? You. Kaya. The woman covered her face and cried. At this time, a warship was sailing leisurely on the sea. El Yushu was lying on the beach chair. Due to the existence of the awning, the sun couldn't shine down, but the temperature still made him feel drowsy. The sea breeze blew, and at this moment, the world seemed to be at peace. If you sleep while on a business trip, your damage value will be plus 150. Help! Who can save us? A very distant cry for help reached her ears, El Yushu opened her eyes. Looking into the distance, he saw a pirate ship chasing a small merchant ship more than ten nautical miles away. The pirate's voice also echoed in his ears. Ha 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 ha! Kill all the men! Keep the women! I want to have a great time tonight! My knife hasn't seen blood for a long time! El Yushu's eyes were slightly cold, and he stood up slowly. He said to the adjutant who was not far away. You drive in that direction! I'll come as soon as I go. Yes. Although the adjutant doesn't know why, he just obeys. After all, this is Master El Yushu's order. Whoosh! El Yushu's figure disappeared from the spot, and he turned into a streak of red and flew away at high speed into the distance. At the same time, the pirate ship was getting closer and closer to the merchant ship. Give up your resistance. Maybe I can still let you live. The pirate captain shouted loudly on the deck, he knew how to break through psychological defenses. Sure enough, as soon as these words came out, the sailors on the merchant ship began to flash their eyes and express hesitation. The businessman and his wife suddenly became anxious. I will give you ten times your salary. As long as you go back this time, there will be a bonus. Don't give up. After all. It was C.A. Ijin who moved people's hearts. As soon as these words came out, they were quickly appeased. The businessman and his wife breathed a sigh of relief, but then they were worried. The pirate ship opposite contains hundreds of ferocious guys. Can people like myself really survive? Hey! Since you want to die. Then don't blame us. The pirates laughed wildly until a shrill scream sounded. Ah! What is this? The words fell, and then there was no sound. Everyone looked back and saw a ball of blood appearing on the boat at some point. It sometimes changed into a tentacle, sometimes into a sword. Every time he passes through the body of a companion, the other party's hair will turn grey, his skin will age rapidly, and he will eventually turn into a mummy-like appearance. All the pirates could not help but feel a chill in their hearts. Run away! A pirate shouted loudly, and everyone ran away for their lives. But where can we escape in this vast sea? Ah! Help me! What the hell is this? Ah! Carrying despair and fear, the cold mummy was covered, and the dark pupils were wide open because they could not close their eyes. In just ten seconds, a pirate ship with hundreds of people was completely destroyed. Gilialu! He had just drained the blood of the entire pirate group and returned to 970 El Yushu, and then slowly condensed it into a blood-colored crystal. Well. I have one more deposit, which is good. El Yushu felt a little satisfied. The dregs on the sea were of some use. At least they could be turned into nourishment for him. Thinking about it this way, his righteous marine seems a bit evil. On the merchant ship not far away. Everyone looked at each other in shock when they heard the screams of the pirate ship. But since this small merchant ship was not as tall as the pirate ship, they really didn't know what happened for a while. Did someone come to save us? The woman asked with her red eyes open. Hmm. It seems like an unknown powerful person is passing by. I just don't know if he is hostile to us. There are always stories like this on the sea. 
Pirate ships rob merchant ships and then are destroyed by strong men passing by. I didn't expect to meet them today. The man looked around and saw no other ships except pirate ships and merchant ships. How did the other party suddenly find himself on the pirate ship? Today. A sound of footsteps came from above, and everyone began to look nervous. After all, someone who could easily destroy a pirate ship could also easily kill them all. A figure came to the deck, and everyone looked up. That tall and handsome figure, the coat of justice fluttering in the wind. Ah, it's Marine. You, survived. That's great, no need to die. I will never take this route again. Everyone cried with joy, and the joy of surviving overwhelmed everything. El Yushu jumped up and arrived on the deck of the merchant ship. Thank you very much, Master Marine. The man quickly stepped forward and got close to him. You, are you Colonel El Yushu? The woman seemed to recognize his identity and covered her mouth in disbelief. El Yushu scratched his cheek. Colonel El Yushu, my daughter Kayu really likes you. She said you are different from all Marines. There are pictures of you on the wall at home. The woman looked happy and started telling her story about her daughter. The sailors and handymen around looked at each other. Naturally, Colonel El Yushu and the others had heard of it. But this was the first time I saw him in person. Is he Colonel El Yushu? He's so handsome. As expected of a righteous Marine. Say your compliments as if they cost nothing. El Yushu looked at the woman in front of him who kept talking about his daughter with a dumbfounded expression. At the same time, a figure flashed in his mind, and he asked curiously. Um, where does your family live? Our family is in Zuluabia village. I came out this time to buy medicine for my daughter. The man opened his mouth and said. Oh. El Yushu nodded to express his understanding. Colonel El Yushu, can you write a signature for my daughter? She really likes you. The woman asked with a pleading tone. No problem at all. A young beauty is his fan. El Yushu is not even happy yet, so how can he refuse to give her an autograph? So he took out the paper and scribbled down. After signing autographs and chatting with the businessman and his wife for a while, the warship finally arrived belatedly. So, goodbye. El Yushu waved goodbye after stepping onto the warship. Goodbye Colonel El Yushu. The warship continues on its route to Coco West Village. Time comes to dusk, the sun sets. The warship finally arrived at its destination. El Yushu waved his hands to the adjutant behind him and said. You guys go first. Yes. The adjutant gave a military salute, and the warship slowly left. The tall man found a direction and started walking towards Coco West Village. He hasn't been here for a while so he stopped by to take a look. However, before taking two steps, I heard an explosion. Boom. Ah. Uh -huh. My leg was blown off. My hand. My hand. El Yushu looked up and saw two ferocious pirates not far away screaming loudly on the ground. Their broken legs and hands were bloody and bloody. The blue-haired girl not only did not feel scared when she saw this scene, but she looked proud. Well done. El Yushu said in his heart. Ah. It's El Yushu who's back. The blue-haired girl noticed the tall figure, and she blew a breath towards the two people who were screaming on the ground. Boom. Accompanied by another burst of explosions, the screams of the two men stopped. After bypassing the two pirate corpses, Nakajeo trotted over. She stopped in front of him, her upper body leaning forward slightly. El Yushu. You're here. There was a hint of excitement and happiness in the voice. Um. El Yushu squinted his eyes and saw that the girl wanted to hug him but didn't dare. That's all, men should take the initiative. The dog man took a step forward and hugged her. Nyaki's tall and soft body leaned forward. As the sun sets, the girl's red glow fills the sky. The two return to the orange grove. Are there pirates on your island? El Yushu asked casually. 
yeah, but Belmere and everyone else and I defeated them. The girl nodded, her face still a little flushed, obviously she hadn't come back from the state just now. Those two guys just now are the last. She added. Um. El Yushu nodded, then stared at her thoughtfully. This girl is quite talented. Has she developed her fruit ability to this extent? Seems a little embarrassed to be looked at. Um, I'm going to take a shower. After Nakajeo finished speaking, he slipped away without looking back. El Yushu shook his head and laughed, then slowly closed his eyes. He was a little sleepy. As night fell, the girl quietly opened the bathroom door and saw that the tall figure had closed his eyes and seemed to be asleep. When Yoki Jo breathed a sigh of relief, she couldn't help but feel a little regretful. Wrapped in a bathrobe, she came straight to his side. Looking at his handsome appearance, she murmured in a low voice. El Yushu, thank you. The girl recalled her experiences over the past year. When those nasty fishmen came here, if it weren't for him, Belmere would have been killed, right? It might be difficult for me and Nami to survive alone. And the other party made Nami become so powerful and brought back a devil fruit, which is worth 100 million belly. I don't know how many oranges he has to sell to reach it. Because of this man, my whole family has undergone tremendous changes. Thank you. El Yushu. She stared at the other person closely, and suddenly she had a different thought in her heart. Maybe, I could. A blush suddenly flashed across her face and her body seemed to feel slightly warm. The girl stepped forward gently, then leaned her little head over and pecked him gently on the face. A dragonfly comes back like a drop of water. But even like this, her whole face turned red with embarrassment. Ah! She, who usually has a bold personality, feels like a completely different person at this moment. Um! Awakened by the girl's initiative, El Yushu opened her eyes slightly. Um, are you awake? Nakajeo immediately looked away, as if he had done nothing just now. El Yushu looked at her funny. What did you just do? No. It's nothing, you, what are you thinking, ah? Before she could finish speaking, her whole body was pulled in front of her. The girl's soft body struggled slightly, and she said in a trembling voice. I, I'm not wearing anything underneath. Seems to be afraid. Oh. Then, that Belmere won't come back today. It seems to be some kind of hint. The two finally took the last step. The next morning. The person in El Yushu's arms hugged his neck. What's wrong? That, don't tell Nami. Nyoki Jo blushed and said. I remembered Nami's special phone call not long ago to warn me. Pfft. Okay. El Yushu pinched her face in a funny way. Hey hey. The girl giggled, lowered her head and kissed him. El Yushu spent two days in Coco West Village. She spent these two days very relaxed. She picked oranges with no Kijao, cooked together, and experienced explosive art with her in the woods. The warship that finally came to pick him up slowly docked. El Yushu. Don't tell Nami. Nyaki warned loudly. I know, I know. So the warship slowly left under the girl's reluctant eyes. Time passed again for half a day. When El Yushu returned to Logue Town. Through Bartolomeo and others who came to welcome him back. He also heard about Buggy's escape. I couldn't help but smile little sample. The whole Logue town belongs to me, you still want to run away? Conqueror's luck buggy is his secret treasure, how can he let the other party leave so easily? But it's not good to keep him locked up like this. Let's take him out for a walk some other time. El Yushu thought about it, thinking that with his luck and buggy's luck, he should be able to receive a lot of goods, right? Hey! Isn't this a busy man? He's back. When he walked into the office, Nami's dissatisfied voice sounded. Thank you for your hard work, I brought you oranges. El Yushu took out a large bag of oranges from the orange garden from behind. Humph! 
you have some conscience. Nami rolled her eyes. Then he came forward and hugged him. Let me suck it. It looked like they were hugging, but in fact they kept sniffing, trying to see if the other person was looking for another woman. It's a pity that El Yushu had already eliminated the smell before coming back. How could the other party find out the clues? Okay. I still have things to do. El Yushu rubbed the other person's little head and said. Oh. Nami reluctantly took back her hand, and then suddenly took a bite. You didn't do anything with Nakajeo, did you? No. How is it possible, he is your sister? El Yushu responded with a smile. Demo, I knew you would ask this. Oh. Seeing that she didn't find any clues, Nami wrinkled her little nose. She always felt that something was going on, but she couldn't find any evidence for a while, so she waved her hands and said. Okay, okay, go ahead. So El Yushu came to a claustrophobic room. In front of him was a corpse with blonde hair, a rudder on his head, and two famous knives on his feet. That's right, it's the body of the golden lion. Looking at this scene, instead of feeling scared, he was eager to try. Let me see, how far I can go. El Yushu muttered that he was going to start testing some of his conjectures. Then a ball of blood wrapped around it and slowly sank into the opponent's body. Meanwhile, Marie Joyce, somewhere in a huge room in world government. Five figures gathered together again. Ha what did I say? Isn't that Marine simple? The figure holding a knife in his hand, wearing glasses and a monk's robe smiled and said. Hmm, actually defeated that golden lion. The figure with blonde hair and a suit is thoughtful. What's important now is not this. Just the remnants of the old era will die when they die. What's important now is that devil fruit. The old man with white hair and a long white beard said. Well, that fruit must be found, if it is eaten by some daring people, it will be in trouble. The other five elders agreed one after another. Apparently they also thought of the Revolutionary Army and others who had made a lot of noise recently. If you get caught by those guys, you might end up losing an island to Marie Joyce one day. By the way, that Marine named El Yushu has a faction under his command called the Beat the Enemy Family. The old man wearing a dark green suit, bald, with a splayed beard, and a Madara birthmark on his forehead said. I investigated that organization. It's similar to a fan support group, it does the job of a bounty hunter, it was established spontaneously by one of his subordinates. The blonde man said. Well, that's nothing to worry about. But to be on the safe side, I'd better send an agent to go in and take a look. The man in robes said. Let's take it from the CP9 who went to seize the Pluton blueprint this time. I heard that the man named El Yushu likes women. It just so happens that there are pretty women in this batch of CP9. Well, seconded. The other four people all agreed. What El Yushu, who is far away in Logue Town, doesn't know is that the world government is sending a beautiful agent to find him. At this time, he was satisfied with his masterpiece. He succeeded. The experiment was a perfect success. I saw a figure standing up slowly on the opposite side. The standing figure has ground-length golden hair, like a lion's mane, and his legs have completely grown out after being transformed by blood crystals. Sakura holds ten and dead wood in her hands, the rudder on her head is missing, and her thick golden hair covers the original Mediterranean. Now he looks like a younger version of Golden Lion, his whole person is full of coldness and solemnity. But his eyes were dull and he could only follow instructions and act. Like a puppet that only follows instructions. El Yushu muttered, and at the same time he was wondering if he should kill Moria and seize his shadow fruit to inject consciousness into the golden lion? Or cooperate with the other party? I just don't know who the puppets listen to when they cooperate. But it's not bad. Even though I don't have much consciousness, it should be easy to fight a pirate like Shishibukai. A smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. After the vampire fruit was developed to 60%, it would cover the dead person with enough blood. 
it can resurrect the opponent, and possesses the skills and experience of his lifetime. In other words, the current Golden Lion has perfectly inherited the experience of the Great Swordsman in his lifetime, and the opponent can completely cut the sea with one sword. With blood crystals as the energy source for recovery, the stronger the person, the more blood crystals they consume. Just like the Golden Lion in front of Su Sing, it consumed a hundred blood crystals, nearly a quarter of his inventory, and was a huge expense. For example, a blood crystal requires the coagulation of the whole body blood of a hundred pirates. In other words, the resuscitation Golden Lion consumes ten thousand pirates. After resuscitation, even if the opponent's body is damaged, it can be restored by sucking blood. At the same time, he had a vague feeling that he could consume more blood crystals to increase the opponent's physical strength. Hiss, a big fortune maker. Fortunately, there are not many other things in this world, but there are many pirates. L. Yu Xiu yawned. Anyway, pirates are like leeks. They cut one crop after another. From now on, your name will be Jin. The figure leaned forward slightly as a response, looking quite conscious. But only El Yushio knew that this was just the body's instinctive reaction, and more exercise was needed. It seems we have to hurry up. As his reputation became more and more widespread, until he was known to the entire sea a few days ago, El Yushio was actually a little worried. He was completely exposed, and his every move in the future would be noticed by those people. The shackles of fame and camp prevent him from letting go of many things, unless he directly gives up everything now to go against the world government and become a pirate or revolutionary army. This is not what he wants. So El Yushiu plans to create a secret force. Just call me Akatsuki. The break of dawn breaks through the darkness that shrouds the world. He plans to recruit various powerful people in the sea, such as Fujitora who is still living outside, such as the Empress, such as Moria, etc., after his Akatsuki organization is strong enough. What? Waiting for that bullshit liberation drum? Laozi stepped forward and directly joined the world government. Bang bang! There was a knock on the door, and Tashiji's voice came from outside the door. Colonel El Yushu? Are you looking for me? D. El Yushu let the blonde figure retreat and hide. Come in. As soon as he finished speaking, a blue-haired figure wearing glasses walked in. The light in the quiet room seemed a little dim. After Tashiji closed the door, he looked at the tall and handsome figure opposite and felt a little nervous for a moment. And the fair face is inexplicably red. El Yu, Colonel El Yushu didn't call me to a place like this, because he wanted to, want to. The more she thought about it, the more she blushed hugging her sword slightly. How should I cooperate with him later? Should I obey or not? Some strange thoughts kept popping up in her heart, which startled her. Come here, why are you standing there? El Yushu's voice sounded. The girl came over excitedly. Yes. The two of them sat opposite each other. In the dim light, due to being too nervous, there was thick sweat on Tashiji's cute nose under his glasses. What should I do? What does he want to do? Just when the girl was thinking wildly, El Yushiu placed a grey-grey devil fruit on the table. This fruit is called lion fruit. Eat it. Tashiji was stunned. She didn't expect that he was eating devil fruit for herself. She jumped up. Eh eh eh. For, for me. A voice of disbelief sounded. She pointed at herself and looked at El Yushu. Her tone contained complex emotions such as shock, expectation, fear, etc. Well, that's right, it's just for you. El Yushu nodded again and looked at her funny. Eh, eh, eh. Seeing the reaction of the girl with blue hair and glasses, El Yushu showed a smile. Yes. It is this kind of little fool who will always be loyal to him. Moreover, the other party's talent is quite good and he will become a reliable helper in the future. Eat it, this is the one from the legendary pirate. Tashiji thought for a while, then bowed deeply. 
Thank you very much. She naturally knew that this was the powerful fruit eaten by the golden lion. The picture in the newspaper of the opponent casually throwing the island had a deep impact on her, and she also longed for strong strength in her heart. Now that the opportunity was in front of her, her heart was filled with shock and emotion. Tashiji decided to obey the other party's instructions from now on, and she would do whatever she was asked to do. Tashiji grabbed the fruit and ate it in one bite. The next morning, El Yushiu was basking in the sun. If you catch fish and bask in the sun while at work, the damage value will be plus 50. Yesterday he took her to adapt to the ability after a night, and she was a little tired. Blue 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 blue. The phone bug's voice rings. Moses Moses. El Yushiu answered the phone. Hey El Yushiu. We are going to Logue Town. Come pick us up. Anne's energetic voice came from inside, and El Yushiu was slightly hooked when he heard it. Hmm. Okay, I'll pick you up right now. He yawned and said. Damn, I'm so sleepy. Then he got up and walked leisurely towards the port. The warship from the headquarters slowly docked. Anne, who was walking with long legs, walked down first. After seeing El Yushiu's figure, she trotted forward and pounced. Just hug him. I miss you so much. El Yushiu. The girl squinted her eyes like a kitten and said coquettishly. Hmm. I miss you too, Anne. His fingertips ran through the other person's smooth hair, and Zephyr released his hand behind him with an expression that was about to burst into flames. Ha 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 ha. Long time no see, Teacher Zephyr. Zephyr's face was a little stiff when his baby cabbage was served in front of his face, and then he slowly said. You are really getting more and more powerful, you actually killed a big pirate like Golden Lion. Obviously he has experienced the power of the Golden Lion at its peak. It can be said that after the death of rocks in the Valley of the Gods, Golden Lion, Whitebeard and Roger were the ones who stood at the peak. It hurts that he's old. I'm lucky. El Yushiu didn't explain too much. The more he explained, the more troublesome he would be. Come on, Master Zephyr, let's go have a drink. He let go of the girl and hooked up with the purple-haired figure. So under the dissatisfied eyes of Anne and Sadie, the two slowly left. I'm telling you, Teacher Zephyr, the wine here is the best in Logue Town. The two came to a tavern and El Yushiu pointed to the wine aisle here. Regardless of whether it was Armament Haki who taught him from the shallower to the deeper level last time, or whether he fell in love with his two students, he should call each other teacher because of emotions and reasons. Well. I guess you have a heart. Zephyr sat down leisurely, with a hint of joy on his face. Many marines are proud of you now. They say that you are in East Blue just to prevent big pirates like Golden Lion. Zephyr spoke about the rumors that were getting more and more outrageous recently in Marine Ford. El Yushiu's mouth twitched after hearing this. He said how a Marine recently called him a Marine hero. It turned out to be this. They also said that after you solve the major problem of East Blue, you will soon go to work in the headquarters, and then you will directly start as an Admiral candidate. When an admiral is promoted or retires, you will be the new admiral. Zephyr has a hint of emotion like the waves behind the Yangtze River pushing the waves ahead. El Yushiu listened quietly. He probably knew who spread the rumor. Okay, old enemy Marshal Sengoku. Ha Sample, do you think I will give in like this? I don't. Well, ignore these people and drink. Ha 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 cheers. The two started drinking happily. After three rounds of drinking, the blushing Zephyr spoke again. We salvaged a lot of things in East Blue this time. Ten mysterious plants that can make wild beasts go berserk should be the biological weapons they raise at Golden Lion. Speaking of this, a trace of fear flashed across Zephyr's face. He could already imagine how much death and injury the opponent would cause after releasing those violent beasts into various towns. We feel relieved to have you in charge of East Blue. Zephyr said. After drinking, Zephyr fell directly to sleep. 
he was already exhausted from the past few days of work, so he just took advantage of the wine to rest. El Yushiu began to return to Logue Town Marine Base. When he returned to the base, there was a quarrel in the office. Hey! El Yushiu is mine! You short girl with yellow hair! Anne's voice sounded, sounding full of anger. Oh, I've been with El Yushiu for a long time. He won't like a long-legged guy like you. Nami's voice sounded, but her words were a bit bluffing. Oh, by the way, let me introduce myself. I am El Yushiu's personal secretary. If you have anything to do, the secretary will do it. If there is nothing else. Her expression was full of provocation, and Anne was so angry that he wanted to step forward and beat her. Ah! Sadie, don't stop me, I want to duel with this guy. Sadie, who was holding Anne's waist behind her, looked helpless. I didn't even try hard. If you want to rush out, I can't stop you. Bang! The door opened and El Yushiu's figure walked in. He had a headache looking at this scene. Why are you arguing? Hearing the dog man's voice, the blue-haired figure immediately stood up straight. No? What the hell? We were just having a friendly exchange. Asking for flowers. Anne's face changed at the speed of light, her expression was full of tenderness, as if she was not the one who had just quarreled. Nami looked at this scene and shook his fist. Hiss this woman, is a powerful enemy. Well. I'll go to bed if it's okay. El Yushiu yawned and said, he silently gave Nami a look that meant stop quarreling. Nami pretended not to see it, she raised her head and hummed softly. This guy brought two more women back. It's so abominable. Clang. The office door is closed. After he left, Anne and Nami looked at each other silently and looked away at the same time. Let's go, Sadie, let's not argue with this guy. Anne grabbed the little sister and left. In fact, I was thinking. El Yushiu went to bed? Then can I? Um. Sadie followed obediently. Nami looked at the two of them walking away with a thoughtful look in her eyes. She decided to go out for some fresh air, ahem. Anne and the two quietly followed El Yushiu to a room. Bang! The door was slowly closed, and the two of them were startled. You, what do you want to do? Anne looked at the tall figure and stammered. Hey? Aren't you following me secretly? Are you asking me what I want to do? An evil smile appeared at the corner of El Yushiu's mouth. He smiled evilly and stepped forward. Asterisk hum hum. Ah! The blue-haired girl wanted to run away, but she was hugged and her lips were blocked. Such a hard-to-get attitude, and she refused to welcome him. After a while, the girl's eyes were blurry and she ran away in embarrassment with a red face. El Yushiu smiled slightly very satisfied with this drunken snack. Then he looked at Sadie, who had been standing there just now. What do you want to do? The introverted Sadie did not speak. She pointed at a round place behind her. El Yushiu understood instantly, so there was some strange sound in the room. Nami listened outside the door for a while, then left with a blush on her face. Damn El Yushiu, go to hell. Woohoo why haven't I grown up yet? Zephyr and others did not stay long, they left the next day. El Yushiu didn't go to see him off, he just sat in the office and looked at the ships going away. El Yushiu. Nami's emotionless voice sounded. Um. Come here. The little secretary is very strong today and seems to have something to say. Oh. El Yushiu knew he was in the wrong, so he walked over obediently. The girl strolled forward and pressed close to him. She spoke with a hint of inquiry. Is it okay if I want to go to see? Well, okay, where do you want to go? El Yushiu said, he thought the other party was interested in something from a certain sea area nearby. In this case, he would approve the fake. After all, one cannot stay in Logue Town forever. I want to go to the Grand Line. As she said this, 
Nami's eyes flashed with hope. She heard that there were a lot of weird and dangerous weather there, and she had long wanted to take a look. But she had just moved to Logue Town and needed her help with many things, so she had been suppressing this request. But things are different now. Many things have slowly gotten on track, and many things no longer require her to do it herself. El Yushu was speechless. He suddenly felt a little ashamed. Only then did I realize that I didn't seem to have taken her to the Grand Line. Okay. He readily agreed and at the same time planned his destination in his mind. What Sky Island? Sky Island? Sky Island? He has never been to that place. Nami will like it very much, right? And that fruit? It is known as one of the most invincible fruits. With his luck value of up to 80, how can he harvest it? Finally, let's stop by Moria to have a look. If you join him, it's okay. If you don't, then just kill him. Great. The girl who got the promise narrowed her eyes happily. Then I was a little worried about what to do with the file processing at the base during my absence. So she asked. This, just keep it, it's just some documents, I'll deal with the same thing when I get back. El Yushio showed a capitalist smile, I can take you out to play, but you can't live less, dear. You hateful guy. She was so angry that she took a hard bite of his flesh. Two days passed and Kuina finally came back. With her is the little Tanuki Bailey, who has been getting carried away playing in Shimatsuki village these days. El Yushu. I'm back. Bailey jumped directly onto his shoulder and rubbed his face. Well, welcome back. El Yushu touched the other person's furry head, then looked up at the blue-haired figure. And Kuina, welcome back. Um. Kuina looked at this scene with a smile. The two of them returned to Logue Town Marine Base, and El Yushu called everyone to start a meeting. After Nami, Tashiji, Kuina, and others gathered together, El Yushu said. We are about to go to the Grand Line, Kuina, please stay at the base. The blue-haired girl nodded slightly in agreement without much surprise. El Yushu had ventilated with her before coming. Tashiji said in surprise. Should I go too? Yes, because you are exercising your abilities. El Yushu spoke again and asked who ate the lion fruit. Nami looked at Tashiji with envy after hearing this. That's awesome. Tashiji, you can fly. Although she can turn into flames and fly, it takes a lot of energy to do so. As for those with lion fruit abilities, they can fly. It should be regarded as an instinctive passive skill, right? Hey. Tashiji, how far can you go now? Can you make this island fly? Isn't that a floating sky island? Just like the legendary sky island. Everyone's eyes are focused. Tashiji blushed and lowered his head, a little embarrassed and said. Well, I, I can only make a hill fly now. That's pretty awesome. Nami said with emotion that this kind of power can be achieved just after development. You know. A small mountain can easily overturn a pirate ship. El Yushu continued to explain. This fruit cannot appear in front of the world yet, or else the guys from the world government will come to your door. Golden Lion has carried this fruit forward. Who doesn't want to fly every day? The base is extremely secretive and unstable, or who doesn't want to just throw it on an island? The group of hyenas from the world government will definitely search for this island all over the world, and the improvement of abilities requires hard work. If Tashiji continues to improve, he will inevitably make a lot of noise, and it will be troublesome if he is discovered by some interested people. So I need this kind of trip, and take Nami to the small sky island by the way. I believe the other party will be very interested. As for why not tell her now? Of course. I will give her a little surprise of 907. As for the safety of Logue Town, he is not that worried. After all, the top experts from the Hakka family are here, and Kuina, the swordsman, is here. You can easily defeat ordinary pirates you encounter. If there is a powerful pirate that they cannot defeat, 
then the blood puppet golden lion hidden in the base will wake up. The order he gave before leaving is, take action when the island encounters a major crisis. Yet. Yeah. Travel. Staying in one place for too long can get annoying. Nami usually doesn't say it out loud, but now she was smiling happily. Tashiji also began to look forward to this trip. Well, let's all take a rest and set off in the evening. Nana. El Yushu. How do we get to the Grand Line? Take a warship. Nami raised her hands and said. Uh-huh, well, it's a secret. El Yushu chuckled and said. Shout. If you don't say it, don't say it. I'm so nagging. Nami turned away and pretended not to care, but her eyes kept rolling around. Seeing how mysterious El Yushu is, even Tashiji is intrigued and she is full of expectations. Time soon came tonight. Everyone gathered together again. Aren't we going to the port yet? Nami raised her hands again and said. Well, this transportation is a bit special. El Yushu smiled and said. Then he touched Bailey's little head next to him and took out a deformed leaf. Boom! The smoke dissipated, and a tall figure appeared in front of him. Wow! Who is he? He looks so tall. He was so tall that everyone could only look up at him. The figure summoned this time was the future Shishibukai, Bartholomew Big Bear. The bear is burly and wears a trapezoidal white hat with scattered brown Madara dots on the hat. There are two bear ears on the hat, rimless glasses, and black terry hair. He looks a bit naive and a little harmless, but his tall figure makes people dare not underestimate him. If you want to travel, where would you like to go? It's an old line when Xiang opens his mouth. Well, he is a gentle person. El Yushu just said, and then said to him. Send us to Sky Island. Three dollars. The bear smiled softly, then took off the gloves he was wearing, revealing the fleshy pads like bear paws. Don't be afraid, everyone. El Yushu smiled and said, the next moment the bear's paw came down, Tashiji's figure disappeared. Whoosh! Eh? It's so amazing! It disappeared in a flash. Nami was shocked when she saw this scene. What followed was excitement. She had never heard of this way of traveling. So the bear silently patted Nami, whoosh! Finally it was El Yushu and Bailey's turn. E.R. El Yushu looked at this man whose life was full of misery. When he was a child, he was trapped in the Valley of the Gods and hunted by celestial dragons. He finally escaped and grew up with his childhood sweetheart Ginny. After a while, Ginny was kidnapped by the celestial dragons again. Later, after getting tired of being played by the celestial dragons, Ginny became seriously ill and gave birth to a child named Pony. He raised Pony, who was also sick, by himself. In order to treat Pony's terminal illness, Xiang traveled around the world alone, but couldn't find any way. Finally, he accepted the transformation of Vegapunk and lost consciousness in exchange for Pony's healthy growth. Maybe, he can save it later? Apart from anything else, Pony's terminal illness is not a problem in his opinion. He can just change the blood. What a big deal! Call! The huge bear paw was photographed, and El Yushu disappeared. Whoosh! Several bear-like rays of light intertwined together at extremely fast speeds, and instantly passed over the flying new seagull, causing it to quack in surprise. Nami's excited voice came. Ha 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 ha! This trip is really great! El Yushu was lying leisurely. The air in the bear's paws had a softness similar to clouds, and it blocked the strong wind caused by high-speed movement, making people very comfortable and drowsy. I'll take a nap first. He yawned and said. It may be a bit long, about two days, you'd better take a rest. After saying that, he closed his eyes. If you skip work and travel during work, your bad value will be plus 666. But everyone ignored his words. Nami was still chattering and discussing. 
Tashiji opened his eyes and looked at the sea floating below. Bailey was also half lying and looking down. Both of them were very excited and had no intention of sleeping. Everyone went through the weird grand line weather including violent storms, ice and snow, and clear skies. Nami felt this kind of natural weather for the first time in the past two days. The light from the bear's paw quickly broke through the altitude of 10,000 meters and reached the Bibai Sea. Eh, eh? Is this Sky Island? Nami looked at the white sea in front of him in surprise. Where is the island? Why can't he see it? No. There is still some distance. Lying in the bear's paw, El Yushu's lazy voice sounded. Oh oh. Nami nodded. Whoosh. The bear paw continued to fly upwards, passing through thousands of meters of white ocean. Finally, less than two minutes later, we finally arrived at our destination. Sky Island. The huge bear paw hit the ground, making a huge paw print. Everyone's figures were revealed, and then, they gasped for air. El Yushu had a strong body and adjusted quickly, but Nami, Tashiji and Bailey suffered. They only felt that the oxygen in the air was extremely thin. Ouch, I can't breathe. Nami said with a sad face, her fair face looked red due to lack of oxygen. Ha 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 ha. El Yushu looked at her with gloating, and Nami was so angry that she secretly swore that she would bite him to death after she recovered. Fortunately, they are all trained people. After a period of time, they finally adapted to this environment. Nami stood up and felt a little weak. Is this Sky Island? It's really great. Nami was a little happy. She looked at the floating white islands in the distance, with strange shaped houses on them. Eh? Is that a forest over there? So there is land on Sky Island too. Nami discovered Hwadayan. She pointed to the island in the distance that looked like an ancient forest. Well, our destination is that island. El Yushu squinted his eyes, glanced at the site, and saw a certain figure hidden among them. Oh oh. Nami nodded to show that he knew, so the three of them started walking towards that side. At the same time, somewhere in the center of the Island of Gods, Enel was lying on his side and eating fruit carelessly. Suddenly, he seemed to sense something. Hey? Someone wants to challenge God's reputation. The corners of Enel's mouth were slightly raised, showing an interested smile. Since he came here a year ago and ruled here, no one has dared to set foot on this island for a long time. His body flashed turned into thunder and disappeared. Enel wants to see who is trying to challenge him. Nami and others were walking in the forest. Wow, there are so tall trees here. It feels like I came here hundreds of years ago. Tashiji muttered that in addition to studying kendo books, she also likes to read some miscellaneous books, so she probably knows something about each island. As far as she knew, these trees didn't look like they would have appeared in this era. They were too tall and too big. So amazing. Bailey opened his big eyes and looked left and right. Well, well. I know. El Yushu spoke. Eh? Then you can tell me. Nami smiled and came to his side and said. El Yushu explained. Here, it is called God's Island by the people of Sky Island, which means the island where God lives. It is also called Sacred Area by the Aborigines. In fact, it is a land that was washed up on Sky Island by the soaring sea currents in 400 years. Part of Asia Island. Eh? Soaring sea currents? Is there really such a thing in this world? Nami asked with white eyes. She was a little surprised. She had heard of the huge sea currents, but she always thought it was just a legend. Well and it is very powerful. If it is accumulated under the island, it is likely to make the island soar into the sky. El Yushu explained that originally he was going to continue telling the story about the great talker Rolando. But a figure has appeared on the treetop not far away. Hey! You sinners who trespass on the forbidden land of the gods! A voice came from above. Everyone looked up. What? 
This is your territory. Do you have any evidence? Bailey put his hands on his hips and said. You Qinghai people, you really don't understand the rules. A sneer appeared at the corner of Enel's mouth. He looked at these ignorant guys. Oh, so? What do you want? El Yushu yawned and said. Humph. Those who trespass into God's forbidden land, die. Seeing that those people not only didn't feel scared, but even laughed at him, Enel leaned forward slightly and laughed evilly. God's sanction. He fired a bolt of lightning from his hand and shot it into the sky. Then it fell suddenly. Boom! Huge thunder pillars fell from the sky. Fire punch! Nami remember the fire fist rising into the sky. Boom! The pillars with flashing lightning collided with the fierce flames, and for a moment they were even the same. Oh! Seeing that his divine sanction was actually blocked by a little girl, Enel's eyes flashed with a hint of haze. Hey! People from Qinghai! Is she the one you dare to fight against the power of the gods? Um, yeah, what's wrong? El Yushu yawned and said. That human! This god has recognized your power. How about you come with me? Be my god-tier officer, and we will rule Sky Island together. When Enel heard this answer, he actually reached out and invited Nami to join him. Maybe he thought that if the other party could use the same power of Logia as him, he would be qualified to be his subordinate. Oh, I don't want it. Nami slightly held El Yushu's arm to declare her sovereignty, and then made a face and said. But even if we kill you, you can still be the ruler here. She smiled disdainfully, then turned into flames and rushed towards him. Fire Dragon Bullet Countless giant fireballs enveloped the figure. Snort? Enel snorted coldly, he didn't expect this guy to be so ignorant. Forget it, if you don't obey, just die. He gave a ferocious laugh and summoned thunder. Thirty million volts, thunderbirds. The huge thunderbird roared and flew towards the flaming bomb. Boom! Huge explosions kept coming and the surrounding tall trees were immediately affected. The sound of the battle quickly attracted the attention of the Sky Icelanders and Sandians. What happened over there? Is anyone at war with that Enel again? But who is it? No one knew it, because both of them were severely defeated by that incomparably powerful guy, and many people died because of it. Chief, could he be a pirate from Qinghai? A Sandia warrior asked, at this time, Neither side dared to trouble that guy, but sometimes pirates from Qinghai would break into that place without permission. Hmm. I don't know, but to be able to fight that person to this extent, he is obviously not a weakling. The old man who was called the chief frowned slightly. He thought silently, then spoke again. Let's go take a look. 3.2 But the chief, many of our soldiers are still recovering from injuries. The soldier was a little surprised. This may be the best chance to defeat the opponent. The old man opened his eyes slightly and sighed inwardly. The war between the Sandians and the Sky Icelanders had resulted in many casualties. A year ago, another self-proclaimed god, Enel, came and directly suppressed both sides and unified Sky Island. There, it's obviously our hometown. Rumble. The battle in the forest continued. The power of flames and thunder and lightning continued to collide, and many trees were directly burned and destroyed. Hu! El Yushu I have no energy left. The flame turned into a human form, Nami snuggled in front of him and said with a hint of dependence. Ha! As expected, your strength is not as good as mine. Enel's voice had a hint of pride, but it could be seen from his sweaty forehead that he had spent a lot of money. Xiu twitched the corner of his mouth. Hey hey! Do you want something like this? My Nami is only a teenager. Ha 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 ha! You shall die! Seeing that the balance of victory was tilted to his side, Enel began to feel proud. Well, forget it. El Yushu yawned, then stepped forward, and a small pit appeared on the ground. 
The impact brought him to the side of Enel in an instant. It. Enel's pupils shrank and he turned into lightning and flashed away. But El Yushu was faster than him, and a dark hand glowing with red light grew bigger and bigger in his eyes. To outsiders, it looked like. El Yushu suddenly appeared next to him, then grabbed his head and pushed it to the ground. Boom! The earth shook in an instant. The whole island trembled loudly. The Sandians and Sky Icelanders who came over happened to see the scene. Their eyes were wide and dull. Call. The smoke dispersed and two figures emerged. The fainted figure smashed a large crater of more than ten meters into the ground, and all the surrounding trees were destroyed. But everyone, even the Sandians who regarded this place as a holy land did not dare to say a word. It's really, too strong. One blow. Just one blow to defeat that Enel. But this guy who claimed to be a god before was able to easily destroy them. It was so outrageous that everyone was in disbelief and ridiculous for a moment. Awesome. As expected of El Yushu. Nami's cheers rang out. The hateful guy who couldn't be hit no matter how hard he hit was knocked over by El Yushu. It was so relieved. Um. El Yushu narrowed her eyes. Is this guy too weak? Did you just put his heart into cardiac arrest? Will it recover later? Thinking so. Zizi. There was a sound of electricity coming from Enel's body. Thump thump thump. That is the sound of an erect heart. The passive skill of the thunder fruit user, electrotherapy, which will be used automatically even if the heart has stopped to revive the user. Thump 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 thump. The heart beats faster and faster, and finally returns to the normal heart rate. Enel opened his eyes. He looked at the figure with his back to him, a coldness flashed in his eyes. Damn this guy, he actually did this to this god. Let you see the consequences of provoking Kamui's name. Enel stretched out his flashing lightning hand, this time he used the highest volt lightning. Careful. When the chief of Sandia saw this scene, he couldn't help shouting nervously. He didn't understand why Nami and others didn't warn him when they saw it. Aren't they companions? The next moment, he knew why. El Yushu just tilted his head slightly. Glancing at Enel casually. Then the dark palm directly pinched the opponent's hand containing lightning. Zizi. The sound of red lightning colliding with blue thunder sounded. How is it possible? Why do you also have the power of God? Enel's pupils widened, why did this guy make a red flash rain? This, it's called conquerors. Eleven El Yushu said lightly, then squeezed slightly. Ah! <laughs> Enel's painful howl sounded, and his nose and tears flowed out. Let go. Let go. You guy. He doesn't understand, shouldn't he be invulnerable if he turns into lightning? Why can this guy touch himself? Call. El Yushu pulled him in front of him, then gave him a hard knee. Boom. Vomit. Enel felt like his whole body had lost his breath, so he fell into a coma again without any fuss. Click. This time El Yushu didn't give him a chance to recover, and simply crushed his throat bone. Enel, who had been able to dominate here for several years, died immediately. You use Haki to cleanly and neatly deal with the Logia ability user, you seem to have some enlightenment, and the weapon color experience value will be plus 4000. So, great. People from Sandia and people from Sky Island cried with joy. That nasty guy is finally dead. Well, it's you next. El Yushu yawned and looked at the people around him. Everyone who was caught by his gaze, without exception, all shrank their necks. The former god of Sky Island, Ganfer stepped forward and said. A strong man from Qinghai, whatever your needs are, we will satisfy you. During this time, he figured out that these powerful guys were not something they could mess with. It's best to send them away quickly. Oh, then what if I want to occupy this place? El Yushio showed a smile, looking a little amused. Everyone was silent again. They didn't know what to say, what if this man, 
was as cruel as Enel, or even more cruel than him. Even if this is the case, it doesn't matter. The chief of the Sandians came forward and said that there is no worse outcome. There have been too many casualties over the years. Forget it, just kidding, I have no interest in Sky Island. El Yushu smiled and said, After all, this place is too far away from East Blue, and with Tashiji Lion Fruit, he can create islands in the sky at any time. When the time comes, he can directly place a large floating sky island above the East Blue base. Why bother to go far away? The main purpose of our coming here, is that we heard there is gold here. As soon as these words came out, the Sandians looked surprised. Was it just for this kind of thing? Gold. Sir. If nothing else, we have a lot of gold here. A Shandia warrior said loudly, and even began to be grateful to the ancestors for leaving them gold, otherwise there would be no strong men from Qinghai to help them deal with that man. Well, lead the way. El Yushu smiled and said. Then he looked back at Nami, with a hint of questioning flashing in his eyes. Nami from behind took a look at the fruits in her bag and saw that a cantaloupe had slowly changed shape, with golden thunder-like lines covering it. Okay. She made a gesture, and El Yushu felt relieved. Under the leadership of the Sandians, everyone passed through a cloud and a forest, bypassing huge vines and finally came to ten ancient ruins. The houses here that have decayed over time look extremely ancient. Nami sighed. It looks like it's been a long time here. Then El Yushu began to tell a story about 400 years ago. You should have all seen North Blue's fairy tale Rolando. Yes, I've seen them all. Everyone responded one after another. After all, this is a fairy tale that is widely circulated around the world. That fairy tale is true. Eh -eh. Everyone was extremely surprised. So did Rolando really exist in history? Nami asked. She always thought that fairy tales were used to deceive children. Yes, there is this person. El Yushu nodded and said. The Sandian people nearby heard the strong man from Qinghai telling stories and couldn't help but prick up their ears to listen. Rolando was the expedition admiral and botanist of the Kingdom of North Blue Lub near more than 400 years ago. While sailing, Rolando happened to pass by Gaia Island and saved Sandia from the tree fever clan, and became best friends with the clan's strongest warrior, Calgara. After Rolando saved their tribe, Calgara once took him to the forbidden area within the tribe, the Golden City, in order to express his gratitude. When Rolando returned to North Blue, he told his king that there was an island on the Grand Line and it was full of gold. The king believed it and sent a fleet to prepare to go to the place Rolando said. However, when they arrived at their destination behind the ground, I was dumbfounded. I didn't see the so-called gold all over the land at all, I only saw a deserted island with no people. What they don't know is that the island was washed up into the sky by the sky current. The enraged king then decided to execute Rolando, an adventurer who was highly respected in the country, and died. How could they do this? Nami said angrily, suddenly feeling that fairy tales were no longer fairy tales at all. It's not over yet. El Yushu continued. Rolando's descendants were ridiculed by many people, and Rolando's story was widely circulated. Everyone laughed at their family ancestor as a big liar. So our ancestors still have such a story. The chief murmured that there was a lesson in their clan. That is to ring the golden bell to prevent the returning friend from getting lost, but the two of them missed it because of the soaring sea currents. Everyone was talking and walking. Until I saw the legendary city full of gold. Wow, there's so much gold, it turns out that the golden city is real. Nami's eyes look like Pele. Ha 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 ha. The chief of the Shandia people said with a smile. You can take the gold here as you like. We can't use these things here. Thank you for helping us defeat that guy. Very good. Nami cheered. The gold here is at least billions of belly rise. The little secretary Nami roughly estimated. It's true now, you don't have to worry about money anymore. 
Even Bailey was shocked. Are there actually billions of Baileys? Tashiji couldn't help but cover his mouth. This place is really magical, the legendary Sky Island, the golden city in fairy tales. Everyone was very satisfied with the trip. Wow, there's a big snake. Bailey jumped on Nami's head, grabbing her hair and screaming. Hey, hey, don't pull my hair. Everyone looked around and saw a huge python that was hundreds of meters long and ten meters wide, attacking them. This is the god of ruins. The Sandians were a little panicked. This giant snake has been living here for hundreds of years. The skin is rough and the flesh is thick, making it invulnerable. Therefore, even Sandians and Sky Icelanders usually dare not set foot here. Um? El Yushiu's eyes suddenly became sharp. A light red light struck the big snake. The big snake, which originally looked ferocious and wanted to eat people, suddenly stopped moving, showed a scared expression, and then actually ran away. Surprisingly, just one look. The Zandian warriors were shocked again. Nami and Tashiji are already used to it. From the first time they met El Yushiu until now, there is no enemy he can't defeat. That's awesome. The chief exclaimed. Okay, let's get down to business. Let's call the people from Sky Island over. El Yushiu said. The chief of the Shandia people's expression turned serious, knowing that something serious was about to happen. When everyone gathered here, everyone looked at the man nervously. The one who is powerful enough to control their life and death. No fighting is allowed here in the future. This was the first sentence El Yushiu spoke. I won't rule here, but I don't want anything unpleasant to happen here either. He spoke calmly and in a very slow tone, but no one dared to look down upon him. Then my companions are expected to practice here for a period of time. You should take good care of them. Don't worry, we will definitely take good care of them. Chief Gonfer and Sandia looked serious and said seriously. Well, I won't say much else. I hope you can take care of yourself. At the end of his words, El Yushi released a slight pressure and avoided Nami and others. The others felt breathless and turned pale. This is a necessary warning, he is lazy. It is better to use force directly to let them know that he is someone they can't afford to offend. Don't worry, this strong man, we won't fight again in the future. After this Enel incident, they also understood the truth that meaningless fighting is meaningless. It is better to take a good rest to prevent the second person like Enel. Well, good, I'm sleepy, sleep. El Yushiu left immediately after speaking. Sleeping during a business trip will earn plus 200 bad value. On the second day, El Yushiu came to the farthest end of the cloud under the gaze of everyone, with Qinghai looming below. Won't you stay a little longer? Nami said reluctantly. I'm just going out for a while, not long. He touched Nami's head. Bailey, you have to be obedient during this period and don't cause any trouble. Bailey knows, boss. Please stop talking. Didn't it accidentally burn down the house last time? Why did Kuina file a complaint? It puffed out its mouth with an indignant expression. Tashiji. Hey? What's wrong? Whenever you can make the entire Sky Island plus that island move, I will let you go. El Yushiu smiled and said. Eh eh eh. Tashiji's little face looked a little painful. During this period of time, she had no strength left to make a hill float. How long will it take to add an island to the entire Sky Island? Tashiji blinked at him with big eyes. Being cute doesn't work. El Yushiu ignored her. Okay, see you in a few days. As he said that, he jumped down directly. The people on Kong 937 Island and the Sandians looked at this sight in shock. He doesn't he use a boat? If you fall from such a high place, you will turn into meat paste. Well, probably not. Nami smiled evilly. With his strength, even if he fell from an altitude of 10,000 meters, it would be no big deal. Eh? That's awesome. 
everyone once again had an understanding of his strength. Ten thousand meters above the ground, El Yushiu's figure fell rapidly. No wonder people like bungee jumping. This feeling of heart beating is really great. Even if he is so strong, he has never experienced the feeling of falling from a height of 10,000 meters. It feels like a lift in mood. Falling from a height of 10,000 meters, if you realize something, conquerors experience value plus 6,666. Falling from a height of 10,000 meters, if you realize something, the observation hacky experience value will be plus 1 W. At the same time, a man carrying a black knife was drinking on the island. In front of him were some pirates who wanted to rob him. Hey, that's the legendary Black Blade Knight, one of the twelve skills of the Supreme Knife. It can be sold for a lot of money, right? The pirates laughed wildly. That's for sure. There are only twelve of them in this world. If we grab it, we will get rich. That's right. And then sell it to those rich swordsmen. They were discussing arrogantly and did not take that man seriously at all, even though he was already a world-famous swordsman at this time. What is that thing from great swordsmen? There are so many of us. Who doesn't know that the Rick pirates rely on their large numbers? Not only are they not afraid of the strong, they also actively encircle and suppress them. Look. The eagle-eyed man murmured. The first half of the Grand Line is still too comfortable. How could this little pirate be allowed to run rampant for such a long time? Then let me end their dreams. The eagle-eyed man took out his knife. When the pirates saw this scene, they couldn't help but feel angry. Hey, are you looking down on us? Hurry up and use your big sword to fight us to the death. You are not worthy yet. Eagle Eye said lightly. Damn it. Let's go. The pirates took out their weapons and prepared to attack the man. However, at this moment, a sound flashed in the sky. And getting closer. Wait, what is that? One of the pirates looked up to the sky. I saw a black spot getting closer and closer. That's, that's a person. Man? Where did he fall from? He would definitely die if he fell from such a high place, right? Many pirates thought to themselves. He fell. Many pirates wanted to escape. However, there are always some fools who react a step too slowly. He was directly smashed into a pulp. Blood mixed with minced meat stained the ground red. That person is dead, right? A pirate asked with a trembling voice, and you could hear the shock in his heart. No, I disappoint you. The smoke dispersed, and a figure slowly stood up. El Yushu relaxed his muscles and bones. Not bad, not bad, just like a massage. Get a massage on a business trip, the damage value is plus 500. As soon as these words came out, many pirates backed away tens of meters in fear. It's so scary, this man. A pirate spoke their minds. The corner of the eagle-eyed man's mouth twitched slightly. Damn it, someone actually interrupted his pretense. The pirate's attitude towards El Yushiu is in sharp contrast to the attitude towards the eagle-eyed man. Yes, after all, most pirates in this world bully the weak and fear the strong. They have never seen the great swordsman's strength and have no idea about it, so they are not afraid. But El Yushiu just fell from the sky, unscathed with this terrifying body, just like a monster. You, who are you? A pirate said tremblingly. Me? I'm just an ordinary person passing by. As soon as El Yushiu finished speaking, a burst of scarlet blood suddenly rushed towards the group of pirates. Whoosh! Blood rushes through their bodies. Ah ah ah, what is this? Run, run! Help me! Help me! Ah, 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 ah. With the last scream, all the pirates were drained of blood and turned into mummies. It's all over. El Yushiu looked at the eagle-eyed man opposite, touched his chin and said. You're my hawk, right? Well. I know you. Marine. 
The eagle eyes looked at the person opposite, his sharp eyes seemed to penetrate everything. He is the man who has been widely circulated in the sea recently and defeated the Golden Lion. Want to fight with me? Hawkeye. El Yushu said eagerly, after all, the other party is also one of the members of his scheduled organization. If he can know the gap at this time. It will be a matter of course to defeat the other party later. No, I still have things to do. Surprisingly, Hawkeye did not accept the fight, but instead found an excuse to decline. Why? El Yushu was a little surprised. Because you are not a pure swordsman. Hawkeye shook his head and said, he doesn't like fighting with people with abilities because it's meaningless. Is a sword an inconvenience? Seeing that the other party really left, El Yushu suddenly spoke. Hawkeye stopped walking as he left, seeming to be thinking about the connotation of this sentence. If it's interesting, I accept your challenge. He slowly pulled out the black knife yet. The man opposite him was worthy of his use. The corners of El Yushu's mouth were slightly raised, showing a strong fighting spirit. This is right. Then he slowly drew out his western sword. This knife of yours is Roger's, right? Hawkeye said with some surprise. Yes, that's right. El Yushu nodded. It turns out that rumor is true. Hawkeye murmured. There is a rumor circulating among pirates that I don't know whether it is true or not. The sword of Roger the Pirate King is in the hands of Marine. Now it seems to be true. So. He held the knife upright in front of him, and his aura gradually became serious, sharp, and dangerous. Three dollars. El Yushu smiled and said. The two figures disappeared instantly. Wait. Centered on the two of them, cracks appeared on the surface. What? Why do you want to deviate? A pirate ship passed by in the distance, and they asked the captain puzzledly. Because, there are two monsters fighting over there. The captain looked in that direction with some horror. As soon as he finished speaking, a sharp sword energy struck. Wow! The sea in front of them was directly divided into two halves, and the sea water could not be closed for a long time. What? Cut the sea in half. Hey! Stop talking nonsense and run. The pirate ship immediately circled back. They wanted to get as far away from this dangerous island as possible. Call. However, they still did not escape. Another sword energy suddenly flew over. Wow. Blood mixed with broken wood fell to the bottom of the sea, and everyone on the pirate ship died. This is the power of the top warriors on the sea. Just the aftermath can kill some people. The battle between the two lasted for two days and two nights. No one knows the result, but everyone knows. The person who fought against the great swordsman Myhawk for so long must be an incredible strong man. The figure who had left at this time was sitting in a tavern somewhere on the island. That guy's sword is really sharp. El Yushu yawned and said. He touched his chest, where there was a cut wound but he was quickly restored by the body's powerful self-healing power. But it has to be said that the other man is one of the few men who can give him a sense of danger since he went to sea. Even Golden Lion couldn't do it back then. Of course, when dealing with Golden Lion, he used speed and fruit ability. This time he wanted to try his swordsmanship, but he didn't expect that he was still far behind the world's best swordsman. In the end, he relied on his super recovery power to fight with the opponent for two days and two nights. Hawkeye waved his hand and said that his ability was too shameless and he didn't want to fight him. Finally El Yushu came to a conclusion. That is to say, I am still far behind the opponent with my sword skills alone, but if I add the fruit strength and haki, then this man is no match for me. But if you want to conquer such a strong man as your subordinate, you have to overwhelm him with your swordsmanship. El Yushu squinted his eyes, thinking that he might be able to pick up Kendo in the future. At the same time, messages are constantly popping up in the background of the system. You seem to have gained some enlightenment after fighting with the great swordsman, 
and your swordsmanship experience value plus 9999. You seem to have gained some enlightenment after fighting against the great swordsman, and your swordsmanship experience value is plus 6666. Meanwhile, thanks to that guy Morgans, everyone around the world knows. Hawkeye fought with an unknown strong man for two days and two nights, and the island was destroyed. New World, Red Hair Pirates. Ha 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 ha. Shanks, someone can actually fight with Hawkeye for two days and two nights. It's really amazing. Now there are more and more powerful people on the sea. Is a new era coming? Shanks looked at the distant sea with a faint smile. Next time, ask that guy Hawkeye who he was fighting with. Ha 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 ha. I want to laugh at him. It can't be that Marine from East Blue, right? Captain? He's the man who chopped down the Golden Lion. Ha 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 ha. Impossible. Isn't that guy always hiding in East Blue? Everyone was drinking and chatting, looking very happy. At the same time. And El Yushu, who was talked about by everyone, has come to a fog. This is the Devil's Triangle and the only way for the Great Root. Hundreds of ships disappear here every year. The ships discovered were all empty ships without crews, and some people witnessed ghost ships floating with the dead. That sounds really bad. El Yushu said something inexplicably, but his excitement could be seen from the slightly raised corners of his mouth. Zombies, I haven't seen them yet. Whoosh. He flew straight in. I don't know how long it took to fly. Maybe an hour or two hours. He finally saw many abandoned pirate ships. There were some living figures inside, but they did not dare to step out of the shadows, as if they would be illuminated by the sun. Well, they look more like vampires than me. El Yushu raised his eyebrows. As a vampire, he could not only jump around in the sun, but also fight with others under the sun. Damn it! What a different kind of vampire! Who's that person? Why can he fly? Did they come in from outside? I wonder if we can be saved. Sounds like this came to his ears faintly, but El Yushu ignored them. It would be good if you don't suck the blood of these pirates. Still want me to save them? What are you thinking about? He shook his head, then spread his blood red wings and continued to practice traditional Chinese medicine. Whoosh! After flying some distance, he finally saw the ship that was as huge as an island. Like an island standing in the Devil's Triangle, its true identity is the huge sailing ship Thriller Bark from the Seven Warlords of the Sea Moria. Its flag is a skull with the leader Moria's onion hairstyle and a pair of flaming bat wings. The front door is shaped like a giant mouth with exposed teeth, designed to catch passing ships. It looks really big. El Yushu sighed. Then he folded his wings and stepped straight in. The first road on the island is composed of strange trees, surrounded by tombstones. Some voices kept ringing below. Hey! Is that an outsider? Should we go give it a scare? But he looks so strong. Obviously this zombie's consciousness is a coward. He can fly. Look at how cowardly you are, I'm going. Obviously this zombie is brave. Roar. A roar sounded from behind El Yushu. The tall man's original progress stopped. The zombie grinned. Was he frightened? He must be frightened by me, right? If you dare to break into Lord Moria's territory, you will be dead. It thought so, and then rushed forward. El Yushu turned around and looked at the zombies charging forward behind him. A black line flashed across my forehead. No, buddy, the bones in your feet are rotten, why are you still working so hard? Since Hogback was killed by him in advance, the zombies now have no doctors to sew their bodies. No one can stop the rotting of the bones. Can you imagine a scene where a disabled thing with severed arms and legs rushes towards you conscientiously? Shadow fruit is so useful. El Yushu couldn't help but think. With such loyal subordinates, I don't have to expend too much energy. Of course, 
Pele is great too. Although those summoned figures need to consume his energy every second of their existence, the intensity that each figure can achieve is basically comparable to him. Wow! A blood-red tentacle directly pierced the zombie's body. Snap! There was no blood, no internal organs, just broken into two pieces like a broken dead branch. Damn you! Lord Moria will not let you go. Even though its body was broken in two, it still shouted boss. It really makes me cry to death. That person is so scary. Fortunately I didn't go out. Yes. The zombies all in the tombstones all rejoiced. This is not a question of whether they are loyal or not, it is entirely due to Shadow's character. If someone directs him, he will act even if he is unwilling to do so. To fight. At the same time, a ghost behind him was watching this scene quietly. Then when El Yushiu turned around, suddenly accelerated and flew over. Call. The ghost passed right through his body. Ah, this world is really terrible, I really want to mess it up. El Yushiu directly became powerless to resist. Master Perona has him under control. Everyone, hurry up. The zombies crawled out of the graves one after another and rushed towards El Yushiu with weapons raised. Then they chopped and chopped. Click. Then they were surprised to find that the weapons were all broken into two pieces. This man, just relying on his body's defense. El Yushiu looked at them with a smile. That, this is a misunderstanding. A zombie put down his weapon directly and said tremblingly. Run quickly. All the zombies took steps forward. But the blood soon catches up with them. Many zombies quickly turned into broken limbs and arms. Ah, ah, ah my legs and hands are broken. I just said don't provoke him. It's so abominable. They screamed. El Yushiu left amid the screams. Inside the castle. It's not good. Lord Moria. A girl with pink twin tails, a crown on her head, and a burgundy umbrella came to Moria's room. What's wrong? Perona. Fat Mansion Moria opened her eyes and looked at her subordinates. Someone just killed all those zombies. Perona said nervously. Oh? Are there any outsiders again? Moria straightened his body slightly, and he suddenly became interested. It's been two or three months since any foreign pirates came in, and I've almost lost my fun lately. Hey he 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 he, how many are there? Perona. If there are a lot of people, the zombies at the intersection can be dealt with quickly. Moria thought to herself. He's only one person. Perona said anxiously. Is there only one person? Then there's no need to be afraid. My zombies are invincible. <laughs> he. Moria said with a smile, there are tens of thousands of zombies on his island-like ship. Except for the group of monsters in New World, he couldn't think of any pirates who could break through them and reach the castle in a place like Paradise. But. What else does Perona want to say? But Moria didn't let her continue. You go down. I just finished eating snacks and I feel a little sleepy. I am getting fatter and fatter. No wonder I have put on more and more meat in recent years. Oh. Perona bowed her head and retreated obediently. She knew that she couldn't disturb Master Moria when she wanted to rest. There is an outsider. Everyone, kill him quickly. Boom. Ah. I can't beat you, run away. No Lees, damn you, how dare you come here alone. Ah. The idea is so exciting. Run. Conversations like this continue to echo throughout the island. What to do, what to do? He is getting closer to the castle, Lord Moria. Perona was a little anxious. This man is so terrifying. She secretly awakened zombies one after another, but no zombie could stop him. Even those masterpieces that Lord Moria seemed satisfied with were torn to pieces by that strange man. Well, it's almost here. El Yushiu looked at the huge castle in front of him and muttered. Who knows how many zombies he killed here. 
although you can fly over directly. But it's a lot less fun, isn't it? You are not allowed to come near Lord Moria. Just as he was about to approach the castle, a figure floated faintly. Appeared. A girl with pink twin tails and small breasts. El Yushiu's eyes were slightly bright. Perona. He's a very familiar guy. Of course, he wouldn't say that he was very interested in her. You, you are not allowed to come near here. Leave me quickly, I can pretend I haven't seen you. Perona said this with a trembling voice. She didn't know why, but she always felt that the man looked at her a little strangely. Oh? Miss Perona, are you responsible for those ghosts? El Yushio showed a smile and said that he knew that his body was strong and that even if he was attacked by zombies, he would not be able to do anything to him, so he deliberately fell into the negative ghost. At the same time, I also wanted to experience what a negative state is, but the result was obviously similar to my usual bad state. Who told you to be so cruel? When you come to our place, you will kill hostages. Perona said angrily. But aren't they dead? El Yushiu kied. He didn't use salt, and the shadows on the zombies didn't return. But they are masterpieces that Lord Moria has collected for a long time. You just beat them to pieces. Perona was so angry. Oh that's just right. I'll go in and talk to him about the loss. El Yushiu said with a smile, her tone full of sincerity. No. You can't go in. But how could El Yushiu listen to her? Step straight into the castle. Damn it. Perona's eyes widened. It's over, if you disturb Lord Moria from resting, he will be angry. But of course only Moria can stop him now. I'm so angry, you damn guy. Perona feels like she didn't do a good job. Pat pat pat. El Yushiu walked in the dark castle. Why don't my attacks work on you? Perona asked, since the first attack was effective, the negative ghosts that followed were ineffective against him. Because I am a negative person. El Yushiu said with a smile. Laughing to death, I am a messed up person, negativity has no effect on me at all. TCH. Who believes you? Perona rolled her eyes. Speaking of which, can I meet you? El Yushiu asked. Of course not, I'm a ghost. Oh. El Yushiu raised his eyebrows, and passed his whole arm through her chest, oh, she had no breasts at all, and passed through the other party's front. It's a really good ability. El Yushiu sighed. Don't go any further. The two stopped in front of a gate, with Perona nervously guarding the back. However, El Yushiu remained unmoved and continued to move forward. Damn it! Perona's face turned red with anger. Extra large ghost kamikaze bomb. A huge ghost emerged from her body. Quickly came to El Yushiu, and then suddenly exploded. Boom! The sound of explosion spread throughout the castle. El Yushiu's unscathed figure was revealed. Hey! Didn't you tell me not to disturb Moria's sleep? Why do you still use this trick? El Yushiu yawned and said. You resisted a ghost bomb and seemed to have some understanding. The experience value of seeing and hearing is plus 6,666. At the same time, Moria, who was sleeping in the castle, woke up after hearing the explosion. When he woke up, his face was full of anger, as if he was tired of getting out of bed. Who? Damn that guy! How dare you disturb Lord Moria's sleep? The door in the center of the castle opened. Moria's huge body was exposed, with a big waist and a beer belly. Is that you? You disturb people's sleep. He looked at El Yushiu with red eyes. Yes, it's me. El Yushiu looked at him calmly, and at the same time looked at the other person's fat body. Sure enough, being a otaku makes people fatter. Look at his fat ring. The muscles he used to fight with Kaido are gone. Who are you? Tell me your name. Moria's red eyes looked at him. Although he had become very fat, 
the connection between strong men was unmistakable. This man was quite powerful. I'm just an ordinary person passing by. El Yushiu called Haki and said. Then go to hell. Seeing that this person did not answer her questions directly and was so negligent to her, Moria said angrily. Shadow Mage. A huge black figure appeared and rushed over holding the shadow scissors, but Moria himself disappeared. He 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 he. Taste the wrath of Lord Moria. Along with the weird laughter coming from the empty castle. Call. Shadow Mage's scissors slashed down, and El Yushiu just turned sideways slightly and dodged directly. Boom. A crack more than ten meters long suddenly appeared on the ground. Moria, who was hiding in the dark, narrowed her eyes and realized that this person could indeed hacky. At the same time, I recalled the strong man on the sea. Who is this person? Why did you come to him? While he was thinking. Zizi. Along with the black and red lightning, the shadow mage's body was directly broken. Conquerors. Moria was really shocked this time. Got you. The figure in the castle suddenly raised his head and moved slightly. Boom. A big hole suddenly appeared on the ground. El Yushiu's figure appeared in front of him instantly. Call. The dark fist hit him directly in the face. Boom. Before Moria could react, he flew backwards and smashed a large piece of the castle building with his huge and bulky body. Lord Moria. Perona flew over nervously. Damn it. Ghost bomb. Angry, she directly used the maximum number of ghost bombs. Countless ghosts flew past. However, El Yushiu easily dodged it. He 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 he. The huge body slowly stood up, and he let out a strange laugh. You succeeded in irritating me. There was a trace of blood at the corner of Moria's mouth, the bloody result of the punch just now. Only the body of such a strong man meets his conditions. He decided to make this guy a zombie. Shadow gathering place. This is his strongest move. After inserting shadows, his appearance, body shape, skin color, strength, and attack power will change. The more shadows inserted, the stronger his power will be. He can even punch ten times. He wants this man to bear his wrath. Hoo ho ho. All the shadows on the island ran over him, Moria's body grew bigger and bigger. Ten meters, tens of meters, hundreds of meters. Like a giant, Moria looked ferociously at the figure below. Oh it's so high. El Yushiu yawned and said, looking unconcerned. Catch fish in battle, damage value plus 100. Go to hell. Moria waved his huge fist and smashed it down. Asterisk 8. El Yushiu smiled slightly and waved his fist to greet him. Boom. Two fists, one big and one small, collided fiercely. Rumble. With the two people at the center, bursts of air waves exploded, and countless spider web-like cracks appeared on the ground. Most of the castle next to it was directly shattered. I actually caught Lord Moria's fist. Perilona was shocked. She knew that Moria's punch could at least break the island. The strength is pretty good. Feeling the opponent's huge strength, El Yushiu smiled and said that one blow could break the island. In his opinion, it was not as powerful as Weibul, although it did make his arm numb. Call. His figure flashed. Arriving in front of Moria's huge body in an instant. Then a hard punch. Boom. I just rely too much on my fruit ability. Hoo ho ho. This punch caused more than a dozen shadows to fly out of the opponent's body in an instant. Don't be too proud of yourself. Go to hell. Moria put her palms together and wanted to swat him to death like a mosquito. However, El Yushiu didn't give him a chance. Be a fist. A scarlet shock wave was actually hit directly by the fist. This is an attack move adapted from Weguo and Hai Hai. It contains strong conquerors and also has a huge impact. Boom. Moria opened his mouth as if he had been hit hard in the abdomen, and countless shadows flew out of his body. 
continuously drifting to hosts everywhere. His body also continued to shrink until it reached its original size. Moria's huge body lay on the ground, her eyes white and unconscious. How come? Perona saw this scene and covered her mouth in disbelief. Lord Moria is invincible, she has always thought so, but she didn't expect to be defeated by someone else. So weak. El Yuxiu muttered, he felt weaker than Lao Xia. This guy has been at home for so many years, doesn't he even know how to use Haki? When I boxed with him just now, I relied entirely on the blessing of the fruit. This battle seemed a bit boring to him. Perona's ghost body was floating in the air. Although it was a spirit body, it was logical that he could not hit her, but she did not feel a sense of security. Seeing El Yushiu's eyes turned over. Ah! What do you want to do? Perona screamed. Me? Go and prepare some food for me, or I'll kill him. El Yushiu threatened. Go right now. Go right now. Terrified, Perona's spirit body immediately flew towards her body. El Yushiu looked at the pink-haired figure floating away and touched her chin. I just don't know if she can still feel her body in her spiritual state. If anything, it's really interesting. He thought of some gameplay in a flash. The two came to the only intact part of the castle. The aftermath of the previous battle between El Yushiu and Moria had almost destroyed the surrounding area. El Yushiu sat leisurely on the chair. Perona carefully poured him a drink. Then, um, is Master Moria okay? She was worried about his condition. Don't worry, nothing's wrong. El Yushiu looked at her funny and asked curiously. Molly, BBDB, are you the only one under your command? Also, there is a guy who joined not long ago, but I don't like him. Perona pouted and said. That guy is a lustful maniac. He often kidnaps beautiful women. Oh? What about others? El Yushiu asked, and in an instant he knew it was the guy named Absalom, one of the three monsters in Moria, a porn maniac, and he would kill him directly if given the chance. I went to sea not long ago and haven't come back yet. Perona held her chin and said, she also saw it. This man didn't seem to hurt them, so he wasn't so scared. I... El Yushiu responded with a smile, if you haven't come back, then never come back. By the way, I also want to know a question. What? How old are you? Eighteen, what's wrong? El Yushu raised his eyebrows slightly, staring thoughtfully at a certain surface of the other party. Hey! Your look is so rude. Perona's face turned slightly red, and she subconsciously covered her chest and said, it just seemed like she was covering her loneliness. Um... El Yushiu smiled and said nothing. Immodest guy. Perona stared at him fiercely. Gilu. A voice came from afar. The two of them immediately knew that it was Moria who had woken up. Lord Moria. Perona immediately trotted over. Perona? Is dinner ready? Moria stood up holding his forehead. He thought he had just slept, but why was there a dull pain in his body? Um. Master Moria, you were just knocked unconscious. Perona whispered. Moria's hand covering his forehead froze, and his memories began to emerge. It seems that I, was indeed, beaten unconscious, hey? Hey, are you awake? El Yushiu's funny voice came from afar. It's you. Moria's shrill voice sounded, and he remembered that it was this person who beat him unconscious. Hmm? Do you want to fight again? El Yushiu said with a smile. Um, I didn't expect a guest to come. I have nothing to entertain you, so don't dislike it. Moria's attitude changes before and after are shocking. It can only be said that those who understand current affairs are heroes. Well, let me introduce myself, my name is El Yushiu. Seeing that the other party was so understanding, he said with a smile. El Yushiu. Moria squinted her eyes, recalling that there was such a strong man on the sea. That, Master Moria. 
Corona reminded in a low voice beside her. It was the Marine from East Blue who killed the Golden Lion some time ago. It's you. Moria's high-pitched voice sounded again, and he remembered the newspaper he saw some time ago. Why are you here? Don't you know I'm Shishibukai? Marine can't do anything to Shishibukai. Only then did he remember that he was Shishibukai and the other party was Marine. What did Marine mean by coming here? Is the world government going to remove him? Oh? Are you trying to threaten me? El Yushiu clenched his fists. Moria's head shrank. Well. I just want to remind you. I don't mean anything else. Then please remind me. El Yushiu said with a smile. I came here to talk to you about something. Please tell me. He said with a smile, wrinkles on his face. Let's cooperate. Um. Cooperation? Impossible. He gritted his teeth, how could I, a pirate, cooperate with Marine? The other party's reaction was as expected by El Yushu. He was not in a hurry, but slowly asked a question. Don't you want to create the strongest zombie in the world? Yeah, what's wrong? I can make the strongest zombie in the world. Are you a capable person? Moria asked in shock. Just now, this man defeated him using his shadow gathering place just by relying on his physical strength. Can a man with such a strong physique still be a capable person? Yes, I can use the fruit power to create a body that is not inferior to Kaido. El Yushiu said with a smile, no one knows how much this sentence contains. Kaido's physique has not yet reached that level. If he wanted to use blood crystals to reach that level, how many people would he need? Ten million? Several tens of millions? One hundred million? He didn't know, but it was theoretically possible. Besides, by the time he had killed so many people, his body would have already reached that level. Still hearing Kaido's name, Moria fell into deep thought. The voices and appearances of his former companions suddenly appeared in his memory. That hateful guy. Let's have a new world's four emperors. He wants revenge on him. Okay, I promise you. It went surprisingly smoothly. El Yushiu said with emotion. Okay, then, take out your masterpiece. What? You are satisfied with the zombie. I will help you strengthen it. Oh. Moria took him to the basement. A corpse came into view. His hair is gray, he has no eyes or nose. His body is covered with bandages, there are traces of stitches on his body, and he wears a blue coin. Wearing a white kimono with the word dragon written on both arms, a blue belly band with an uzumaki pattern around her waist, and wooden geta on her feet. His name is Ryoma. He is a warrior of Wano Kuni and a former dragon slaying swordsman. Moria explained that he had dug this up in Wanakuni's tomb. Well, it's a good material. El Yushiu squinted his eyes. You inject the shadow first. Good. Moria took out a shadow and pressed it in. Yo ho 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 ho. I'm alive again. The body of Longma moved slightly, and then actually stood up. It seems that he is still the shadow of Brook. El Yushiu concluded based on this laughter. What's next? Moria looked at him and asked. Next. Ten blood crystals appeared in El Yushiu's hand, and then poured into Long Ma's body. Isn't ten enough? He took out dozens more and poured them all in. Wow! Approximately sixty blood diamonds were consumed. In Moria's surprised eyes, the countless blood seemed to be alive, flowing continuously in Ryoma's body. I saw that his body gradually became taller, his original grey hair turned green, and a pupil appeared in his right eye. Alive, alive. Moria was really shocked this time. Hmm, not bad. Looking at the dragon horse that looked like a living person, El Yushiu nodded to express his satisfaction. Why? How did you do it? Moria asked, with a searching look on her face. This is ability. El Yushiu raised his eyes slightly, then threw out the bait again. 
Not only that, I can also make his body stronger. Yo -oh 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 -oh. I feel like I'm getting younger. Ryoma smiled strangely, and at the same time looked up at the man who made his body younger. I don't know why, but there is a strong kindness in my heart. It was as if he was God the Father who gave him new life. Then hurry up and ask him to strengthen his body. Moria said excitedly. He can already see how powerful this body is with his eyes. If it goes one step further and becomes stronger, hey I don't dare to think about it, I don't dare to think about it. This is the content of our deeper cooperation. El Yushu smiled, this guy really took the bait. How to cooperate? Moria asked. At this time, his heart was already full of infinite hope for the future. I plan to create an organization, a force that will not be disturbed by any force and can dominate the world. El Yushu extended his hand to invite. What? Moria's high-pitched voice sounded again. Aren't you Marine? I am. Shouldn't Marine just listen to the world government? He was confused about this. A Marine, wanted to recruit him to form another organization? Are you kidding me? El Yushu looked at him like a fool. Who told you Marine should just sit back and be a dog? Others don't know what world government is like, but we Marine don't know it either. Moria nodded. He suddenly remembered the strong conquerors when the other party fought with him. A man with this level of conquerors would not succumb to the world government. Hey he 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 he. Well, I'll join you. He stretched out his big hand to hold El Yushu, thinking this was a good idea. A pleasure to work with. El Yushu said with a smile. So how many people do we have in our organization now? He asked with some excitement, this person is so strong, he must have accepted many strong people. There are only two of us at the moment. What? Moria didn't even know that this was the first time she was shocked today. There are only two people. A trace of cold sweat broke out on his forehead. He must not have boarded some pirate ship, right? Don't worry, there will be more and more people coming later. El Yushio showed a confident smile. With his increasing strength, in less than two years, he believed that, he would be able to reach the level of four emperors, and then develop in a few more years. World government? Get out of here. I don't know why, but when Moria saw this smile, she became inexplicably convinced. First, strengthen your zombies. Since they have accepted each other as their subordinates, as the big boss, they should also give them some sweeteners. He took out the blood crystal again and poured it into the opponent's body. Gilyalu. Ryoma's body became even stronger. Yo ho 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 ho. Ryoma smiled excitedly. He had a feeling that if his body was like a stream before, it would be a big river now. A steady stream of power stimulates him. He <laughs> he. This is so great. Moria also laughed excitedly. Perona above could vaguely hear laughter coming from the basement. She couldn't help but shrink her head. Master Moria and the others won't do anything weird again, right? After the two had a good conversation, the excited Moria and the calm-faced El Yushi walked out of the basement. Um, I've prepared dinner. Although the castle was destroyed, Perona still prepared a dinner using the ingredients that were still available. Well done, Perona. Moria nodded with satisfaction. Thanks to Perona, he could live in peace and contentment. Um. El Yushu raised her eyebrows, she was still a little cook who knew how to cook. He took another look, and there was black foam on the table, broth. Is this thing edible? Isn't it some dark cuisine? Eat quickly, the food made by Perona is delicious. Moria said and set an example, directly picked up the basin and poured it hard. And G. El Yushu's eyes twitched, he picked up the spoon, took a spoonful, and put it into his mouth under the expectant gaze of Perona next to him. Um. It tastes surprisingly good. Okay, pretty good. El Yushu's evaluation was very indifferent, 
but it could be seen from the movement of his right hand that kept accelerating. Not only does it taste good, it's really delicious. Humph! Seeing the other person eating so fast, Perona narrowed her eyes and felt a little happy. Yo ho 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 ho! What a sweet food! Ryoma didn't know when he came out of the basement. Why did you act on your own? Didn't I give you an order? Moria looked at him with doubtful eyes. It was Lord El Yushu who called me up. The dragon horse bowed and said. Um. Moria's eyes widened. This body was strengthened by me. Can I tell the other party if there is any problem? El Yushu drank the broth calmly. This is just a small experiment he did. Although the other party's consciousness is the shadow of Moria, his body is controlled by him, and it can also affect his consciousness and make the other party feel close to him. Your own fruits have higher priority. And it doesn't matter even if the other party is hostile to him. This zombie body is completely strengthened by his own blood crystals, and he can take it back at any time. Hey he 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 he, it turns out. Moria smiled awkwardly to hide some of her little thoughts. El Yushu also smiled and said nothing. Pirates are disobedient. He just said that on purpose. What a hateful guy. Moria whispered. Okay, I've eaten and drank enough, I'm going to bed. El Yushu lay down directly on the spot and narrowed his eyes. I'll get you a quilt. Perona said thoughtfully. Okay, thank you. El Yushu smiled and said, this girl is pretty good. Hey, Perona. Moria's eyes were burning as she looked at the retreating figures of her subordinates. He doesn't know why, but he always feels that Perona's retreating figure is getting further and further away, as if she will never come back to him. Two days have passed, and Moria also knows the other party's ability. He 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 he, don't worry. It's a perfect match for my own shadow fruit. One day your island will fly into the sky and then the legion we have built will be the most powerful legion in the world. As a big boss, El Yushu is skilled in cake painting. <laughs> he. Moria's excited laughter sounded, and he seemed to see the scene of his most disgusting zombie sword killing Kaido. Dragon slaying swordsman? Then slay the evil dragon of Ueno Kuni once again. Well, I'm leaving. El Yushu waved his hand and said. Goodbye Mr. El Yushu. Under Moria's eyes that were about to spit fire, Perona waved goodbye. Apparently they got along well these two days. Goodbye. El Yushu looked at the rich girl and showed a smile. Then he spread his wings and his whole body flew into the sky. Moria looked at the other person's figure leaving gracefully, and suddenly felt a little envious. Why couldn't she fly? If El Yushu knew what he was thinking, he would definitely sneer. Don't you have any idea whether you can fly with such a fat body? Whoosh! El Yushu's figure quickly passed through the fog, and just when he was about to reach the exit, suddenly I saw a small boat. A man wearing shorts and a naked upper body was looking obscenely and wanted to touch the Fenjiun woman on the boat. Don't be afraid, it will be fine soon he 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 he. His name is Absalom. He just joined the Shishibukai Moria pirates not long ago. This time he went out and kidnapped a woman. No. Someone come and save me. Shout, shout, no one will come to save you even if you shout till your throat is broken, he 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 he. He smiled obscenely, this is the devil's triangle, and most people wouldn't dare to drive here. Then his hands began to tear the woman's clothes and a large piece of her white skin was exposed. The woman struggled hard. Help me. Someone help me. El Yushu's figure suddenly appeared and squeezed his hand. Hey. Who are you? Absalom stared at the man who suddenly appeared in horror. I advise you not to meddle in other people's business, Master Shishibukai Moria is my captain. His whole body suddenly became transparent and he struggled to leave here. Oh! El Yushu shrugged his eyelids, and the scarlet blood turned into tentacles and penetrated directly through the opponent's body. Thump! 
the blood flowed out, and the mummy-like body fell to the ground. A certain fruit on El Yushu's body slowly turned into a thread shape. Yes, not bad. El Yushu said calmly, originally this fruit was intended to be left to Moria, so he could kill him and get the shadow fruit, but he didn't expect that the other party was so understanding, and he was too embarrassed to do it. Thank you so much for saving me. The woman who just asked for help said with a grateful face. Solving Absalom is just a small matter for him. For this scumbag, killing the opponent is the best result. As for whether Moria will know? Even if he knew, so what, given the other party's current attitude, he wouldn't dare to fall out with him. Besides, this person had just joined the Moria pirates, so killing him wouldn't be a problem. Where is your home? El Yushu looked at the ragged woman and said. The beauty of the other party's plump and plump body was revealed, but his eyes were indifferent. Wake up, hey! I'm a righteous marine. You, can you take me out of here? The woman begged. She didn't know why, but she felt that this man meant no harm to her. Okay. El Yushu readily agreed, and the woman cried with joy. Great, this man attacked our merchant ship and kidnapped me. Asking for flowers. She began to slowly tell her story. D.A. El Yushu leaned over and picked up the other person's soft and plump body. Please close your eyes. Okay, okay. The woman obeyed the instructions obediently. Her face was slightly red as she was being held, and with her ragged clothes, she looked a little alluring. El Yushu's mouth twitched slightly, sighed, and then covered her with his cloak. That, thank you. The woman said a little embarrassedly. El Yushu did not respond. Wow. Blood red wings spread out. Whoosh. The figures of the two disappeared. Grand Line, Mark Island, is a well-known transportation hub island. Because there are a large number of merchant ships coming and going here every day. It is also a marine base guarded by Vice Admiral. Pirates dare not cause trouble. Whoosh! Two figures descended on a remote corner of the island. Okay, you can stay here. El Yushu put down the woman, and the soft touch on his hand disappeared. The woman looked at him with a blushing face, her voice was like a mosquito. Thanks. Um, my name is Ailey, thank you for saving me. Well, you're welcome. I'm leaving first. If you have any requests, just ask Marine Base. He gave a few simple instructions and disappeared. Leaving the grateful woman where she was. She is actually a reporter from a certain newspaper, and she has just recognized the identity of the other party, the strong man who killed the golden lion with his sword, the hero of Marine. The thick fog in the Devil's Triangle Sea area was too dense before, so she couldn't see clearly. In addition, she was too scared at the time and didn't recognize the other party. Mr. El Yushu is so gentle and handsome. She has become a fan. A.I. Lee decided to report more about each other in the future. Such a handsome and powerful man should be known to more people. If El Yushu knew what she was thinking, he would definitely say, you really repay kindness with hatred. At the same time, El Yushu was flying at high speed and had arrived at Com Belt. This is a dangerous sea area in the Grand Line. There is no wind all year round. If a ship accidentally comes to this place, it will have to wait for death here silently, because the sea kings below will swallow them whole. El Yushu, who was floating in the sky, looked at the terrifying and huge black shadow in the sea below. What a huge body! He suddenly had an idea, that is, hunting sea kings. How many blood crystals can be converted? Just do it. He released a scarlet tentacle from his body, and then plunged into the sea. Gilialu. A super large sea kings lurked below took pains, then suddenly emerged from the sea. Boom! The huge body, which was thousands of meters long, suddenly jumped towards El Yushu in the air. Roar! It wants to eat this human being in one bite. Looking at the Sea Kings in front of him, 
whose eyes were as big as the naval headquarters warship, El Yushu not only did not feel scared, but instead showed a smile. He took out his western sword, and a dangerous and sharp aura erupted. God avoids. Wow! Hundreds of meters long crimson sword energy swayed out. In the horrified eyes of the sea kings, he beheaded him directly, and his blood spread all over the sea. Can't waste it. He reached into the void and held it slightly. Whoosh! The huge amount of blood in Sea King's body gathered towards him. One, two, thirty. Hundreds. Three hundred. A super large Sea King's actually gave him a full three hundred pieces. The sea is really full of treasures. A flash of red flashed in El Yushu's eyes, and he smiled excitedly. He suddenly felt more confident about his plan. As long as he keeps hunting the Sea Kings, won't he have a steady stream of powerful blood puppets? By then, each of his Crimson Legions will be comparable to Kaido. Isn't it natural to dominate the world? But we'll talk about this later. He shook his head and recalled his original purpose. Call. El Yushu found a direction and flew towards the islands hundreds of miles away in the calm belt. Lord Snake Princess. Do you want to take a bath? Nine Snake Island, this is the country of girls, the whole country is full of women. Um. A beautiful woman responded calmly, her expression looking extremely arrogant. She is the pirate empress and the current emperor of the Amazon Lily Kingdom, a pirate country located on Kuja Island in the Calm Belt. She is also the current captain of the Nine Snakes Pirates. Her peerless appearance is rated as the most beautiful woman in the world by the world. Okay, Lady Snake. Even though she was met with a cold face, the female warrior who asked her face flushed and responded excitedly. No one else. Lady Shiji is the most beautiful. Replying to her is already a gift. Dang dang dang. Sir Shiji is going to take a bath. Everyone, go home quickly. When the three Hancock sisters came back, they told the country a story, that is, they and others had been cursed. There is a pair of eyes of Medusa on the back, and people will turn into stone statues when they see it. Everyone believed it to be true, so this country had this tradition. No one could be present when Lord Snake Princess was taking a bath, everyone. At the same time, over a desert island dozens of nautical miles away from Nine Snake Island, El Yushu looked at the island full of forests below. From time to time, there were huge roars and huge beasts lurking in the dark. He touched his chin. This is where Luffy will train Haki in the future, right? In other words, we are not far from Nine Snakes Island. He looked up and seemed to see the legendary daughter's country. Hiss. They were all women. It was simply heaven. Nine Snake Island the central and highest palace. A tall and beautiful woman was taking a bath at this time. She had long black hair, combed in a G hairstyle, a smooth and flat forehead, dark blue eyes, slender and delicate corners, and a little coldness in her almond eyes. The bridge of the nose is high, the nose is small, the lips are soft without any wrinkles, and a pair of snake-shaped gold earrings are worn under the ears to add a bit of charm. The white mist raised by the heat shrouded the surroundings, making her look hazy and elusive. Wow! She turned up the hot water and poured it over her body. Ah oh, how beautiful, how perfect! Hancock is very narcissistic about his body. Her hands kept moving all over her body, including her neck, thin waist, white legs, until, her back. Her face suddenly became calm, as if thinking of the unbearable past. Slave Trader Celestial Dragons, Slave Mark. Those hateful guys. At the same time, a figure passed by in the sky. Really just passing by. Um. El Yushu glanced down inadvertently. There was a hazy figure taking a bath in the mist. Damn it. I won't just catch up with someone's bathing time, right? Hancock, who was taking a shower below suddenly felt harassed by the gaze. She raised her head suddenly, her eyes full of anger. 
How dare you disturb me from bathing? She stretched out her hands to wrap her bathrobe tightly, and jumped up. Call. El Yushiu saw a slender leg kicking towards him. 150 tisk. What an unfortunate time to come. He cried in his heart. Then he reached out and covered Haki's hand. Clang. The touching of their bodies resounded throughout the sky. What happened? Who is Master Shiji fighting? Are there any enemies? The people who were unaware of the situation raised their heads one after another. Ah! That's a man! A female warrior who had seen a man at sea screamed excitedly. She hadn't seen a man in who knows how long. What? Which one? Which one is the man? The warrior who had lived on Nine Snakes Island for a long time and had never seen a man asked curiously. That's it. The one fighting with Lady Snake. So handsome. As she said that, she couldn't help but blush, and her legs twisted slightly. If it's with such a handsome man, I can do it. So that's a man? He looks no different from us. Yes, it's just that his hair is shorter, hey? Why doesn't he have breasts? The warriors of Nine Snake Island secretly observed. And above the sky, the battle continues. Boom! The two collided again. El Yushiu's face was slightly red. Although the other party wrapped her bathrobe tightly, didn't she know that she would be naked when she kicked him? But he's wearing nothing underneath. Hey! You rude fellow is staring at me like this. Mero Mero Mello. This move will turn anyone who is lustful towards you into stone. However, when the pink light passed through El Yushiu's body, nothing changed. How can it be? Hancock's beautiful eyes widened slightly. This guy was blushing at him. Why didn't his attack work? Isn't I the most beautiful woman in the world? Seeing the other party's surprised expression, El Yushiu secretly said, It's dangerous. His mental power reached over a thousand, and he had just forced himself to calm down like a saint, with a heart like Shisui, so he didn't fall victim to the attack. Otherwise, who wouldn't be tempted by this stunning beauty wearing only a bathrobe in front of him? Perfume femur. Her fair and smooth jade legs were thrown over again. This move can petrify anyone and any object, regardless of whether the opponent is motivated or not. Realizing the danger of this move, El Yushiu ducked slightly and saw that touch of amorous feelings again. So beautiful. Damn it. Hancock gritted his teeth and wanted to attack again, but the bathrobe was overwhelmed by the strenuous exercise. Tear. About to break apart. What happened? Only then did Hancock remember that he was wearing a bathrobe, and there were countless people watching below. If they see, their beloved king was once a slave. Hancock suddenly felt depressed. Wow. A figure suddenly appeared in front of Hancock. The coat wrapped her body, and the mark was blocked. I'm sorry to let you go. El Yushiu's gentle voice sounded, and Hancock couldn't help but blush slightly. Strange, it was obviously caused by this guy. Why are you blushing? Snoring. El Yushiu fell down holding her in his arms, and all the melon-eating figures gathered around. Lord Shiji. Is this a man? Lord Churchy, were you giving birth just now? Boom! A female warrior knocked the guy. Hey, don't talk nonsense, you idiot. But didn't you say that if you are touched by a man, you will give birth to a child? She said a little aggrievedly that's what you told me. Hearing the chatter around him, Hancock couldn't help but look angry, and she shouted coldly. Everyone, stand down. Yes. Okay. Did Lady Shiji drive us away because she wanted to have a child with this man? Stop talking. Uh, uh. After everyone left, Hancock looked at the man in front of him with a complicated expression. You just, saw it, right? Hey? I didn't see anything. El Yushiu still has that gentle smile. Hancock stared at him closely 
but there was no trace of ridicule, contempt, or contempt in his eyes. Snort. Don't tell anyone about this. Otherwise I will definitely kill you. Hey? I didn't see anything, what should I tell others? El Yushiu pretended to be dumbfounded. Hancock ignored him, but it could be seen from the slightly raised corners of her mouth that she was in a good mood. She walked straight ahead and said without looking back. Why do you, a Marine, come to my place? It seems that she recognized him as the Marine from East Blue, after all, the newspapers had publicized it some time ago. And Nine Snake Island is not an isolated place, so it is normal to know this kind of information. I came here mainly to talk about something. A smile appeared at the corner of El Yushiu's mouth, and he could tell from his heartbeat that he had achieved his goal. The other party no longer has any hostility towards him. Sister. Are you okay? Two girls with big shoulders, round waists, and strange shapes came to them. It was obvious that they were worried about Hancock. It's okay, please step back. I have important matters to discuss with this person. She was keenly aware that this man did not want outsiders to be present, so she directly drove her two sisters away. Well, sister, if you need something, call us. Okay sister. They stared at El Yushu with slightly hostile eyes, and then slowly retreated. After they walked away, Hancock turned to look at the tall and handsome man in front of him and said. Tell me, what's going on? I'd like to invite you to join me. What? Marine, haven't I already joined you? Theoretically, seven warlords of the sea and Marine are in the same camp. After all, they are all dogs of the world government. That's not it. A smile appeared on El Yushu's lips. What I mean is, I want to create a new organization, an organization that will not be disturbed by any force and will one day surpass the world government. Ha! Huh. Hancock raised an eyebrow and looked at the other person. Is this guy awake? Why do you think you can defeat world government? Don't you hate them? Those guys who are dominating at the top of the world. El Yushu spoke slowly. For some reason, Hancock felt that the other person's words were a little confusing. Kill all the celestial dragons and overthrow the world, establish a new order. El Yushu opened his mouth to talk about his plan. As a boss, he had to be good at drawing cakes to recruit his subordinates. Hancock's figure trembled slightly, it was a shadow that was engraved in his bones and could not be erased. But when she heard the other party's idea, which seemed unrealistic but seemed feasible, she couldn't help but feel a little moved. Maybe, it's really possible? And you don't really think that the Shishibukai system will always exist within Marine, do you? After all, Marine is the world government's most reliable thug. Once it is abolished, your Nine Snakes Island will usher in Marine's encirclement and suppression. No way. There are so many sea kings in the Com Belt. Hancock countered that there is no wind in the Com Belt and there are super large sea kings. This is the capital that they have been able to survive stably to this day. Oh? What if I tell you, the Marine Division is already developing a technology that can penetrate the Com Belt? This is naturally El Yushu's nonsense, because he doesn't know if Vegapunk has manufactured that thing. How can it be? Hancock's eyes widened and he said in disbelief. Let me introduce myself, my brother Kizaru. One of the tasks he is responsible for is the protection of the Marine Science Department's troops. El Yushu said with a smile, this is true, Kizaru has always been a security guard in this area. And by letting Marine Admiral serve as a security guard, one can imagine how important the Marine Academy of Sciences is. You. Hancock was speechless. She felt like she would be lying to herself and others if she continued speaking. Let me think about it. She turned around and strolled towards the palace. El Yushu was not in a hurry. He didn't care whether it was successful or not. He couldn't invite her this time but let's talk about it later. It was still early anyway. Meanwhile, East Blue. A pirate ship is sailing in a certain sea area. 
Ha 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 ha. How many waves of marines have we met today? A pirate laughed loudly and said. I don't know, the third wave or the fourth wave. Ha 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 ha. And those guys who beat up enemies. Hey, Captain. It will be difficult for us to return to East Blue from now on. Lucky Lu laughed and said. If that Lu Xiu knew that you had sunk so many warships, he would not come to fight with you, ha 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 ha. Yasop also laughs. Got it. Well if Marine comes, just come. Shanks showed a smile. They were just passing by. Unexpectedly, these Marines were chasing them like crazy. Hey. We are the Four Emperors Pirate Group. Wouldn't it be shameful to be kicked out by you like this? Therefore, it is only natural to clear out the pursuers. At the same time, the ship that had been following in the distance said with a wave of hands. Okay, don't follow me. Bartolomeo said regretfully. Sure enough, the Four Emperors Pirate Group is not simple. I hope Master El Yushiu can teach them a lesson when he comes back. In his eyes, his idol El Yushiu is the most powerful. What kind of emperor of the sea? Now that I'm here, East Blue, I'll be coiled up even if I'm a dragon. I'll be able to lie down even if I'm a tiger. The sun sets in the west. Two figures walking on the shore, and a group of guys eating melons secretly. I really want to touch that man. This way I can also have a baby. What a strange idea. I don't want to have children. It's just, I heard that giving birth is very painful. Why aren't you tired of playing with that man yet, Lady Snake? These female warriors from Nine Snake Island who have never seen a man said that they also want to play with men. Well, if nothing happens, I'll leave first. El Yushi waved his hands and said. Um, can you tell me your name? The beautiful woman lightly opened her red lips and said, although she knew the other person's name, she just wanted to hear him say it himself. Um. My name is El Yushu, from East Blue. El Yushu narrowed his eyes and smiled. Unexpectedly, the process went smoothly. The other party actually agreed to join. I have already accepted two of the seven warlords of the sea. Thanks to world government. Um. My name is Boa Hancock, thank you for the clothes. If the other party's clothes hadn't covered her during the day, she didn't know what would have happened. If the citizens had seen that mark. You are welcome. I've already washed those clothes, you. Let it go to you, just give it to me when we meet next time. El Yushiu waved his hand. He knows how to leave hooks. With this little thing, there will be more opportunities to meet. D.A. At dusk, Hancock's beautiful face is a little beautiful under the light, and his fair and soft face looks slightly red. But El Yushiu thought it was particularly cute. Um, goodbye. Hancock didn't know what was going on, his heartbeat was inexplicably fast. It's a pity that before she could say more. Goodbye. Call. El Yushiu's figure disappeared directly getting further and further away in her eyes. She bit her red lips lightly and looked at the black dot in the distance, suddenly feeling a little empty in her heart. Strange, what does this feel like? Sky Island 1.0 Tashiji was working hard to exercise her abilities. She saw countless boulders in front of her slowly floating into the sky. The girl's face was a little rosy. It seems a little difficult. So hard. She murmured, somewhat wanting to give up, but when she thought of El Yushiu's encouraging eyes before leaving, he gritted his teeth and persisted. No, I want to become a great marine like Colonel El Yushiu. I want to help him eliminate all evil in the world. It seemed that it was the power brought by this belief that the dozens of boulders that were crumbling in front of her suddenly stopped trembling and successfully stabilized in the sky. Great. It worked. Tashiji is a little happy. On the other side of Sky Island, Nami was counting the gold in the ruins. She also had a fight with the ruined snake in the past two days. Although she was rough and thick-skinned, she was still easily defeated. 
For a time, the people of Sky Island and Sandia were in awe of her. This was another person who had mastered the power of the gods. It's really good. There are tens of billions of Baileys here, right? Nami rubbed his hands and giggled. At the same time, he looked at these ruins and the stone tablet covered with text. These things seem to be history. Robin should be quite interested, right? When Robin came to Logue Town, she had had several contacts with him, so she knew that he liked studying history very much. Let El Yushiu bring Robin here next time. Robin is working hard at a base in East Blue to fight against the enemy family, but Nami is thinking that she needs to give people a holiday, right? Why hasn't that guy El Yushiu come back yet, it's so boring. She will get tired of counting gold every day. Although this Sky Island is like a dream, she feels that it is not so fresh after staying there for a long time. The only things that are interesting are those with strange functions. Shell. What kind of wind blasting shells or photo taking shells? She had a hunch that if these shells were given to those merchants, they would definitely sell well. So during this time, I was also calling Sky Icelanders to collect shells and the like. A day and a half later, when El Yushiu's figure returned to Sky Island again. Nami, who happened to be sitting on the shore looking at the scenery, suddenly saw a figure rushing out of the sea of clouds. The familiar figure made her eyes light up, and Nami waved happily. El Yushiu. You're back. Well, I'm back. El Yushiu showed a smile. Where's Tashiji? And where's that guy Pele? Tashiji is still training. Bailey is looking for shells with Cornish. Konis is a resident of Sky Island and has been playing well with Bailey recently. Nami explained briefly. El Yushiu nodded, there was such a person in his memory. Call them over here. Uh-huh. Nami turned around and left. She went to call everyone over. Not long after, everyone gathered together again. Tashiji's face was covered with sweat and his hair was stuck together. Bailey, the little raccoon cat who had gotten carried away with playing and was overjoyed. And Nami, who was always smiling from the beginning. Tomorrow I will take Nami to an island. Tashiji, you have to stay here alone. El Yushiu said. Well, I know. Tashiji said with a determined expression, obviously mentally prepared. Moreover, her abilities have also made new breakthroughs during this period, and she just happened to concentrate on practicing for a period of time. What about Bailey? Boss. Have you forgotten me? Bailey raised his hand to try to attract attention. You. El Yushiu looked at it funny and said deliberately. You are too naughty, I am going to leave you here. Eh eh eh. Bailey jumped directly onto El Yushiu's shoulders, pulling his hair. Why why? Hey. Stop talking. They were joking for a while and Nami and the two looked at this scene amusedly. Okay, let's break up the meeting. Finally taking off Bailey, El Yushiu waved her hand and said. Nami and Tashiji went to do their own things. El Yushiu was welcomed by the Sky Island people who arrived and went to the hut where they lived. Hey, El Yushiu, let me tell you, Cornish's family is really fun. Bailey stood on El Yushiu's shoulders and said with a smile. Oh? What do you say? El Yushiu was slightly curious, what did the other party do to almost take away the soul of Bailey? They have a lot of delicious food, an organ, and some interesting shells. It kept chirping, and it sounded like Bailey liked it very much. Hmm, then you go and play, come back before night. El Yushiu patted the other party's hairy butt and said. Okay. It stumbled away, El Yushiu's mouth twitched when he saw it. This guy. The Sky Island people leading the way secretly laughed. Finally arriving at the place where he lived, El Yushiu lay down on the bed. Oh. I'm so tired. He yawned. The few days he had been out this time were really. First I had a fight with Hawkeye, then I had a fight with Moria, and finally I had a fight with Hancock. I was almost exhausted. Damn it, 
this is not the life I want. He lay quietly on the bed and looked at the sky. If you sleep during business trip, the damage value will be plus 100. Congratulations on mastering the gun of Elbaf, the powerful country. In fact, the principles of the two are similar, but the difference is in the name. El Yushu raised the corner of her mouth slightly, now she has completely mastered it. Legend has it that only the strongest warriors of the giant clan can use this move. One night passed. Under the welcome of everyone, El Yushu took Nami and Bailey and flew into the distance. Whoosh! Then, they flew for a day and a night before they found the little sky island Visalia. This island is a country that studies meteorology. The entire island is made up of mostly clouds and a small part of land. Even the bed is made of clouds. The residents of the island are all meteorological scientists. The climate on the island changes very quickly, sometimes it is windy and rainy, and sometimes it is sunny. It is a good place to study the climate. Unlike the Big Sky Island, this island is in a flying state. The direction and speed are all determined by the wind, so El Yushu and the others spent a lot of time looking for this island. Wow wow wow! It's so magical here! Nami's eyes lit up as she looked at this magical island. Who are you? An old man asked. He is a climatologist living in Visalia. He has a snow white beard that reaches his waist and is divided into two fishtail shapes. He wears a wizard like robe and pointed hat. My name is Hailda, and I am the climatologist here. Hello, Mr. Herda, we heard that this place has the most advanced meteorological knowledge in the world, so we came here. El Yushu said politely. Oh? You want to learn meteorological knowledge from me? Hailda's eyes lit up. Due to the special nature of the island, no outsiders have been here for a long time, so when he heard this, he was a little surprised. Well, it's not me, it's her. El Yushu pointed to the orange-haired Nami next to her. She. Harida frowned and looked at Nami. She always felt that this child was a bit young. Is she okay? Don't underestimate her, Nami is extremely talented. El Yushu said with a smile. Tay. Harida pondered for a while, and then a paper. Let's give it a try. Two minutes later. Hailda came to Nami's side with excitement on his face. Please allow me to accept you as my disciple. Hey. Don't you dislike me? Stinky old man. Nami turned away and didn't want to talk to this guy. After sending Nami to her destination, El Yushu decided to return. So he bid farewell to Hailda and Nami, and returned to the Grand Line below. Hey! El Yushu, why don't we go back to East Blue quickly? Bailey pulled his ear and said. Because I feel something is going to happen. El Yushu muttered, he felt like he was going to get lucky again recently. What's the matter? Bailey asked curiously. Hmm. I don't know. The two of them were flying aimlessly. Ha 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 ha. Hurry up. Kids. He has no strength anymore. On an island in the Grand Line, several pirate ships are surrounding a giant. The giant's body was covered in scars, including stab wounds, artillery wounds, gunshot wounds, and a huge penetrating wound on his chest, which was bleeding continuously. But he didn't give in. You despicable guys. You have the guts to fight me. Duel is the tradition of the giants, only one-on-one -on -one combat. Idiot. Who wants to duel with you? Why do you do such stupid things in a battle that can be resolved by numbers? Ha 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 ha. That's right. Are these giant guys out of their minds? What a stupid giant. The pirates laughed wildly. They were in the first half of the paradise and did not understand the consequences of hunting a giant. It happened a few days ago on an island. The pirate captain Coraline saw the giant drinking there, so he stepped forward and wanted to recruit him as his subordinate. Unexpectedly, I was rejected directly. No one has ever rejected him since he went to sea, 
so he became angry and immediately sent the crew to teach the giant a lesson, but he did not expect to be killed. So he invested more manpower, but he still underestimated the power of the giants. Their natural strength is dozens of times higher than that of ordinary people, making them invincible in battle. After a while his men were cleaned up. This also completely angered Coraline. Since the pirates in the paradise were accustomed to joining the gang, he immediately summoned several pirate groups and promised a lot of money to pursue the giant crazily. Three days and three nights. Although several pirate ships were still destroyed by the opponent, the giant also ran out of oil. Ha 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 ha. Go to hell, you guy. The pirates raised their muskets one after another. The giant gasped in pain. He felt that breathing was uncomfortable now. Hateful. He couldn't understand why the humans outside were so ungrateful and so crazy. Didn't I just reject you a few times? As for chasing me like this? I haven't become the strongest warrior yet. He trembled and wanted to stand up and continue fighting. Giant warriors will never lie down and die. Coraline laughed ferociously. Damnable giants. Just when the pirates were about to pull the trigger, a voice suddenly appeared. Hey. To be fair, isn't it wrong for so many of you to bully him alone? Ha. Huh. Coraline raised his hand to stop the pirates who were about to pull the trigger. He sneered and looked at El Yushu. So? Are you trying to meddle in other people's business? Well, so what? El Yushu said with a smile. Oh. Boss. Kill them. Bailey raised his hands and said boldly. Ha, then you can die too. Coraline the pirate sneered. Hey, I don't know who you are, thank you for your kindness, Ron, I don't need help. The giant behind him said with a trembling voice. You guy. You really don't know how to show appreciation. Bailey was almost furious. It doesn't matter. Whoosh. The western sword was slowly drawn out. El Yushu raised his hand slightly and made a weird posture. The giant behind him suddenly stopped talking. He felt that this gesture was a bit familiar. This is. It's the gun of Elbaf. After the words fell, El Yushu suddenly swung forward. Boom. A red shock wave quickly attacked those pirates. With unrivaled momentum, he arrived in front of the originally proud pirates in an instant. Ah! What's this? Save! Their painful sounds did not last long, as their bodies were wiped out by the shock wave, and a semicircular pit thousands of meters long appeared in front of El Yushu. This, this is! Giant Ron was shocked. Isn't it true that only the strongest warriors of their giant clan can use this kind of power? Human, how did you learn this move? Me? If you are loyal to me, I will tell you. El Yushu said with a smile, and at the same time realized that the candidate for the thunder fruit was already found. Okay. I, Ron, join you. There is nothing shameful about being loyal to a strong man not to mention that this man was the benefactor who saved him, so in order to find the answer, Ron foolishly boarded a pirate ship. So El Yushu explained the story that he had seen two giants use this trick and learned it. What? Seniors Dory and Bragi are still alive? Giant Ron's surprised voice sounded. He was both surprised that El Yushu learned the Elbaf spear after just one look, and he was also shocked by the news that two seniors in his clan were still alive. Yes, and it's in Little Garden on Grand Line. Since everyone has been deceived into his subordinates, there is no need to hide it. Great. I'm going to meet them. Ron said with excitement, forgetting the pain all over his body for a moment. Well, okay, but before that. El Yushu said, looking up at the other party's shocking wounds taking out ten blood crystals and throwing them directly at the other party. Call. The blood crystal quickly integrated into Ron's body. Um. Ron felt warm all over his body. The bullet that had originally been shot into his body burst out of his body, and the wound healed quickly. 
Awesome. Thank you, Captain. He thought El Yushu was a pirate, so he spoke to the captain. El Yushu had a black line on his face. Let me tell you first, I am not a pirate. Ah. You have to call him boss. Boss El Yushu is Marine. You're such a big guy. Bailey was almost pissed off. Oh oh. Ron scratched his head, a little embarrassed, and then a little strange, shouldn't Marine always stay at the base? Why is the boss he is loyal to running around? Well, you don't have to join Marine, just be a casual worker first. El Yushu said calmly, it's hard to put such a big giant back home. It's estimated that if you bring it back the same day, the headquarters will call to summon them the next day. Okay boss. Ron followed his advice. And this, you can eat it. El Yushu took out a devil fruit. Evil 140 demonic fruit. He recognized it at a glance. Boss, what kind of fruit is this? Ron asked, unlike the traditional ordinary giants who advocate strength and do not eat any fruit, he would not mind eating one if it could make him stronger, but he also did not want to eat some strange and useless devil fruit. This is thunder fruit. The strongest logia. You idiot. Bailey said bitterly. What? Upon hearing that it was logia, Ron directly picked up the fruit, which seemed to him to be only the size of a fingernail, and swallowed it in one gulp. The unpleasant taste only lasted for a moment, and then a strong lightning flashed across the body. Boom! He reached out and made a move, and a thunder pillar more than ten meters wide fell directly from the distance. It set off a huge wave. That's awesome, boss. Ron wished he could kneel down to El Yushu, this person was his lucky star. He saved himself and gave him such a powerful fruit. Well. El Yushu narrowed his eyes and was a little happy. He had another capable general under his command. The giants are a race famous for their physical strength, otherwise Elbaf would not be known as the world's most powerful nation. Ron, who has eaten the thunder fruit, not only makes up for the giant's bulky weakness, but also has ample physical strength to use the fruit's abilities. He also knew from the conversation just now that this giant is only 34 years old. Their lifespan is three times that of humans, so when converted, it is equivalent to a one-year-old human baby. He secretly ran away from Elbaf, but he persisted for three days and three nights under the siege of a group of pirates, and even killed many people. The average giant is 20 meters tall, but Ron is almost 30 meters tall. He is looking forward to what outstanding performance this potential giant will bring to him in the future. Let's go, I'll take you to meet Dori and the others. El Yushu summoned the big bear again. The big bear didn't say a word and just swatted them away. Apparently he was used to being a means of transportation. In Ron's surprised eyes. Their figures quickly left the island. Whoosh! Meanwhile, little garden in Grand Line. Boom! The volcano erupted and it was time for them to duel again. Ha 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 ha! Dory! Let's have a duel! Broggy the giant laughed loudly. Okay! Broggy! I will definitely beat you this time! Bring it on! The two huge bodies approached quickly and their weapons collided fiercely. The dinosaurs and ancient beasts in the forest fled in panic. They did not want to be hurt by the aftermath of the battle between the two monsters. Boom! There were sounds of fighting coming from Little Garden. Whoosh! Two light waves came to Little Garden. Hey! It's Broggy Senpai and Dori Senpai. As soon as he landed, Ron looked at the two fighting giants with excitement. Although, he did not interrupt the duel between the two people. After all, the duel between the giants is an extremely sacred thing and cannot be disturbed by outsiders. So everyone waited from noon until night. A long time passed. The two giants finally ended their battle. Damn it! Another draw! Broggy said unhappily. Ha 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 ha! Then we can only fight next time. Dori said with a smile. A guest is here, 
it seems to be of the same race. Let's go and see. When Ron and others came to Little Garden, they naturally noticed the big movement. Senior Dory. So you are all still alive. Ron's voice sounded, leaving them a little confused. Hey? Broggy, does he mean we're dead? Dory asked. Senior Dory, you haven't appeared at sea for decades. Many people in the clan thought you were dead. Ron whispered. Ha 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 ha. We are having a duel. Broggy smiled when he heard this and opened Shikai to explain the reason. More than 90 years ago, Dory and Broggy each captured a sea kings. They got into an argument because a little girl asked who had hunted the bigger prey, and finally decided to decide the winner in a duel. Bailey, El Yushu had black lines in his head after hearing this answer. This, is really outrageous. Just because of this problem, it consumes nearly the entire life of an ordinary human being. El Yushu couldn't help but lamented that these immortal seeds were really a waste of life. Oh, I'm also an immortal? That's okay. Senior Dory. Can I duel with you? Ron asked expectantly, as long as he defeats this old man, he will become a powerful giant warrior. Ha 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 ha. Of course you can. Dory laughed and agreed. Good. Ron, who was squatting to watch the duel, stood up straight, causing the two giants' expressions to change slightly. Hey, this height, is really amazing. Broggy admired, you know, even he and Dory are only about 20 meters apart. Where's Ron? It's almost 30 meters away, right? Although height cannot determine anything, among the giants, the greater the height, the greater the power. It seems I have to be careful, lest I accidentally be overtaken by the younger generation. Dory smiled, but his expression was solemn. Come on big guy. Defeat them. Bailey stood on El Yushu's shoulders and shouted. Bring it on. Dory raised his weapon and shouted. Ron. Go on. Broggy handed his axe to Ron. Thank you Broggy Senpai. Ron held the axe and his whole aura became different. Start. Broggy is the referee. Bang bang bang. Accompanied by a sudden tremor of the earth. The two giants began to rush towards each other. Clang. The weapons collided hard. El Yushu and Bailey watched from the side, then saw the dawn from dusk, and then saw the dusk from dawn. One person one pet, from being very excited at the beginning to being bored and yawning later. El Yushu slept with Bailey on his pillow and woke up. The two of them were still fighting. Boss, when will they finish fighting? Bailey muttered. Hmm. I don't know either. El Yushu yawned. If you sleep while on a business trip, the damage value will be plus 100. Time turns around, to the second day. Clang. With Ron's axe blow. Dory actually fell backwards, and then his whole huge body lay on the ground. Ha 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 ha. I won. Ron was very happy, he felt that he was already a powerful giant warrior. Ha 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 ha. Broggy, you actually lost to a kid, aren't you ashamed? Ha 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 ha. As a close friend, Broggy laughed wildly. Ha 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 ha. Ron. You are already a qualified giant warrior. When Dory lost, he didn't lie or anything. Instead, he admitted it grandly. This made El Yushu and Bailey couldn't help but sigh. They are worthy of being a giant. They lost to the descendants who were equivalent to babies in their own clan, and they actually admitted it generously. Hey. That little, strong human being. Are you hungry already? How about we have a party? Dory knelt down and looked at El Yushu and the others. He wanted to call the little guy just now, but suddenly he felt keenly the aura of that human being who was more tyrannical and terrifying than the Sea Kings. He couldn't help but change his mind. Sure. El Yushu said with a smile, and couldn't help but be even more satisfied with Ron. 
he defeated the members of the giant soldier pirates in his thirties. His potential is unlimited. What's more, he hadn't used his fruit ability just now. El Yushiu believed that if he used thunder to attack, he would win faster. So Dori quickly slaughtered many dinosaurs in the forest. Night sky. Everyone sat together, drank wine, and ate meat, feeling very happy. If you hold a banquet while on a business trip, the damage value will be plus 500. Meanwhile, East Blue. Califa, who has successfully joined the enemy family, is currently on a base island somewhere in East Blue. Nowadays, the power of the Dadike gangster family has become more and more powerful. They are present on 90% of the islands in the East Blue, and their tentacles have even spread to the Grand Line. As a member of CP9, Califa couldn't help but feel a little frightened after investigating this information. This organization is developing so rapidly. And the source of all this is actually just that person. What a terrible charisma! Califa murmured, rolling her golden hair around her ears with her right hand. What kind of person is El Yushiu? It has been half a month since she joined this organization. Everyone around her, whether they are children or adults, are full of praise for El Yushiu. I don't know about the Grand Line side, but here at East Blue, it's been spread everywhere. With the title of Marine Hero of the Other Party. Miss Califa. As long as these pirates are dealt with, you can go to the holy land of Logue Town. A man in a black suit walked over, his words full of envy. Because of El Yushiu's existence, Logue Town is a holy place for them. Well, great I can finally get up close and personal with Mr. El Yushiu. She folded her hands and placed them on her soft chest, her expression became intoxicated and obsessed and the cold lady just now turned into a little fangirl in an instant. There is no way, this organization is like this. If you want to be high up, you have to be politically correct. I admire El Yushiu very much. Califa also worked hard for the task. In just ten days, he went from a grassroots level to now only one step away from Logue Town. Miss Califa, that... The man in the black suit who just spoke suddenly rubbed his hands, his face turned a little red, and he looked very embarrassed. Oh? What's wrong? Califa's voice became a little cold, this guy, couldn't be attracted to her appearance. Miss Califa, can you get me an autograph from Mr. El Yushu? Please. The black suit bowed directly at 90 degrees, making Califa's expression freeze. Well, it's me. I'm being presumptuous. I, I know. Califa's chest rose and fell, and the little white rabbit swayed. She was angry. Thank you very much. After the black suit finished speaking, he left, leaving Califa alone wondering about life. Is I already so unattractive? So women are really troublesome. If you confess to her, she finds you annoying, if you ignore her she will think you are ignorant. Little garden, everyone was eating and drinking, El Yushiu said to Ron. Just stay here. Ah? Boss, won't I come with you? Ron scratched his head and said in shock, really or not, you came all the way to drink and didn't tell me about my life, you gave me a powerful devil fruit, and finally let me go. Oh my god? Didn't the clan leader say that the humans outside are very bad? Why is the boss I met so nice? Bragi and Dori looked at each other without speaking. I watched your fight with Dori. You were able to win entirely because of your size and strength. Your combat experience is still far behind. You can stay here and ask them for advice. They can teach you a lot. El Yushiu directly pointed out Ron's shortcomings. This guy is still too young and lacks combat experience. Let him practice here for a while. Then he turned to the two giants Bragi and said. He's asking you to do something for him. As a reward, you can entrust me to do something. Ha 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 ha. You're welcome. Ron is a member of our clan, so there's nothing wrong with giving him special training. Bragi waved his hand magnanimously and never mentioned the reward. 
Dori also smiled and said. A strong human being. We just drank together, so we are friends. Friends are not so polite to each other ha 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 ha. The heroic laughter resounded throughout the island, and El Yushiu couldn't help being infected by the laughter. She could only nod slightly. Okay, then thank you. Ha 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 ha. Time came to the next day, El Yushiu and Bailey came to the shore, and the three giants waved goodbye. Boss. You must come to pick me up. I will work hard to become stronger and help you. Even though they only got along for a few days, Ron had already recognized El Yushiu's position in his heart from the bottom of his heart. Seeing this parting, he suddenly had little pearls in his eyes. Ha 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 ha. Idiot Ron, you are still crying. Bailey was there laughing wildly. Goodbye everyone. El Yushiu also smiled. Goodbye, strong human being. Dori and Bragi smiled at each other and waved goodbye. Whoosh. El Yushiu and Bailey disappeared. East Blue Logue Town. Kuina is training at this time. Phew. Phew. Every time she swung her sword, her sweat dripped to the ground. 13265,13266,13267. She had swung her sword more than 10,000 times today, and her arms were sore. Logically speaking, she should have rested long ago. But she still insisted. Because, everyone is getting stronger. I have to work hard too. The figures flashed through Kuina's mind, Jun a year ago, the golden lion not long ago, the eagle eye that split the island. They are all extremely powerful. She must become so strong too. Report. Major Kuina. Just as the girl was concentrating on swinging her sword, a marine soldier walked in. Speak. The girl's voice was short and cold. Um. Today, there is a person from the Hakka family who wants to see Colonel El Yushiu. In Logue Town Marine Base, there are many members of the enemy family, and they all have the right to meet El Yushiu, which is the rule set by El Yushiu. A trace of doubt flashed in Kuina's eyes. They should know that El Yushiu was not at Marine Base recently. Why? He's new here, right? Yes. A and D. He hesitated for a moment. And what? And she's a woman, very beautiful. The soldier swallowed. It was obvious that he was the type to poke fun at him. Oh. Guyuna suddenly became interested. Which charming bitch is coming to hook up with her? In the past, civilians from Logue Town gave El Yushiu flowers and other things, but this was the first time I had seen him from within. Take me to see. She ordered. Re. Marine soldiers lead the way. The two came to the gate of the base. Kuina glanced at it and saw a blonde figure standing over there, but it gave people a charm that could not be ignored. The top is a black tight-fitting corset, with a black mesh top underneath, and black fishnet stockings on the legs. Her proud figure attracts the attention of the two marine soldiers on duty next to her. Kuina frowned slightly, this guy is a strong enemy. The first time she saw him, she was sure that El Yushiu would probably like this one. A and D. Kuina's sharp eyes slowly looked at him, and this guy has received professional training and is a guy with good strength. That. The look in the swordsman's eyes gave Khalifa some goosebumps, and she greeted him gently. I am a fan of Mr. El Yushiu, can I meet him? Cannot. Kuina simply refused. Eh? Why? Khalifa's head is slightly tilted, looking a little confused, a little dull, a little, simple. The two marine soldiers next to me felt like their hearts were bulging. This beauty is so beautiful. Because he's not in Logue Town. Kuina was not affected and just said coldly. This slutty woman. Well, what a coincidence. I also want to ask Mr. El Yushiu for an autograph. Khalifa's little face turned down, her mouth full of regret, as if she was really a fan. Oh? You want my autograph? A familiar voice to Kuina sounded after him. 
Hao to Xiao, El Yushu. The blue haired girl shouted in surprise, and then she threw herself into his arms without being as cold as before. Ah, thank you for your hard work, Kuina. El Yushu touched the other party's head. Khalifa adjusted her glasses, and the white light covered her pupils. Is this person El Yushu? He is very tall and handsome. She commented in her mind. That. Mr. El Yushu. I'm your fan. Can you give me an autograph? Khalifa's expectant voice sounded, breaking the two people's nostalgia. Kuina, who was in his arms, raised her head and gave her a slightly hostile look. This guy? Sure. El Yushu said with a smile, making it difficult to tell what he was thinking. Then he took out a piece of paper and a pen, scribbled down his name, and handed it to the other party. Well, yeah. Little fan girl said excitedly after catching it, her fingertips inadvertently crossed the other party. You are welcome. At this time, he had already recognized that this guy was Khalifa from CP9. Tisk tisk, you have a real figure. That. Khalifa hasn't left yet after receiving the signature. She said with a slightly red face and a nervous look. Is there anything else you can do? El Yushu wants to see what the other party wants to do. Can I be your secretary? Don't worry, I will do my job well. I will do whatever you ask me to do. She said with expectation and some seductive words. Kuina's face in El Yushu's arms turned completely cold. She pinched his soft flesh, and twisted it. Hiss. El Yushu took a breath of cold air and then said righteously. Okay, I just need someone right now. Nami is not here, so this guy is in charge. He has some kind of little plan in mind, such as a beautiful personal secretary. Who doesn't love her? El Yushu. Kuina glared. This guy. His skin is itchy, isn't it? Wow, thank you very much. I will definitely work hard. Khalifa bit her soft lips lightly and kept bowing up and down with excitement on her face. Some kind of mysterious chasm was looming. Well, you're welcome. El Yushu said while comforting Kuina with her hands, her expression looked very satisfied. Sure enough, this guy is a lecher. Khalifa came to the conclusion instantly. Today you first familiarize yourself with the environment of Logue Town then start working tomorrow. El Yushu said. Okay, thank you very much for the job opportunity. The blonde beauty bowed and retreated. After Kuina and El Yushu returned to Marine Base, she directly pressed him against the wall and asked. You guy, what do you mean? What? What? El Yushu pretended to be dumbfounded. You were like this just after Nami left. Kuina said angrily. She felt that she must be too gentle and couldn't control this guy. Didn't you notice? El Yushu asked back, pinching the other person's bulging cheeks. What? She is from the world government. Um. Kuina looked at him in confusion. Although she could tell that the other person was not an ordinary person, she really didn't think about it as a world government agent. It should be a CP agent. The recent development in beating up enemies has been so rapid, the world government has noticed. El Yushu yawned and said. Oh. Then you still keep her? Kuina also asked. Are you stupid? El Yushu knocked her little head. Rather than letting her do something secretly, it's better to stay by my side. I know exactly what she is doing. The corners of El Yushu's mouth were slightly raised. Of course, he won't admit that he also has a crush on the other party's fishing net. Besides, it should be normal to sacrifice your life for the mission of world government, right? El Yushu thought to himself that he had already begun to engage in some insidious deeds. Oh, okay. Kuina's frown relaxed, but for some reason, she always felt that the other party had some sinister activities. Kuina. Um. The girl raised her head. 
well. Then she gradually became addicted to it. If you molest your subordinates during work, the damage value will be plus 500. Hearing the sound of the system, El Yushu raised his eyelids slightly, what the hell do you mean, system? The next morning, Khalifa arrived at the gate of Marine Base on time. Today she is wearing a tight-fitting hip skirt, perfectly showing off her beautiful curves, and a pair of high heels on her feet, looking beautiful and intellectual. 993 Colonel El Yushu, enjoy good. She gently lifted her hair and was already in working mode. Yes, not bad. El Yushu nodded slightly in praise. I haven't seen a hip skirt for a long time. It looks so good. Come with me, I will take you to familiarize yourself with the work. El Yushu walked into Marine Base with Khalifa, came to the office, and pointed at the mountains of documents. This is what you have been covering for the past few days. He has been away from Logue Town for the past few days. Except for the important documents signed by Kuina, these are all. It's a complicated and unimportant document, so it doesn't matter if I give it to her. If nothing happens, don't disturb me. El Yushu yawned. He was really sleepy after working all night yesterday. Khalifa's face froze. This was not the office life she imagined. Shouldn't the normal situation be that you are processing documents there, and then the beautiful and enchanting old lady brings you tea and water, and then they make love to each other? Why do you want to take a nap while I am processing the files now? Khalifa didn't understand, but she was shocked. El Yushu ignored her and went out directly. Damn, I'm really sleepy. Sleep while working. Blanche plus 333. Khalifa was left alone in the office feeling depressed. She touched her face, looked at her hip skirt, and smelled the perfume she specially sprayed on her body. Strange, is my charm already so low? She couldn't help but begin to doubt her own charm. When El Yushu was walking around Logue Town, a green-haired figure with a coxcomb head suddenly appeared. Lord El Yushu. The Four Emperors pirate group has appeared in East Blue. Are we going to kill them? Having won many battles since his debut, Bartolomeo no longer knows what fear is. Just like those supernovae in the future, I don't know how terrifying the Four Emperors are on the sea, and I don't know why they can gain a foothold on the sea. Ha! Huh. A question mark popped up in El Yushu's head. No. What did you do while I was away at East Blue? This is what happened. Bartolomeo began to slowly tell what happened. When El Yushu heard that the other party sent several ships to pursue them but were sunk, El Yushu's mouth twitched. Where are the casualties? He sighed and said. Casualties, well, it seems there are no casualties. Bartolomeo explained again that the other party just sunk them. Well, I see. El Yushu yawned and said. Trouble, sigh, the other party wants to see him. Otherwise, with their strength, how could they be easily, be I, beaten up by the enemies and those branch marines? Master El Yushu, do you want to help us take revenge? Bartolomeo's eyes lit up, wow, his idol actually stood up for them. It was so touching. At the same time, a mobile base somewhere in New World. This is the headquarters of World News Service. Morgan smokes a cigar and reads the reports coming from under his hands. Oh. That El Yushu returned to East Blue. His mind instantly thought of the red-haired East Blue, one of the four emperors, and how they repelled several marine warships and beat up enemy passenger ships. Big news. These words appeared in his mind instantly. Gah ha 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 ha. Let all the intelligence agents over at East Blue keep their eyes open. Morgans waved his wings. Although he is not 100% sure whether there will be big news, he will not let it go even if there is only a small chance. At the same time. East Blue, Windmill Village. Ha 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 ha. Luffy, do you still want to be the Pirate King? Shanks smiled and said to the young man. Of course. My dream is to become the Pirate King, 
and I want to defeat you Shanks. Luffy said while eating meat. But East Blue's Marine is very powerful. Luffy, you might have been caught before you even left East Blue. Yasop laughed, they really experienced a lot when they came to Windmill Village. That's right, when we came to Windmill Village, we were surrounded and suppressed a lot. Have you ever seen a dozen warships surrounding you? Beckman threatened. That doesn't matter. I must go to see. The young man smiled. His smile was so contagious that everyone in the tavern laughed too. Ha 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 ha. Let me tell you, even if you say so, Luffy will not give up. Shanks laughed loudly. Come on, come on, drink. On the shore of Windmill Village, a marine warship was docked there. Oh! Is Vice Admiral Garp back? A villager was surprised and said that generally there are no marine warships docked in remote places like Windmill Village. Unless it's Garp, after all, this is his hometown. The hometown of marine hero Garp also made them feel proud. Is Vice Admiral Garp back? Some villagers who had been cared for by Garp gathered around. But to their surprise. As soon as a tall, handsome young man wearing a marine justice coat arrived, he was standing on the deck, overlooking the bottom. Ha, is this the windmill village? It looks really peaceful. Quiet and peaceful, this was his first impression. My lord, do you have any important business here? A villager asked cautiously. Some other villagers looked at him carefully and felt that he looked familiar. Me? I came here to find someone. El Yushiu said. Who? The villagers asked subconsciously. Shanks. El Yushiu said lightly. What? Up, the mayor of Windmill Village, shrank his pupils. Is this marine here for your Shanks? I felt a little uneasy for a while. After all, Shanks and others did not plunder like ordinary pirates. They came here more for rest and banquets. Because of this, some villagers, including the village chief, have a pretty good impression of them. Well, could the village chief please lead the way for me? El Yushiu looked at the old man with a smile. Well, I can take you to see them, but you can't embarrass them. The village chief said that he had not yet recognized El Yushiu's identity but subconsciously felt that these marines came here probably because they were interested in the other party's bounty. Sigh, I hope this young marine guy won't have that kind of thoughts. After all, Shanks and the others, don't look like ordinary pirates. UPU silently led the way, and when the villagers saw the village chief leading a marine wearing a justice coat, they all looked at him curiously. Why would marine come to a place like ours? It's not for Shanks and the others, is it? Have no idea. The villagers discussed. Inside the tavern. Hey, Shanks, who is the Golden Lion? Is it very powerful? Luffy asked vaguely while chewing meat in his mouth. Golden Lion, that's an incredible pirate. Shanks showed a smile. He seemed to remember the time when he was in the Roger Pirates when he was forced to run away in embarrassment. Oh? How awesome is it? Luffy's thoughts. Ha 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 ha. Let's put it this way, Golden Lion likes to just throw an island down when fighting. Yasop said with a smile. Hey. Luffy opened his mouth wide. Even he knew how terrifying the concept of throwing an island was. Then the marine who defeated the Golden Lion, wasn't he awesome? These days, he often hears Makina talking about how awesome Marine is. It feels like Sister Makina likes his appearance very much, and even bought a photo of him from the group of people in black suits. Luffy doesn't understand this. Some photos actually cost money to buy. He might as well buy meat to eat. Oh? Are you talking about me? A voice sounded. Everyone looked at the door of the tavern. A tall figure over there covered the originally transparent. The light comes. Hey? Who are you? Luffy picked his nose and said. Ha 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 ha. He is the powerful marine you just mentioned, 
stupid Luffy. Fat Lucky laughed. Oh, are you that Marine? Luffy's eyes are slightly bright. You are so powerful. You actually defeated that powerful pirate. He smiled with his big teeth and said. Luffy, you can't be so rude. Behind the counter, a slightly blushing Makina whispered. Ah. Luffy turned his head and began to think about what he had done wrong. You're here. Brother Marine. Come and have a drink. Shanks laughed and said, as if he already knew that the other party would come. Okay. El Yushi walked straight to him and took the wine that Makina quickly mixed. Thanks. He thanked him politely. You are welcome. Makino recognized him at a glance. He was the person in the photo. Oops. I met my idol. What should I do? He is so gentle. She fanned her face with her little hands and suddenly felt a little hot. El Yushiu smiled politely, but it made her even more stunned. What are you doing in East Blue? What are your plans? Tell the truth. He took a sip of wine and asked seriously. The pirates in the tavern suddenly fell silent, and then burst into laughter. Ha 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 ha. It's so funny, Brother Marine. Interesting. Much more interesting than the Marine I met before. Hey, little brother, won't you be punished if you drink with us pirates? Ha 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 ha. For a time, the tavern was full of joy. El Yushiu smiled and said. Hey. Marine. What's your name? Luffy stretched out his hand and waved it in front of his eyes. Little brat, let's play. El Yushiu lifted the opponent with one hand, raised his right foot, and kicked him. Along with a scream, Luffy disappeared. El Yushiu shrugged, not interested in this guy. If it weren't for the fact that the other party's identity was too complicated, with his grandfather being the marine hero Garp, his father being the boss of the Revolutionary Army, and a red-haired Four Emperors guy who was very optimistic about him. If it weren't for these various factors, he would have wanted to kill the opponent directly and obtain the Nika fruit. The purpose of coming here this time is firstly to see the beautiful Makina, and secondly to find a place with red hair pirates. Ha 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 ha. That kid Luffy screamed so loudly. Ah. Ha 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 ha. One pirate imitated the other party's scream, which immediately caused more laughter from everyone in the tavern. Ha 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 ha. Everyone had enough to eat and drink. El Yushiu and Hungfa came to a shore far away from the windmill village in tacit understanding, with a vast forest next to them. Captain Roger's sword is really with you. El Yushiu hadn't drawn his sword yet. Shanks recognized it just by looking at it. He said in a nostalgic tone. Well. I picked it up. El Yushiu said with a slight smile and at the same time looked at the other party's broken arm, has the straw hat been entrusted? The fact that Ace is in your hands means that your fate is like this. Shanks smiled and didn't care about this kind of thing. He didn't say anything to ask the other party to return the sword to him. Well. Come on. El Yushi yawned and said. Three dollars. The two looked at each other and smiled and then their expressions suddenly became fierce. Boom! Two extremely domineering auras collided violently, and red lightning shot through the air. A hole was torn in the sky. Hey! This conquerors? He's already comparable to a captain, right? Ha 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 ha! What a troublesome thing, captain! You are worthy of being the man who defeated the Golden Lion! Ha 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 ha! Although the crew watching the excitement around them felt a little uncomfortable due to the collision of two wills, they still insisted on eating at the front line and seemed not to care about Shank's safety at all. Be careful. God avoids. El Yushiu smiled lightly, then used his signature move, and swung the western sword forward fiercely. Wow! A sword energy glowing with black and red lightning suddenly swung forward. Invincible, unstoppable. Ah, what an amazing marine. 
Shanks smiled when he saw this scene and used the same move. God avoids. Boom. The two sword energies collided violently. Sizzle. The sky was suddenly covered with dark clouds, black and red lightning flashed everywhere, the calm sea surface was accompanied by huge waves, and the beach was instantly changed beyond recognition to compose it. The two frightening auras stunned everyone. Even the smiles of Yasop and the others who had just laughed at him had restrained their smiles. Hey, hey, this is serious. Beckman smiled. And above the forest not far from here. A young man with a tit on his face, Madara, stared at this scene with white eyes. This. Ace swallowed, he couldn't believe this scene. Too powerful. Both of them are too strong. So amazing. He recognized that the red-haired man was a pirate who often came to Windmill Village. It seemed that Luffy knew him. Didn't you expect that the other party was so strong? At this time, he didn't know that the red-haired man was his father's crew member. And that Marine was also very powerful. The battle between the two tore up the sky. And that sense of oppression. He suddenly felt unconfident about going to sea in a few years. If East Blue's Marine was so powerful, how could he go to sea? Damn it! Not long after, the battle was over. After all, the two of them were just discussing, and that was all. El Yushu silently realized the feeling of fighting just now. What makes him extremely satisfied is that his conquerors is almost the same as his opponents. The only thing lacking is Haki's strength, but these, he will catch up soon. You have experienced a four emperors competition. If you have some enlightenment, your weapon color experience will be plus 11,111. After you experience a four emperors competition, if you gain enlightenment, the conqueror's experience value will be plus 6,666. The system also gave timely feedback on the results this time, which made El Yushu couldn't help but curl up his lips slightly and he became stronger again. And after this simple discussion, everyone in the Red Hair Pirates also knew that this Marine was a very capable guy. At least, it's actually comparable to Shanks in terms of conquerors. You know, their captain has been vaguely called the most hacky man in the world recently. El Yushu said that these are all minor problems, and within a year at most, the hockiest man in the world will be lousy. Ha 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 ha. That's so awesome, Brother Marine. Shanks laughed loudly. That evasive move of yours. I thought I saw Captain Roger. He seemed to be exaggerating, but he was speaking from the bottom of his heart. Both of them were so calm and assertive, but Haki let it slip. Damn it, he didn't expect to see the shadow of Pirate King Roger in a Marine. You are also very powerful. Hearing everyone's praise, El Yushu responded. Captain Roger. Is this the new era you are talking about? Shanks looked at the calming sea in the distance and murmured, not only might there be some powerful people among the pirates, but there are also powerful guys in the marines. New era. El Yushu, who has sensitive ears, smiled after hearing this. There can only be me in the new era. He said confidently. Still waiting for Joey boy? Laozi will go and knock off Marie Joyce by himself. Hearing Haki's speech, the surrounding pirates were silent for a moment, and then burst into laughter. Ha 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 ha. You are indeed Marine. You are so awesome. Yes, yes, brother Marine will soon become Mr. Marshall and imprison us all and impel down ha 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 ha. Even Beckman and Shanks smiled. They looked at El Yushu seriously and said. The strong men on the sea are like the Crucian carp crossing the river, not to mention. Shanks looked up at the sky, as if there was something blocking it. El Yushu just smiled and did not refute. Speaking of which, Brother Marine, is that buggy guy at your place? Shanks suddenly remembered the situation of his good brother, which was also one of his goals. His good brother Buggy once appeared in East Blue Logue Town. Ah, yes, that guy is working hard at my job. El Yushu opened her eyes and told lies. 
Oh? Didn't Brother Marine capture him and impel him? Shanks asked curiously. Of course it's because he is a talent. The powerful artillery shells in our current fleet were all improved by him. El Yushu had to sigh with emotion at this point. Oh. Can you let me see him when I go back later? Brother Marine. Shanks was still a little worried, he said with a smile, and at the same time sighed in his heart, were those powerful cannonballs made by Buggy? He said why they looked so familiar. Sure. El Yushu also smiled, but said in her heart. That guy probably doesn't want you to rescue him, right? After the discussion, everyone came to the tavern to drink and have a banquet. Time passed quickly without realizing it it was getting dark. All the pirates fell asleep in the tavern with red faces. Only a few people are left awake. El Yushu, Makina, Shanks. Excuse me, Miss Makina. Shanks fell asleep after saying that, not worried at all about Marine next to him arresting him. Seeing that everyone was asleep, Makina in front of the counter blushed and said. Um. Colonel El Yushu, I am your fan, can you give me your autograph? There was a hint of caution in her tone, as well as the fear of being rejected. There were too many people just now, and she was embarrassed to ask for it. Sure. El Yushu raised his eyebrows. He didn't expect Makina to be his fan. So he took out a pen and paper from his pocket, wrote down his name, and handed it to the other person. Thanks. Makina blushed and took it, then put it in his arms, as if he wanted to treasure it well. El Yushu looked funny. If you are afraid of losing it, I can write you a few more. As he said this, he actually wrote five or six pictures in a row. Ah. Thank you so much. Makina's eyes are almost starry-eyed, Colonel El Yushu, is too gentle. You are welcome. El Yushu held the bar with one hand and looked at each other quietly. He had just been drinking and didn't notice. Makina is pretty good looking. Then he asked gently. You just don't know the beautiful lady's name. Um. My name is Makina. Well, my name is El Yushu, nice to meet you. He stretched out his hand and said with a smile. Ah. When Makina saw the big hand stretched out, his heart almost jumped out of his chest. The idol asked him to shake his hand? Real or fake? Am I not dreaming? Excited heart and trembling hands. She slowly put her hand into El Yushu's and felt. I feel so safe. Is this the marine hero who protects the entire East Blue? Um. El Yushu was divided at the first touch. He withdrew his hand in the eyes of the other party, then threw out the hook again and said. Ms. Makina, would you like to go shopping with me when you are free? He invited me on a date. Eh eh eh. Makina felt her whole body burning up, and she said with a trembling voice. Of course. Of course. Shanks. Shanks. While the two were flirting, a figure walked in from outside the tavern and shouted the name of four emperors. Ah? They're all asleep. Luffy looked at the figures lying down in the tavern and couldn't help but express doubts. Then I saw the two figures at the counter. Ah? Makina. Good evening. Good evening, Luffy. Makina smiled softly. Makina, why are you blushing? He stepped forward and stared at it, looking at it. Makina took a few steps back slightly, feeling even more embarrassed. Hey, hey, you guy. El Yushu lifted him up with one hand and actually disturbed himself from teasing a decent woman. Hey? It's you. Damn Marine. Luffy pointed at him and shouted loudly as if he had just seen him. Ms. Makina, let me go out and communicate with this guy. El Yushu turned to Makina and said. Okay. Makina still had that gentle smile, but his face turned a little red when talking to him. Mr. El Yushu is so gentle, he shouldn't embarrass Luffy. El Yushu held Luffy in one hand and said. Hey. Let me go, you guy. 
Luffy, who was pinched by fate's neck, said loudly. D.A. Looking at this guy who keeps stretching his neck. El Yushiu couldn't help but fell into deep thought. He suddenly remembered a post from his previous life, in which Kaido treated Luffy as if he were a safe person and missed her as a big mom. His it doesn't seem impossible, hey? This feel is so elastic. El Yushiu even pulled it. Hey, hey. It hurts. Luffy was hurt and slapped his hand hard, but his resistance was futile. The two came to a cow sheet in Windmill Village. Hey. You are so disgusting. Luffy was being put down and was blowing air. It hurt so much when he was pinched by this nasty guy. Um, Luffy, right. El Yushiu looked at him and asked. Yes, my name is Monkey D. Luffy, and my dream is to be the man who becomes the Pirate King. Luffy immediately introduced himself, and as he spoke, he had a big tooth, and seemed to be convinced that he would become the Pirate King. Oh? But I heard that Marine Hero Garp is your grandfather. El Yushiu said with a smile. Yes. What's wrong? He picked his nose and asked nonchalantly, My grandfather is a Marine, doesn't that mean I will become a Marine? Ah, according to Marine's latest rules, if you encounter people with abnormal thoughts and want to become pirates, you can arrest them. El Yushiu said nonsensically that this was his own rule. What? You can't do this. I haven't gone to sea yet. Luffy's eyes widened and he said in disbelief. He subconsciously wanted to leave here. However, he had just taken a few steps. El Yushiu's figure was faster and appeared in front of him all of a sudden. Good dong. Luffy didn't know why, but subconsciously swallowed a drop of saliva. El Yushiu looked at him with a smile, and smashed his fist with the size of a clay pot. Dong dong dong. Along with three dull sounds, his head quickly swelled up with three big bumps. Luffy said with tears in his eyes. Hey, hey. Why do people feel the same pain as grandpa's? Let your kid bother me. Sure enough, it was better to hit someone to relieve his anger. El Yushiu's depression at being disturbed just now disappeared without a trace. All right. El Yushiu carried him towards the tavern. Luffy trembled with fear. Let me go. Let me go. I don't want to go to jail. At this moment, a sparrow suddenly appeared not far away. Madara was a gloomy young man. Luffy saw the familiar figure and said with surprise. Ace. Help me. This man wants to take me to jail. Stupid Luffy. Ace said that he originally wanted to make a sneak attack to save Luffy, but the other party immediately revealed his trace. How could he make a surprise attack? Asking for flowers. Uh-huh. El Yushiu narrowed his eyes. Look at that person. One Piece Roger's bloodline. By the way, does Shanks know? The look in El Yushiu's eyes made his hair stand on end. Ace immediately judged. This is an enemy so terrifying that it cannot be defeated at this stage no matter what. He instantly remembered looking at the two figures below in the forest during the day. At this time, dark clouds covered the moon in the sky. Due to the cover of night, he could not see El Yushiu's face clearly just now. Now it seems that this is the Marine? Damn it! What should I do to save Luffy? Ace thought to himself. Ace! Help me! I'm going to be captured! Luffy is still shouting. El Yushiu looked at the Madara boy with a cold face. Oh! Are you his accomplice? It seems you don't want to save him, then I'm leaving. El Yushiu carried the prince and walked away. Ace suddenly became anxious. He took out the steel pipe behind him and rushed forward. Luffy. Whoosh. The steel pipe suddenly hit the tall figure, and you could tell from the strong wind that this blow should not be underestimated. However, El Yushiu didn't even look at it, and still walked forward leisurely. Clang. The steel pipe hit him hard on the back but the sound of gold and iron was heard. What? 
Ace felt as if he had been hit by a steel plate. The huge recoil force almost made him unable to hold the steel pipe, and he took seven or eight steps forward. Ha! Huh. El Yushiu turned over. He didn't even fire Haki for that blow just now, he relied solely on his physical body to bear it. It feels like, a massage? Zero. He smiled slightly, showing a hint of sarcasm. Hey, hey, haven't you had enough to eat? You don't have any strength at all, kid. Dex. The young Madara boy rushed forward again. He has to save Luffy no matter what. He has already lost Sabo and can't lose Luffy again. Ha! Huh. Madara boy rushed forward, El Yushiu stretched out his hand to block him. But the opponent used a sliding shovel and hit a certain part of him with the steel pipe in his hand. El Yushiu's mouth twitched, damn, this kid is quite insidious. But Lao Zi is faster than you. His hands were like claws, and he grabbed the steel pipe like he was coming from behind. Pinch it slightly. Kaha. In Ace's shocked eyes, the steel pipe actually shattered. Then he saw a foot getting bigger and bigger in his eyes. Boom. He was kicked and knocked unconscious. You defeated the son of the Pirate King, you seem to have learned something, Conqueror's experience value plus 6,666. Well, it's really troublesome. El Yushiu muttered. Ace. Luffy successfully escaped and ran to the side of the fainted boy, then glared at El Yushiu. You damn marine! Humph! El Yushiu hugged her chest, asking you to disturb Lao Zi? I haven't played it yet. He suddenly smiled, with a hint of evil humor in the corner of his mouth. Step forward and grab the two teenagers. Hey! You hateful guy! What are you going to do? Luffy keeps struggling. Boom. The two were thrown to the ground. Luffy subconsciously wanted to run away with Ace on his back. El Yushiu said slowly. If you dare to run away, believe it or not, I will send people to arrest those bandits on the mountain. He couldn't catch the four emperor's pirates, but he would have no problem catching a bandit. Dot in. Luffy subconsciously stopped moving. Those are his important relatives. Well, not bad, you are so good. El Yushiu nodded with satisfaction, then took out his camera phone. Kika kika kika. Several flashes of light flickered. Hey. What are you doing? Luffy subconsciously covered his eyes. Nothing, leave a file. El Yushiu showed a strange smile. He decided to call on the members of the enemy and Hakka families to beat them up when he went back. If he saw these two guys going to sea to become pirates, he would do his best to take care of them. Okay, you two let's go. El Yushiu waved his hand, he had no interest in them anymore. Humph. I will take revenge. Luffy gave him a dirty look. This kid is quite vindictive. Up to you. El Yushiu yawned and said. You warm up and exercise, your mood is happy, and your weapon color experience value plus 1111. He slowly returned to the tavern. At this time, Makina had finished cleaning up. When she saw a tall figure coming back, she subconsciously raised her head. Colonel El Yushiu, that. Ms. Makina, are you done? Busy working. Then let's go shopping. El Yushiu made a date invitation. But. Makina was very embarrassed. Ah, help. I haven't put on any nice clothes yet. How can I do this with work clothes? El Yushiu, who listened to her heart, smiled slightly. It doesn't matter, Miss Makina, you are already very beautiful, the extra outfit is just the icing on the cake. As soon as he said these words, Makina's fair face was filled with blush, rusty. That, I, that. Makina began to speak incoherently. Let's go, Miss Makina. El Yushiu took the initiative to hold her little hand, not paying attention to the other person's red face, and the two left the tavern. 
It's night now and there aren't many pedestrians. It's a good time for a date. The next day. A pirate ship slowly left the shore. Luffy waved goodbye on the shore. Ha 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 ha. Goodbye Luffy. I hope you are already a man when we meet next time. All the pirates said hello below. Humph. Just wait. I will definitely become the Pirate King. Luffy said loudly. Makina was also waving goodbye to someone on the shore. She looked at the tall and handsome figure, pursed her lips and smiled, and couldn't help but think of her heartbeat last night. The pirate ship sailed slowly into the distance. So, how did you get on the ship? Mr. Marine. Shanks looked at the man drinking from his drink. Well, don't you want to see Buggy? I'll take you there. El Yushu yawned and said. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Have a party. Oh. Party. In broad daylight, everyone held a banquet. At the same time, on an island in East Blue. A red-nosed figure was digging, and said while digging. That damn marine bastard. Since he failed to escape last time, he was sent here to mine by that man. And from working eight hours a day to ten hours a day now. As soon as the busy work every day was over, he was so tired that he lay down and fell asleep without having time to think about anything else. Click. His shovel suddenly stopped working. Touching something hard. Um. Buggy's eyes rolled slightly. Is it some kind of treasure? A treasure left behind by a great pirate? 390. The image of himself lying in a pile of gold and silver treasures suddenly appeared in his mind. Ha 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 ha. The corners of his mouth could not help but reach behind his ears. Hey. What are you doing? Dig quickly. Seeing that he hadn't moved, the man in the black suit couldn't help but urge. I know, I know. Buggy responded, then slowly moved his body to block the corner he had just dug out. I shovel. I shovel. I shovel, shovel. He quickly buried the corner with soil. Come back and dig this treasure tonight. Buggy secretly thought. The daily busyness passed quickly, and finally came the night Buggy was looking forward to. A figure cautiously came to the working mine. He recognized the mark he had made during the day at a glance. Ha 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 ha. Here comes the treasure. Buggy dug carefully. I don't know how long it has been. A treasure chest and a huge stone tablet were revealed. Hey? Historical text. Buggy blinked. This thing is of no use to him, he can't understand it, and it doesn't look like it's a historical text recording road signs. Forget it, let's take a look at the treasure chest first. He opened the treasure chest and found that there was nothing inside. Ah. He couldn't help but feel a little disappointed, and then he saw a piece of paper inside. It says. We come from the endless continent, where there is a lot of wealth. Unfortunately, we cannot go back because of the lack of energy. The voice is full of desolation and regret. But Buggy's eyes lit up. Endless continent? What is that place? Is there something in this world that Uncle Buggy doesn't know about? You should know that apart from Raftal, New World, and the park, he has visited them all. So he turned to look at the stone tablet. The historical text on it told him that it should record the method to the endless continent. Ha 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 ha. The endless continent. It sounds like a place with a lot of treasures. Buggy is going to be prosperous. The corners of his red nose and mouth curled up to the back of his head. But. The question now is, how should we read the text above? Time came to the second day. The pirate ship came to the waters near an island. A ship dressed as a merchant ship is wandering nearby. This is the ship of the enemy family. They usually disguise themselves as merchant ships to attract pirates and then give them a big surprise. At this moment, the man in the black suit on the merchant ship shouted in surprise. Hey! There's a pirate ship! It had been a long time since he had seen a pirate ship, 
so this was a perfect achievement. As soon as he finished speaking, three merchant ships surrounded him. Ha! Huh. Brother Marine, if you don't tell them to stop, we will be attacked. I saw them faintly raising the muzzle of the cannon, and seemed to have begun to take aim. Um. El Yushiu looked at this scene with a smile and expressed that he was very satisfied. This is his good subordinate. Okay, let's all disperse. El Yushiu said, her voice neither loud nor quiet, but just enough for everyone to hear. The merchant ships immediately stopped after hearing this. It's Mr. El Yushiu. Ah. Uh, Master El Yushiu is actually here. I know. Master El Yushiu must have hijacked this pirate ship. As expected of Master El Yushiu. All merchant ships immediately stopped their siege. What a group of well-trained guys. Shanks had to lament that even the pirate groups under his command in New World did not make him feel as good as these people. Uh-huh. El Yushiu slightly raised his eyelids, your pirates are more disciplined than well-trained guys like me? What's going on? The ship soon docked. Many pirates were slowly walking on the island under the leadership of El Yushiu. Looking at the bustling pedestrians, businessmen, workers in overalls, and many black suits. Oh, there are quite a lot of people here. Shanks was a little surprised. Well, because the minerals here are easy to sell, many businessmen need. El Yushiu yawned, then opened Shikai and said. Sparkling gold ore is harder than ordinary iron ore, and the forged weapons are more flexible and have high plasticity. Oh, that's really incredible. Beckman smiled. This mineral must be valuable, right? How much did you spend on it? No this mine was discovered by us, and naturally it is mined by us. El Yushiu said lightly, he discovered this place one time when he went out to sea for treasure hunting. With a luck value of 70 or 80 points, he could easily find some hidden treasures. This is one of them. In other words, what is produced here the monthly profits from minerals are as high as hundreds of millions. Ha 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 ha. That's really awesome. Shanks couldn't help but sigh, then they would have made a lot of money. El Yushiu yawned and said. Let's go, just ahead. Everyone followed him to a place where minerals were mined. The place was densely packed with mining holes. Yo! Buggy! Long time no see! But Shanks immediately saw the red-nosed figure wearing work clothes and digging hard. He said hello happily. Is that you? Shanks! Buggy subconsciously raised his head when he heard this. At first, his voice was a little happy. Then he thought of something, and his tone suddenly became irritable. You bastard, why did you come to see me? We have broken off our relationship, hello. He said fiercely, his tone full of disgust and anger. Ha 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 ha. I just stopped by to see you. Shanks didn't feel anything after being scolded. After all, in his opinion, the other party was always like this. Who needs you to see it? Bastard. Get out of here quickly. Buggy said fiercely, it looks like he is expelling the guest. All right all right. Shanks smiled, feeling that the other party was still angry from back then. But when he saw that the other party was fine, he was relieved from his slightly worried heart. El Yushiu looked at this scene with a smile. All this was actually within his expectation. Ever since Shanks came to East Blue, Buggy has been sent to mine. He actually buried the historical stone tablet here, as well as the treasure box and the small note inside. Buggy was the only one mining in that area, so the other party could dig out the treasure just right. He even sent Robin to work here, and then he was inadvertently recognized by Buggy. All of this was set by him. Okay. He took great pains to design these things. Alas! There is no other way. Since the last jailbreak incident, he has discovered that it is not a problem to keep him locked up all the time. And he was very satisfied with Buggy's performance today. Not bad, maybe you can design something more often in the future? Keep the owner of Conqueror's luck, 
this is his talent. Then let's go, Buggy. Shanks waved and said. Let's go, let's go. I'm annoyed when I see you. If Shanks had come a day ago, he might have followed, but Lao Zi just found the treasure. You just came? Sorry. Of course the treasure is more important. So the smart Lord Buggy chose a path that seemed to him to be extremely correct. The treasure is mine ha 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 ha. Shanks smiled, and then led everyone back to the pirate ship. On the shore, the pirate ship slowly left, and El Yushiu said to the man in black suit standing by. Tell them that there is no need to stop this ship, and you can't stop it either. Yes. Master El Yushiu. The man in the black suit ordered, while El Yushiu stared at the sky in a daze. If you fish during a business trip, the damage value will be plus 100. At the same time, World News Service. Morgans looked at the report from his subordinates and the photo. Ga ha 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 ha. The torn sky, the tyrants drinking together, as expected, that marine is not simple. Big news, big news. He began to order his men to print newspapers. As the day goes by, countless news birds fly to all over the world. The new overlord? An existence that can compete with red hair. Marine hero? The man who defeated the golden lion. Who exactly is he? People around the world received this news. Naval headquarters, Marine Ford. Sengoku looked at the newspaper in his hand his eyebrows twitching slightly. Did this kid actually get into a fight with the redhead? This hacky. Hey. Garb. He's even stronger than us. He pointed at the photo of the torn sky, and Garb also looked over, eyes. He narrowed his eyes. Hmm, are you born with it? I don't know, but why didn't that guy pour a salino? Sengoku expressed doubts. Maybe the two brothers have different pursuits, ha 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 ha. Garp said with a smile. Well, but no matter what, the stronger this guy is, the stronger we marine will be. Sengoku also smiled. Recently, many people in the headquarters have begun to admire that guy. Unexpectedly, the other party was obviously just a branch colonel and had never served in the headquarters, but he could be liked by so many people. At the same time, Kizaru, who was on a mission outside, also saw the newspaper. O.L. Yushiu is becoming more and more scary. He pouted and said, he was actually able to fight with the red-haired man. That guy's strength has reached my level. Pora Salano muttered. Then I started thinking, should I resign from Marshal Sengoku and retire early? My little brother is so powerful, why not let him take over the job? And Akainu, who is in charge of the headquarters, also saw this newspaper. There was a smile on his lips, and he was obviously very satisfied with the news. He had heard about El Yushiu's deeds. Unlike Polo Salino, who liked to fish for fish, he was full of praise for his way of dealing with pirates and never leaving them alive. Perhaps we can meet him next time he comes to the headquarters. Akainu said lightly. Meanwhile, Marie Joyce. World Government. Five figures gathered together again. How many times have we discussed him? The bald figure wearing Taoist robes said. The third time, or the fourth time. Saint Satan opened his eyes slightly and said. This Marine, actually has this kind of conquerors. It's not that simple. The grey-haired old man said. Even so he is still our subordinate. The blonde man in a suit said. There's no way the guy who owns conquerors like this just wants to stay in East Blue. He must have some agenda. The curly-haired old man spoke calmly. All those who may threaten the rule of the world government should be investigated strictly, and we should pay attention. Well, then let's send CPA to take a look. Second. Seconded. Five elders issued the order, so a team of CP members specifically targeting El Yushiu headed towards East Blue. And at this time, back in the New World, Red Hair and others are fighting against Whitebeard's territory. 
GRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRR
thinking that he would be a gentleman when he saw a beautiful and intellectual secretary like her, but he actually asked the lady to do so much work. This time Khalifa also deeply realized the power of the former secretary, who actually handled everything in such an orderly manner. Tisk! Is this really a job done by humans? Well, thank you for your hard work. El Yushu took the document, scrawled his name, and then complimented casually. Khalifa's fists clenched involuntarily. This guy, isn't he even so perfunctory with compliments? If nothing happens, I will retreat, Colonel El Yushu. Her tone was cold and unfamiliar, and I could tell that she was very angry at this time. Maybe someone needs to calm her down. Okay, you go ahead. Eleven El Yushu waved his hands, pretending not to see the anger in the other person's eyes. Khalifa trembled, she was angry. Hold it back, this is for the mission, everything is for the mission. She took a deep breath and then left the rooftop. So fun. After the person left, El Yushu smiled. He liked to see the cold-faced secretary having to obey him. Using your authority to tease the secretary during work, the bad value is plus 444. See, even the system thinks he did the right thing. Let's go and have a look later. It's been a week. If he doesn't take action, what will happen if this woman misses work? Then it will be terrible if there is no one to deal with these documents. Go take a walk around. He stretched slowly, and then disappeared. A casino somewhere in Logue Town. Yuxiao was sitting there, listening quietly. Hey! One person is only allowed to gamble five times a day. Who is that? You have used up your number today. Get down here. Old Henry, you've spent all your money gambling, don't stay there and never leave. No. I want a loan. I want to continue betting. I will definitely make a comeback. The man named Old Henry said with red eyes, his money for a week's work is just gone? Impossible. He obviously just sat down. Shut up. There are no money lenders here. We beat the enemy family and they don't engage in this kind of business. A man in a black suit came out and stopped the farce. Although lending money is very profitable, the great master El Yushu will not let them engage in such a dirty business. Interesting. The middle-aged man smiled. This was the first time he had seen something like this. The staff of the casino limited the number of times people could gamble and did not provide them with loans. This is unheard of on the ocean. How do you feel? A young and gentle voice sounded from beside the middle-aged man. This island, this town, is the most comfortable place I have ever stayed in. The middle-aged man sighed with emotion. He opened his eyelids slightly, revealing the whites of his eyes. Right, this is a rare peaceful place. The voice was full of ridicule, perhaps also with a hint of self-promotion. You must be the base commander of this island, right? The middle-aged man asked. Yes. El Yushu admitted with a smile, and then said. Uncle, do we want to make a bet? Okay, what's the bet? When Yuxiao heard that someone wanted to bet with him, he immediately became energetic. He was addicted to gambling and he liked to gamble with others the most. That old man named Henry, do you think he will give up this time? Whoever loses will be treated to a meal. El Yushu made a small bet. Then. I'll make a bet. Yuxiao showed an interested smile. He knew this kind of gambler very well. This kind of gambler would not give up if he loses. Besides, it doesn't matter if he loses. It's just a matter of Bailey. Then I bet you won't. El Yushu said with a smile, everything is under control. While the two were talking, the casino had already begun to chase people away. Okay. Get out, old Henry. Two burly men in black suits carried him out. They obviously knew the old man. Wait, the last game. Let me play the last game again. He begged but no one listened to him. Old Henry walked down the street in despair. Gilu. 
there was a strange sound in the abdomen. He touched his belly and then remembered that he had not eaten. But now that there is no Bailey anymore, what should we do? He walked somewhere along the street. El Yushiu and Yuxiao followed behind silently. Hey! Old Henry! Have you lost so much that you have no money again? Ha 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 ha! Old Henry has no money again. I said he will definitely use that money to gamble this time, don't you believe it? The vendors around him obviously knew him, and they said happily. I. Old Henry opened his mouth and wanted to borrow money from them. But I didn't expect it to be. Eat, eat. I can hear your stomach growling. An uncle took out a steaming piece of bread and handed it to him. Don't choke, I still have Meilang wine here. Another vendor also took a bucket of wine. Thanks, thanks. Old Henry took it and ate it hungrily. Old Henry, you need to quit this thing. Think about how you could make a lot of money fishing every month before. Look at you now, you spend everything every month. One vendor lamented. Yes, thanks to the environment Mr. L. Yushiu created for us. In the past, if you wanted to gamble, you would definitely take out a loan. Not only would you not be able to repay it, you would be completely wiped out. I, I know. Old Henry's face was full of shame, and he murmured in a low voice. The whole person has come out of the anxious and obsessed state just now. His expression also returned to calmness. Why is gambling said to lead to family ruin? Because many gambling dogs can't wake up at all, and they only gamble with their money and houses. There are very few people like old Henry who can still wake up under the verbal attack from the neighbors. Although he will inevitably gamble later, under El Yushiu's policy and the concern of the vendors, the most he will lose is all his money. Bailey, it's not a big problem. I won, uncle. El Yushiu's laughing voice sounded, with a hint of pride. Yuxiao smiled helplessly, he didn't expect it to be like this. I lost. Let me introduce myself, my name is Colonel El Yushiu Logue Town Marine. He spoke formally and said. My name is Yuxiao, and I am a traveler who travels around the world. Yuxiao also said. Uncle, you will be tired after traveling to so many places, right? How about you come to my place to rest? You like it here too, right? El Yushiu said. No. Although I really like it here, I still have to personally measure whether the piece everyone talks about, East Blue, is right. He smiled and said. After being rejected, El Yushiu didn't care, but waved his hand. Okay then, if you need help, just tell me your name, and the members of the beaten guest family on each island will give you the necessary help. Thank you very much, sir. A smile and a slight nod. You are welcome. The voice fell. Da da. His figure began to fade away. Uncle still owes me a meal. Don't forget to pay it back. The retreating figure waved his hands to show that he knew. El Yushiu looked at it silently, feeling a little emotional in her heart. Didn't she expect that she had already attracted a smile? At the same time, he is even more eager to give it a try. If he can be brought under his command, he will not only have two seven warlords of the sea combat power, but also an admiral combat power. The strong men of your own camp cannot be underestimated even if they are placed on the sea, right? At the same time, at the port of Logue Town, a ship from the world government slowly docked. Hey! You can't park here. A man in a black suit waved from below and said, this is a special parking spot for merchant ships. What will you do if you occupy someone else's spot? Ha! Huh. CP8 members wearing agent uniforms looked at the black suits below. Are these guys unable to recognize the world government's ships anymore? The leading woman looked down, and then said to her companions. Baron, teach that guy a lesson. Yes. The agent figure disappeared. Hey! You guys! The black suit is a little anxious. He is in charge here today. If anything goes wrong, 
he will be held responsible. Whoosh! A figure appeared beside him. The black suit subconsciously put on a defensive posture. You think? Before he could finish his words, the other party attacked directly and quickly. Finger pistol. Fingers comparable to bullets quickly penetrated into the limbs of the black suit. Ah! Accompanied by shrill screams. Directly making him lose his fighting ability. The shrill screams immediately attracted the attention of the people around them, and everyone saw this scene. A security guard in Logue Town, wearing a black suit, was knocked to the ground, with blood splattered all over the ground. This is what happens if you don't respect world government. The CP8 agent named Baron said coldly. His attack just now was so ruthless that he broke all the muscles and bones of the opponent's limbs. If nothing else happens, the other party will have no choice but to lie in bed for the rest of his life. Who is that person? He treated him like this. One resident said angrily. Hey! That's not good. That's the world government's ship. Another knowledgeable person quickly recognized the iconic flag of world government. People from the world government? What are they doing here? So what if it's from the world government? This is the place governed by Colonel El Yushu. It's not their turn to speak yet. That's it. You hateful guys, get out. You are not welcome here. Get out. The anger of the people around him was about to burn him out, but Baron's face became even colder. These ignorant people, don't respect the world government, but worship a marine? He stepped forward, intending to kill a few people so that they would remember for a long time. You guys leave here first. At this moment, the people from the Hakka family who beat the enemy finally came after hearing the news. They looked at this scene and suddenly felt angry. Their brothers were actually treated like this? Click. They immediately raised their guns. Hey. You guys, Lao Zi belongs to the world government. Seeing that they dared to do this to him, Baron couldn't help but sneered. How dare these untouchables do this? The men in black suits calmed down after hearing this, but did not put down their guns. What a waste, Baron. You can't solve it alone. At this moment, several CP8 figures also appeared behind him, and they said lightly. Shout. These guys are not ordinary people. Baron said, with a hint of fear on his face, even if he wanted to deal with these people, he would still be injured. Hey. Put down your weapons, or I will kill this guy. Another strong man pointed at the black suit rolling on the ground and said, his words full of arrogance. They clearly came to someone else's territory, but they acted as if they were the masters. The people in black suits opposite didn't say anything. For a moment, they were filled with swords and crossbows. Until a voice suddenly appeared. Um, what are you doing? El Yushu, who was wearing a marine justice coat, suddenly appeared. He glanced at the members of the beaten guest family who were collapsed on the ground. Master El Yushu, the thing is like this. The man in the black suit told what happened in a short language. Hey! Are you El Yushu? Get your dogs back! Baron shouted, with a condescending attitude. However! Whoosh! El Yushu's figure suddenly appeared in front of him. Hold his hand! Click click click! Like twisting a twist, flesh and blood burst out along with the bones. Then the legs were kicked off directly. Click! Ah. Baron suddenly let out an even louder scream. Hey! Marine! We are the world! Before another CP8 member could finish speaking, he was kicked dozens of meters away by El Yushu, and then collapsed to the ground unconscious. The other CP8 members suddenly became anxious and wanted to take action. However, El Yushu was faster. His figure shuttled among the people like a ghost. Click! 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 Accompanied by the crisp sound of bone cracking. Except for the leading woman, all the CP8 agents were lying on the ground screaming miserably. 
the woman who was still standing did not dare to speak. She looked at the man and said in a trembling voice, Marine, we are sent by the five elders. This man is so scary. In less than five seconds, he was completely wiped out. Oh? So the first thing you did when you landed was to injure my subordinates. El Yushu raised her eyebrows and said, her eyes full of indifference, as if she was going to kill someone if they disagreed with her. I, this is all a misunderstanding. Alpha originally wanted to say that the other party was being disrespectful and they would give him a slight punishment, but when he saw El Yushu's intimidating eyes, he suddenly changed his mind. Ha, huh, okay, you guys just don't have a clear understanding of yourselves. If I hurt only Laozi, it's not too much for me to hurt all of you, right? No. Not too much. At this time, she no longer had the condescending attitude she had just now, and her words were full of awe. That's right. When you are a dog, you have to be good and don't bite people everywhere. El Yushu stepped forward and patted the other party's fair and delicate face. Alpha's face lit up, thinking he had escaped. However. Snapped. Then El Yushu slapped her backhand, causing her to spin 360 degrees in the air several times, and then fell heavily to the ground. Boom. Okay, this matter has been revealed. El Yushu came to the injured man in black suit. Thank you, Mr. El Yushu. His eyes were full of emotion, wow, my idol stood up for me. El Yushu took out one of the blood crystals, and the other party's injuries slowly healed. Afterwards, CP-8 Captain Alpha, with a red and swollen face, stayed in the Loketown Marine Base office with a respectful look on her face. Although she still staggered, she could generally move around. El Yushu couldn't help but sigh, she is indeed an agent, her body is so durable. Tell me, what is the purpose of those people sending you here? El Yushu said lightly, without any respect for those people in his words. It is said that there is a revolutionary army active in East Blue. We are here to investigate. Alpha said that the revolutionary army was just an excuse. What he really wanted to investigate was whether El Yushu, the director of the Logue Town base, had any anti-world government behavior, and then investigate and beat up the enemy Hakka family. Originally, their idea was to take over this place directly, and they are used to doing so. The prestige of world government can allow them to go unimpeded. However, I didn't expect that this guy didn't follow the routine and directly destroyed most of the CP-8 agents. Um. El Yushu nodded. Next to him, Califa was busy writing and processing documents, and looked up from time to time. My heart that was originally full of indignation suddenly calmed down. This person is afraid of comparison. She originally thought how miserable she was, but she didn't expect that there was someone even worse than herself. My face is probably swollen, it really hurts. Califa thought. And her gaze was also looked at by Alpha. Alpha couldn't help but clenched his fists, forgetting that he and others were taught a lesson, and he was looked at like this by a secretary, a mere secretary. Due to the concealment of world government agents, the members did not know their identities at all, so Alpha did not recognize that Julie Fa was also a world government agent. Okay, okay, if nothing happens, you can go down. El Yushu waved his hands and said. Okay. Alpha limped and left, holding on to the wall. She did not expect to die before leaving. El Yushu was lying leisurely on the sofa. Colonel El Yushu. Khalifa asked. Um. Aren't you afraid of being held accountable by the world government? El Yushu sneered. They are just a bunch of dogs. If it weren't for the rights given to them by the world government, they would really take themselves seriously. My brother is Kizaru Admiral. At this time, he knew to use his chest length as a shield. Um. I don't know why. Khalifa suddenly felt happy. Fortunately, I came in lurking, otherwise I would have ended up like them, right? You take your time to process the files, I'll take a nap first. 
El Yushu yawned. If you sleep during working hours, your damage value will be increased by 100. And just as El Yushu expected. The five elders who were specifically responsible for this matter received the news and didn't say much. He just responded lightly. Well. I understand. You should just follow the plan and investigate truthfully. Don't do unnecessary things. CPA on the other side wanted to say something, but was hung up on. The blonde man in the suit was left thinking. He has a completely different personality from that guy Pora Salino. He said lightly. As expected of the owner of Conqueror's Hacky. I didn't care about the CP8 being taught a lesson by the other party. It would be fine if it was an ordinary marine, but not only is the opponent so powerful, his brother is an active marine admiral. If the world government really does something because of the CP8 incident, then the direct loss of two top admiral level combatants will outweigh the gain. This is the thinking of those in power. As long as you have strong strength and enough potential, and have no idea of resisting the world government, they will not care about your occasional rude actions. In this world, the strong will be respected after all. And on the world government ship docked in East Blue Logue Town. Alpha has returned. The figures wrapped in various gauze lying on the deck quickly asked. How's it going? Captain Alpha. Obviously they want the people above to help them out. That damn marine is just a subordinate agency of their world government, but he actually dares to treat them like this. I must make that person pay the price. Baron, who was the most seriously injured, thought sinisterly. I.T.O. Sir, please don't do unnecessary things. Alpha just said coldly. What? The surrounding agents looked at each other in shock. Unexpectedly, the people above did not help them. Baron opened his mouth, obviously not believing it. Alpha looked at them coldly. A bunch of idiots. If it weren't for these guys, things wouldn't have reached this level. But she didn't recall her responsibility. If she hadn't let it go, this situation wouldn't have happened, right? At this time, Marine Base Office. Oh, it's so comfortable. El Yushu lay leisurely on the sofa. From time to time, I look at the concave and convex figure next to the desk processing documents. He has truly achieved the state of being a secretary when he has something to do, and looking after the secretary when nothing happens. Sensing El Yushu's gaze, Califa raised the corner of her mouth slightly. She proudly held out her chest, and the fishnet top she wore looked extremely alluring. El Yushu narrowed her eyes. Califa showed a smile. Aren't dogmen pretty sexy? Three days have passed. The members of CP8 finally reluctantly resumed action. They dispersed and visited various parts of the Logue Town Island. In the end, nothing was found, and the so-called Hakka family did not do anything excessive, or it was like a fan support group. The promotion channel for everyone apart from meeting personal strength standards, is just to get El Yushu's signature? As for the second in command under one person, Bartolomeo, who is above everyone else, after careful study, they found that he was just a little gangster. Apart from his unconditional admiration for El Yushu, there was no bright spot. Calling him a gangster is a compliment. WWW. The people who had found nothing gathered together again. What to do, Captain Alpha? A CP8 agent said with a look of reluctance. Unexpectedly, I couldn't find any clues. You know, as long as you find out about the other party's actions against world government, even if he is Kizura's younger brother, it will be useless. But they couldn't find anything. Alpha also looked thoughtful, she was thinking. Either it's because the other person is hiding it too deeply, or it's because he really doesn't have it. She sighed, feeling that this task was not easy to do. Captain, how about we? A CP8 member suddenly made some hint. Don't do unnecessary things. Alpha snorted coldly, in front of such a strong man, doing such a thing, I really don't know how to write death. Yes. 
The CP8 member immediately lowered his head. Let's go see other islands. She ordered. Maybe I can find some relevant clues elsewhere. Receive. Everyone responded one after another. The world government ships began to slowly leave Logue Town. Meanwhile, somewhere on an island in East Blue. Robin was wandering around the base of the Hakka family when a red-nosed clown suddenly noticed her. That one is, wanted by the world government. Son of the devil, Nico Robin. He suddenly felt that there was a way to translate that historical text. What a godsend opportunity. Buggy thought. Very good. He looked left and right. There were many black suits around him, and then he saw two figures in black suits following the woman respectfully. He suddenly realized that the other party was much higher level than him. Hiss. That marine is so brave. He dared to secretly hide a person wanted by the world government. Um. Robin, who is very sensitive to gaze, raised his head slightly. At a glance, she saw a figure with a red nose looking at her in surprise. Have you been recognized? She thought. But I didn't care. This was the internal base of the Hakka family to fight against enemies. It didn't matter even if I was recognized. Anyway, she always wears a mask when she is outside. Da da da, she walked to a certain room. Buggy just stared at it, not letting go of any detail. Go find her after get off work. He thought to himself. And in another place on the island. The world government ship is docked. This is just a mining place, is it really necessary? The CP8 agent asked in confusion. Don't miss any place. Alpha said lightly. Yes. Everyone walked down. As the sun sets, the day's work ends. Buggy immediately went to Robin's office. Hey. I know you. Nico Robin. He said directly. You were also captured by that guy El Yushu, right? Do you want to run away with me? Ta. Robin gave him a look that looked like a fool. I am staying here well, why should I flee with you? Oh well. Buggy suddenly paused and then said. I know there is a treasure somewhere. Please help me take a look. Um. Robin raised his head in confusion. You must cooperate with my work. A voice came from far away, Robin looked subconsciously, and then his face changed slightly. That's a world government agent. Ah? What's wrong? Buggy followed and looked. He also recognized the other party's identity, and combined with Robin's reaction at this time, the smart master Buggy instantly concluded that the other party was afraid of being arrested. If it were an ordinary criminal, he wouldn't want to deal with it, but who could make this guy understand the text of history? He rushed straight out of the room. Hey! You guy! You're disturbing my uncle's rest! Ha! Huh. CP8 agent raised his eyebrows, and then saw a red-nosed figure yelling at him. What are you talking about? Red Nose. What? You actually called the great Lord Buggy Red Nose. Buggy rushed forward. In the sky above the base, El Yushu, who had arrived, quietly looked below, slightly raising the corners of his mouth. I didn't expect Buggy to be so smart. This way I don't have to worry about Robin's problems. Grand Line, Com Belt, Nine Snakes Island. In the High Palace. A beauty. The figure was biting her lip and looking at the phone bug with a resentful expression. Ah, ah I seem to be on the phone with El Yushu. Sister, then you fight. The sister next to me came up with an idea and said. But what if he's busy? Then we'll fight at night. What if he's sleeping at night? Then. My sister suddenly ran out of words. We have you, El Yushu. At this time, Hancock's eyes were blurred and his face was slightly red. He recalled more and more the figure who put on a cloak for her that day. So handsome. So gentle. Gentleness unlike other dog men. On the other side, an old woman sighed and looked at this scene. It's over, 
this empress fell in love with someone else again. At this time, East Blue, Lok Town. El Yushu, who is the most beautiful woman in the world, is lying leisurely on the sun lounger. Kuina was giving her a massage, um, a serious one. Blue Blue Blue. The phone bug's voice rings. Hello? El Yushu. Miss me. Nami's cheerful voice sounded. No. El Yushu yawned and said, while enjoying Kuina's massage in the past two days, while looking at the beautiful secretary Khalifa, she felt a little lingering. How can I have time to think about little carrot head? Damn you! When I get back, I will punch you on the head. She said fiercely. Okay. El Yushu's lazy voice sounded. Pfft! Kuina next to her couldn't help laughing. After hearing this, Nami couldn't help shouting. Kuina! Take care of him. Don't let him go out and hook up with other women. Hmm, okay. Kuina responded with a smile. At that time, the beautiful figure with blonde hair came to mind. Are you wondering whether you should tell her? It's better not to tell her. If she knew that El Yushu found another secretary not long after she left. Hiss I don't dare to think I don't dare to think. I'm telling you. The girl's chirping voice came from inside. She was talking about the results of her practice during this period. I can already make snow and create storms. I will incorporate my abilities later. Ha 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 ha. Ice and fire. She laughed triumphantly from inside. Of course, the two heavens of ice and fire may not be possible, but if you can control the Wind Queen, you can naturally do tricks such as wind and fire, which consume less money. Physical strength creates a larger attack area. El Yushu also smiled and said. He couldn't help but sigh, everyone is making progress. Sky Island at an altitude of 10,000 meters. Ha! Huh. With a loud shout, the entire sacred area slowly floated up. Boom! The huge movement on the island immediately attracted the attention of the Sandians and Sky Island people. They looked at the floating island and the girl flying in the sky in disbelief. God! Some Sky Islanders knelt down directly. In their opinion, directly uprooting an island. This kind of powerful strength is no different from that of gods. God, XN. More voices sounded. Kunrin Ganfur looked at this scene with a wry smile. As expected of that gentleman's companions, everyone is so powerful. Although the Sandians did not shout to God, they bowed their heads respectfully. From this moment on, Tashiji was revered by everyone. But the girl just scratched her cheek and smiled silly. I did it, Colonel El Yushu. I can help you more. Grand line, little garden. Two huge figures are colliding there. Come on. Ron. You have a more powerful talent than us. Dori encouraged. As long as you learn these today, starting from tomorrow, I will teach you the strongest move of the giants, Elbaf's spear. As soon as these words came out, Ron felt like he was getting blood. I know. Senior Dori. Ha. Huh. He raised his weapon and slashed forward with heavy steps. The fight made Bragi miserable. Stop talking, Dori. Devil's Triangle. Moria was watching the zombie Ryoma under his command slash several pirate ships floating in. He 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 he. You are indeed my zombie. His heart is full of fire. Suddenly I felt very wise about joining El Yushu. Now the Ryoma is so strong. If it is stronger. He 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 he. An ounce, Moria suddenly remembered that she had a treasured frozen corpse, which was the demon ounce five hundred years ago. He belonged to the giant race, but he was several times larger than the ordinary human race. Gain. Moria's eyes lit up. How amazing it would be if he was resurrected through El Yushu's ability. Kaido. I will definitely seek revenge on you. Everyone is working hard, and the wheel of time moves forward unswervingly. Who will roll up the wave of the new era? 
See Circle Calendar 1518, three years have passed in circles. The progress of the world has taken another big step forward. Marine's power is getting stronger and stronger. The pattern of the New World Four Emperors has basically stabilized. Soldiers of the Revolutionary Army are stirring up trouble all over the world. The world government and the participating countries are very troubled. Unlike the disturbances from the outside world, East Blue is extremely peaceful at this time. After various marine raids and the efforts of beating up the enemy and the Hakka family, the number of pirates in this sea area has become extremely rare, and there have never been incidents of pirates plundering villages. After all, as long as the ship with the pirate flag appears, it will become the achievements of those crazy marines and the black suits who beat up the enemy. Because of this, people live and work in peace and contentment, and businessmen from all over the world come and go here. Logue Town, Marine Base Mr. L. Yushu, who did all this, was lying leisurely on the beach chair. Khalifa, the drinks are finished, please pour some more. OK Colonel El Yushu. Khalifa said softly, she was very cool today, as if she wanted to bask in the sun with him. Today she is wearing a bikini, her flat and tight belly reveals a faint vest line, her thighs are voluptuous, her calves are extremely well proportioned, and her beautiful blonde hair rests on her fair shoulders, looking extremely alluring. When El Yushu saw this scene, he couldn't help but curl up his lips. One night three years ago, the other party wanted to fight with him, so the two of them continued to be comrades for a year. Until one day two years ago, he revealed the other party's identity and asked her where she was going. Unexpectedly, this guy actually said that he could not go back and was willing to stay here to serve him. Are you convinced? Or is it because of love? El Yushu didn't understand, but he was so happy. Who doesn't love beautiful secretaries? Khalifa looked at the man with a gentle expression. The other party was strong and gentle. The defeat of the CP8 agents three years ago left a deep impression on her. This guy has a bright future. This is what Khalifa thinks. That's why I'm staying here and not leaving. But if she knew that this man wanted to overthrow the world government, what would she think? Bang! The door was opened and a figure came out. El Yushu. You are lazy here again. Nami scolded. El Yushu looked up and saw that three years had passed. Nami had also changed a lot. She was no longer the young girl she once was. She has beautiful long wavy orange hair and a devilish figure that even a marine uniform cannot stop. The button on her chest feels like she has worked very hard. Please Nami Chan. El Yushu just smiled and said. It's useless even if you say that. Nami said angrily, but his eyes were fixed on the smiling Khalifa. She was so angry. Since she came back a year ago, she found that El Yushu had actually hired 760 new secretaries. That time she almost exploded the base. This woman actually took advantage of her absence to hook up with El Yushu. This is so abominable. Master El Yushu, I'll go handle the documents and let Sister Nami stay with you. Khalifa said and walked away with coquettish steps without waiting for his reply. High-end green tea is often so considerate. She is indeed his good sister, El Yushu couldn't help but sigh. Nami clenched her fists and came to him without saying a word. One punch. Clatter. El Yushu caught it easily, and then he pulled it smoothly. Flutter. Nami's whole body was pulled into her arms. El Yushu's hands moved dishonestly, touching up and down, and her face turned red. The arrogance and anger just now are completely gone. She fell softly into his arms. Sensing that he was starting to become more and more aggressive, she pinched his hands and said. That, I'm not ready yet. Nami blushed and said feeling like some kind of golden retriever loser. She was obviously proactive before, but the two years of separation made her grow somewhat. Nothing else grew, but her sense of shame increased exponentially. You obviously plan to get down to business when you come back, but why are you so shy at the critical moment? 
Okay. L. Yu Xiu hugged the other party's soft body in a funny way. Faintly smelling the other party's orange fragrance. Nami also lay quietly in his arms, listening to the other person's heartbeat. Neither of them moved. For a moment, they were filled with peace and quiet. L. Yu Xiu. Um. Tashiji just called and asked you to come up. She pointed to the sky. There was only cloud cover there, and it seemed like nothing could be seen. El Yushiu smiled faintly. Well, I see. It must be that Moria guy made another batch of zombies, right? The Crimson Legion has added some more troops. Just why not call in person? He touched his chin and thought. That's right, Moria has moved to East Blue and is staying thousands of meters above Logue Town, brought up by Tashiji's Lion Fruit. In the past three years, Tashiji's fruit development progress has been greatly improved. It has been possible to raise dozens of islands to the sky. Therefore, El Yushiu's real base is actually up there, where there are real things that belong to him, such as the zombies jointly created with Moria, and some other things. When El Yushiu's figure reached an altitude of several thousand meters, a huge floating ship floated among the many islands. Moria's tall figure stood there waiting for someone. He <laughs> he. Boss. I'll leave this batch of goods to you. After seeing El Yushiu's figure, he pointed at the motionless corpses behind him. Judging from their size, basically every one of them looked like a slightly trained pirate. Oh? What numbers are these? Number 700 to 1000. He 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 he. Now that we have plenty of money, numbers 0 to 700 are soldier zombies. Each one only consumes five blood crystals of El Yushu, and their combat power is roughly equivalent to that of an ordinary marine captain. Numbers 700 to 1000 are general zombies. After being transformed by about 10 of El Yushu's blood crystals, each one has a good physical strength, equivalent to the level of a world government agent member. El Yushiu yawned and threw hundreds of blood crystals casually. Gilyalu. Countless blood wrapped around many corpses as if they were alive. Under Moria's excited smile, their bodies continued to expand and harden, revealing their eight-pack ABS. He 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 he. He took out a handful of shadows and threw them in. This is a group of shadows whose masters have some strength. It is better to put them into them. Ah ha ha ha. This uncle is resurrected again. What? Why am I here? What a strange feeling. Am I dead? Who tied me here? After they wake up they barked indiscriminately without any discipline. Quiet. Moria said something, and then all the zombies seemed to have been immobilized, and they stopped moving. The gold, they will leave it to you. El Yushiu said to the tall, blonde figure next to him, Due to the shortcomings of the Moria Fruit's ability, the newly resurrected zombies will have a certain period of resistance, so they can just go to special training for a period of time. Um. He nodded lightly, then walked forward. One of the shadows in the Golden Lion is a pirate with the strength of a great swordsman that El Yushiu searched across the sea. After putting him under house arrest, the shadow was taken away by Moria and stuffed into the body of the Golden Lion. So the current Golden Lion has consciousness, of course, is not the original consciousness. When will this batch be released? Moria looked at El Yushiu and said. They don't raise idle people here. All general level zombies will be put into the Grand Line to hunt powerful pirates and then bring them back. So their Crimson Legion is getting bigger and bigger like a snowball. Although the general rank number is only 700 to 1000. But what El Yushiu probably remembers is that there are at least tens of thousands of CP agent level masters. You can imagine how terrifying it is. And they also have a group of special zombies numbered over 1000. After a training, release it. El Yushiu yawned and said, what she was thinking in her heart was. The inventory has run out again, I have to go to Combell to find Sea Kings later. Take a look at Hancock. Thinking of that seductive and beautiful woman, El Yushiu couldn't help but feel hot in her heart. He 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 he, 
Okay. Moria's tall figure slowly left. El Yushu thought about it again, and a certain incident and the information collected some time ago came to mind. A huge explosion seemed to have occurred on a certain research island, and terrifying poisonous gas spread throughout the island. Jin, you go to New World first, there are things you need to deal with there. He said softly. The strange thing is that the blonde figure seemed to hear it even though it was hundreds of meters away from here. He nodded slightly and replied in his mind. I understand, Master El Yushu. Then the figure slowly disappeared. As for those restless zombies? Someone will train them. Lord El Yushu. A figure floated over. A girl with pink curly hair, wearing a gothic dress and a high hat, bet, floated over. Perona. Seeing this figure, El Yushu couldn't help but smile. I haven't seen Master El Yushu for a long time. She said with a smile, as if she was saying something meaningful. Um. El Yushu understood, and then followed her figure to somewhere in the castle. The two of them came to a dark but gorgeously decorated room. A figure like a sleeping beauty lay there. Lord El Yushu. Perona called softly. So the two discussed the experiment on whether the battle of the main body will affect the spirit body after the spirit body leaves the body. Afterwards, El Yushu came to a certain floating sky island. Seeing the girl holding the sword, he couldn't help but smile. Tashiji. After hearing the sound, the blue-haired girl raised her head in surprise. Colonel El Yushu. I'm going to the comm belt, I'll leave it to you. He enjoined. Okay Colonel El Yushu. Tashiji agreed. See you. Under Tashiji's disappointed gaze, his figure fell downwards. Why doesn't Colonel El Yushu reward me this time? She didn't understand that she had been given some rewards before. What Tashiji doesn't know is that all her rewards have been stolen by someone. When El Yushu's figure came to Com Belt. It's getting close to night. Forget it, let's go to Hancock's side first. The bloody wings took him flying to Nine Snake Island. At this time, in the huge palace on Nine Snake Island. Master El Yushu will definitely like the clothes I made, right? The black-haired beauty is embroidering clothes there, even if she is occasionally. Even if the needle pricked my finger, I didn't care. She wants to make a dress for her lover herself. Master El Yushu hasn't been here for a long time. Have I fallen out of favor? She couldn't help but touch her face again, her expression almost as if she was about to cry. Hancock. A voice that was extremely familiar to her sounded. Lord El Yushu. She blinked, as if she couldn't believe this scene, and then rushed over. El Yushu opened her hands slightly to catch the other person's soft body. Smelling the other party's fragrance, El Yushu's expression moved slightly. I am coming. Master El Yushu I will bathe you. She raised her head and bit her lip and said, her eyes full of prayer. Good dong. The Empress, known as the most beautiful woman in the world, looks at you with pleading eyes. Who can withstand it, family members? As a gentleman, you should never refuse a woman's request. So he readily agreed. Okay. He spent a wonderful time here these three years. Hancock was always like this, gentle as water, taking good care of him, so the two of them walked into the bathroom together. The next day, El Yushu, who was holding the beauty in his arms, slowly opened his eyes. He looked at the beautiful figure sleeping in his arms. Kissed her gently on the face. Then he lay leisurely on the bed. Sleeping while on a business trip, the damage value will be plus 1000. System. He thought to himself, he hadn't watched it for a while. After the words fell, the system panel opened. Level 102, 64330-100W Attributes, Strength, 25,600, Constitution, 24,023, Agility, 27,236, Spirit, 5,280, Luck, 
107. Current abilities, Haki, Teijutsu, Marksmanship, Swordsmanship, Navigation, Ancient Languages, Medical Skills, Devil Fruit Ability, 100%, etc. Current Comprehension Level, S, Full. Special Skills, Divine Avoidance Mastered, Spear of Elbaf Mastered, Thunder 8 Trigrams Mastered, Powerful Kingdom Mastered, Lion Thousand Slice Valley Mastered. After three years of failure, his level has reached level 102, and his strength, physique, agility, etc. have exceeded the 20,000 mark. Let's put it this way, his current strength is greater than that of Whitebeard when he was young, his body is more resistant than Kaido's body, and his defense is more outrageous than Big Mom's steel balloon. Generally he can ignore Haki's attacks without them. As for speed. El Yushiu can confidently say that even if it's a light speed kick from that guy Pora Salano, he can dodge it without looking around. As for Haki. Observation Haki, IV10, 1365 W-100,000,000 top level observation color, you have automatically mastered other properties, foresee the future, listen to the voice of all things, etc. Conquerors Haki, IV10. 563W slash 100 million top conquerors hacky, your will can affect strong men hundreds of sea miles away. Armament hacky, IV10, 326W slash 100 million top armament hacky, there is no one harder than you in this world. As for the fruit ability, he has successfully awakened it in the past three years. What benefits does the awakening of the phantom beast bring? Not only does it bring him the same elementalization as Logia, stronger blood control ability, and higher offensiveness when blood is shot out, but it also has an additional property. Don't forget, the legendary vampires can change their race. After he awakens, he can transform others into vampires. The other party is not only strengthened in all aspects, but also has a long lifespan and body immortality. Except for photophobia. He has no any weakness. Although after doing this, the other parties will will be completely controlled by him, but they will be immortal. Who cares about this? It can be said that El Yushiu can completely create his own race in the world of pirates, the blood race. Although this characteristic did not enhance his combat power, El Yushiu was very happy. After all, he had a long lifespan, but so many women around him did not. Many of them even died when they were old. If you become ugly and short quickly, your beauty will be fleeting. With the ability to transform others into vampires, he no longer has to worry about this problem. Nami and the others can accompany him forever. It can be said that if the guys from the world government knew that this fruit had this effect after awakening, they would definitely arrest him with all their strength. After all, longevity. But every time, what every life desires so much. So looking at all factors, El Yushiu can honestly say that he is already more powerful than the four emperors. Even Rox and Roger back then were not as powerful as him. But people cannot expand. Look at what happened to Rox Pirate. So many monsters were all destroyed in the Valley of Gods, so El Yushiu decided to let them grow for a while. Surprisingly, he can continue to become stronger. When he is so powerful that he ignores everything, the position of the Sky Throne should be replaced.